Shows his cards to Viswani as he folds that hand and lets him know what he has. A wise thing to do with Ram. He already knows everything about these guys from the from the, the length of their fingernails to their shoe size. <laughs> well, you, you, it's good to it's good to show that you can lay a hand down. There are times to show cards and times not to show them. A lot of people a lot of people think you should never show them, but I like to show them occasionally. It plants doubt in people's mind. Pass for Liffey. Yeah, 10 3 is pretty, pretty well, it's not a hand at all, really. Okay, Jamie's picked up a six. That's, that's a much better hand, three handed. Still just calling. It's interesting. I'd, 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 I'd personally raise with a hand like that in so the small blind. Ram's got a horrible hand here. The only thing good about it's suited. And he gets a chance to see the flop. And he's hit his four. And he probably doesn't feel too strongly about only having the, the bottom pair. But ultimately, Drummond gives him cards by just calling him. Yeah, he should have been. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh now, now, he's, now he's in. It's, it's, it's very difficult uh, here for Drummond to call anything. Oh, he's coming out betting. So see, let's see how, what Ram, how Ram, Ram responds to it. Drummond in serious trouble at the moment, and Ram usually at this stage would go all in. He'd, he'd make a no, very no, aggressive no. bet. No, he's well, just called it. Yeah, but with this player, what he's doing is just he's just calling, hoping that he might hit uh, a, a better, you know, another card. Drummond with absolutely nothing at the moment. And he checks it to Viswani. Yeah, and, and Rama's coming out betting. It looks like about 50,000. 40,000. 40, Viswani calls 40, and Drummond has to lay down the A6. Viswani probably wouldn't have wanted any of that action if he had a raise pre flop, but he didn't. That's all history. Ram takes the hand. Yeah, and I think he got the maximum out of it. You've talked about not raising pre flop three handed, and, and so far we've seen tonight it hasn't paired off the slow play. No, it hasn't. Okay, the blinds have gone up now, so they're going to have to start playing even quicker. What have we got here? Six, seven. And Drummond puts down the unsuited connectors, and Ram, well, Ram's got exactly the same hand, but on the small blind, so he's going to call that. And if Liffey checks it, he'll get three free cards, and he does just that with a 10 to unsuited. The flop's everything here. Eight, queen, king. For Swanee, six is a nice card to have, I suppose, out there being two handed with, with a flush draw. On. Not that nice. <laughs> I mean, he's betting with a very mediocre flush draw. Bet's 12,000, minimum bet. Looks like Rory's contemplating raising. Yeah, he has. But that's a very strong play. Very, very strong play. Yeah, that, well, you know, that's well played by Rory. Uh, you know, he's seen Ram come out betting on the flop and he's back raising straight away and uh, Ram had to fold. So as we've seen in the last few hands, all these players know how to play poker. No one's here by chance whatsoever. And Liffey adds to his chip lead at the moment. And Ram loses, not much, not a huge amount, but 25,000 chips out of a stack. How much does money play in the mind? Obviously not of Rory at the moment. He's just heard the funniest joke ever. No. Uh, but uh, <laughs> how much does money play in the mind of these players at this stage? And what's up, uh, up for grabs? Uh, you don't really feel, uh, you know, in my experience, you don't really think about the money at this stage. You're just thinking about winning the tournament. And Rory. Rory's come out betting. No wonder. Second best hand pre-flop. Yeah, but he's, cl he's cleverly over-betting it. You know, he's, he's, he's over-betting the hand. He's trying to... He's trying to trap uh, people into thinking he's got a much weaker hand and just trying to steal and he's done just that Drummond with his pair of tens goes all in Ram says I'm having nothing to do with this and Liffey will call him so we could be down to two players here Liffey goes in massive favourite only roughly about one out of five times is Drummond going to hit this yeah he's only yeah he's got the two two tens to hit and that's why he's standing up <laughs> he's seen Liffey's kings He's already shaking the hand, and a seven and three and nine will do no good whatsoever. You can read this. He needs a ten. It's a one and a no. Say it whatever way you want. He still just needs a ten. And last card. And we're down to two players. Nines on board. Nines and the kings take it. Goodbye, Jamie Drummond. Okay, yeah, and he, he played a, he played a good, tight, solid game, and uh, you know he's taken third place and a, a nice prize. And he's also learned a lot at this final table. It's Ram and Leffy going head to head then for the top spot.
both these players guaranteed a lovely kitty but only one guaranteed an all expenses paid trip to the final of the PokerStars.tv European Poker Tour. Okay, so Vam's come in with call with King 5. <laughs> and that's against Queen 3. Liffey on two pairs at this stage. Yeah, he's thinking about what to do with it. Of course, only two cards in the pack are going to be better than him at the moment. And that's the two sixes which Faswani doesn't have. Liffey makes the bet. Faswani's got a great poker mind, John. He's, he's got a read in everyone around this table to a certain extent all day. Yeah, no, he's, he's, making it, he's, he's making it out that he's got a very strong hand here. He's only doubled Rory's bet here, so Rory's thinking, could he have a six? Oh, this is strong play. That is really strong play. Very strong play. For Swanee, outwitted in that hand, uh, 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 doubled Rory's bet. Rory raises again for Swanee folds. Yeah, I mean, you know, the Ram doubled the bet trying to pretend that he had a six. And Rory just didn't believe him and came back over the top. Uh, Ram can't call. This goes to show the two players that we have here at the table. Playing at the top of the game at the moment, a joy to watch. Let's see what Ram's got in his hand. Okay, he's reaching for chips. It's like 30,000. Ram raises to 36,000. 36. On the King 9 <laughs> suit of the hearts. Yeah. Okay. So Rory's, Rory's already got 12,000 in this spot, so he's got, you know... A vested interest to call Yeah, us. he has. He's got another 24 to call. Seat two, Rory Leffy. Seat eight, Ram Vaswani. They can see the whites of each other's eyes at all times. OK, so he's cool. Call and no wonder he has with the ace-queen. Yeah, it's a huge hand. I mean, he's been outdrawn on the flop, but, you know, that was a big hand on the flop. Well, let's see what happens. Of course, the nines of Aswani, strong at the moment. Yeah, but there's three spades on there, so they're, they're, they're both going to be nervous about the spades. Exactly. Scare cards are plenty on the flop, and the turns are three clubs, and if they, they check that flop, it'll be interesting to see what happens now. Rory's looking at him. He's trying to give, you know, he's eyeing him up, trying to see whether his hand's still winning. And he might fancy his ace queen at this stage. Rory well, he does and bets. He's bet 50,000. Ram's thinking. Okay, he didn't bet on the flop. He's thinking, so maybe my, he hasn't got a jack. Maybe my nine's still good. I'm going to call. Okay, that's, that's what he does. So the river, all important here. Liffey needs it to be a lifeline. Okay, that's made Ram two pair. Let's see what Rory does here. He's first to act. <laughs> all in. He's called all in. Uh oh. He's, yeah, the oh, no, Ram's, Ram's called. Ram's, Ram's called. In a millisecond, he's called this, and everything is changed. Vaswani, massive chip leader. He takes a pot of over half a million chips, and Leffy's made a blunder. He's walked into that two pair of Vaswani, which he hit on the river. <laughs> A massive hand, John. Oh, massive. I mean, Rory's been really... Look, I mean, he, you can see it in his face. He realises it's just bad timing. I mean, it's just unfortunate timing. He's made a really, really aggressive move. Ram couldn't have possibly called with a, sing a one pair or anything else. Uh, you know, unfortunately, he made two pairs, so he takes the chip lead. OK, the blinds are at 6,000, 12,000. Poker's a, uh, Texas home poker is a seven-card game, so it, it's very important to remember that. The river's as valid as any other card, and... Ram was loving at that time. Yeah, Rory's Rory's down to you know he's down to sort of two hundred and sixty thousand now. So, and he's got suited Jack Ten, and uh, he's gone up against a Jack Ten of, of clubs. Yeah, they've both got exactly the same hand. Well, you know, obviously not exactly the same. They've both got suited Jacks, uh, Ten Jack. It's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. This is fantastic, this hand, because if the clubs and, and spades stay away, it'll be interesting to see the different styles are playing exactly the same hand, and they've done exactly that. OK. Yeah, but they've both flopped the open-ended straight draw. Now, if Ram, if Ram bets it like he did before, he'll go all in, because he bet the... Yeah, there we go. He, he bet the same, exactly the same way before, and now Rory's got a very difficult decision. He's got to... You know, he's got to call or, or, or fold, and Ram's put the real pressure on here. This is, this is a second-place... Uh, call he's got to make here. If he loses, he's out. Great, great poker. 
Rory's certainly thinking about it, but you imagine he might lay these down. The way he looked at his cards there, it looked like he was going to lay them down. And he does just that. Yep. And he throws them aggressively in the direction of a ram. Yep, he should really, I, think you, I, I think he intended them to flip over. I think he wanted to actually show them. These are all. These are all. These are both top quality professional poker players, uh, and it's it's anybody's game. Rory's really under pressure now. To quote a terrible film, they're the best of the best. Certainly, they are in Dublin here at the European Poker Tour, and the Ace Fives. Ram might fancy that. He might fancy the Ace heads up, yeah. and he's went all in he has. And if he's got, he's got, he's like, he's got to like this. The pair of fours. The well, it's, yeah, but he knows he's. It's a very, very difficult pair to play, even heads up. I mean, he'll, he'll, he'll have to play them because he probably he, he knows he's winning, and uh, it's just, if you, you know, when you're feeling a li bit, little bit down on your luck, you don't really want to call with a pair of fours. If you're feeling very bullish, you're, you're happy to call because you just don't think anybody's going to hit their, hit their over pair, over cards. So you've heard it. It is a state of mind at the moment for Leffy and he's Yeah, uh, he's had it. Look, he's he's called. He just said, "Oh, I, I, can't, I can't be bothered. I'm probably winning. I'm going to take the I'm going to take the risk." If you and look, he's 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 in even. You know, he's even money. It's pretty much an even money shot. I mean, he's a, Rory's a slight favourite, very slight favourite to these two overcards. But uh, let's see what happens. We could be saying goodbye oh from Dublin, and we, we will be now. By the looks of it, the ace comes yeah, out, and all that's going to see if Leffy is a four. The turn card is seven. a seven. Mm. Two per for Leffy Viswan. He's got the ace. Rory's put his coat Win on. And, and that is, is because Vassani he's going it. home. And we've had something of a master class of poker off. here in Dublin. Guess man. what? We're paying for Ram Viswani to go to Monte Carlo to the final of the European Poker Tour as if he needs it. <laughs> Here comes Hans. Here he comes. Poor Hans has to sit next to Benny Glaser. Poker-wise, I mean that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is a barely stacked table. Glaser and Nietzsche just absolutely blasting poker. <laughs> Previously just saw Benny making that king high call on one of the outer tables. That was kind of spicy. Seems like something Benny would do. Gets it right, like, I don't know, every time. Yeah. Yeah. Just so happened to have a camera on it when it happened this time. <laughs> it's boring, but it's part of my life. Reminder, you can join in the conversation. Twitch.tv has a little chat. YouTube.com has a little chat. You can tweet at us using the hashtag Irish Poker Open, I guess. I'm not really checking that. I don't know why I said that. And, uh, I got it open. I'm gonna have a confirmation. I don't oh, Nick's know. got it open. Great. <laughs> Nick's on that. Yeah, it's a bit. Big table. Shout out to my guy, Michael Molinar, as well. Use the hashtag, by the way, Poker Stars TV. There you go. In addition to Irish Poker Open. That's the one we're keeping track of. Shout out to my boy, Michael Molinar, as well. Seat five. He, if you guys watch any Twitch, you'll recognize him. One, big, two, big three, Twitcher. Five. Okay. The, like, the, the slender fella in the in the white hoodie. Indeed, yes. Okay. One of my one of my Twitch brethren, repping repping uh, Twitch poker. One, one time, I have a jam uh, Patrick so Terry with things. the Snowmen's. Nom nom. Like seven hundred or something. Queen the big one. Facing it open from, from Glazer. Lazar accur accurately predicting that he is unlikely to be three bet by the small blinds. <laughs> and Molinar is going to call with Jack Nine. And Molinar with 1.5 million in chips. That is the most at this feature table. 10 high flop. So Glazer's gut shot getting blocked, as they say, by Patrick Terry. Five, six, seven, nine. He's an eight, right? Four, five, six, seven, nine doesn't work. Eight. And Terry has leaded out at this for 60,000. Cool. And Benny is going to try 
to pick up a diamond and or oh, oh. There is, there's the diamond and it is an over card as well might be a scare called card for terry he's gonna be like i don't know how to behave okay. i'm gonna check therefore glazer has the opportunity to semi bluff doesn't have to go big here either right if he's gonna target some Ace combos that haven't connected. If he's going to pocket some, uh, target some sevens or some eights or some nines. Doesn't have to go big here. Can get better hands to fold and obviously and doesn't mind a call when you got that like combination margin, draw. Sometimes will improve, Joe. We do Joe. not tolerate players slow playing, trying to ladder through penny jumps. We do ask every player to take into consideration that this is bad etiquette. It's bad for the game. So. 260k in the middle. Is slowing the game down. We do encourage you to call the clock. Yeah. If a player is repeatedly trying to run the clock down, looks like he's going to put him all in. He hasn't gone all in himself. Table. Got a few chippies Once behind it. Looks like, but the effective all in. There it is. So Man, I would be. This is a. First of all, I appreciate this announcement that's being made. I think this is something that certainly people at home can appreciate. Yeah, absolutely. Loving to see that as well. I did mention I think Benny could probably use a smaller size there, but the absolute maximum. Yeah, didn't cash for a whole lot of money, but got a million-dollar story out of it. <laughs> uh, where do I cash million-dollar stories? <laughs> they pay out very slowly over time. Oh, hello, Bowie Effect in the chat. Hello, sir. LMAO this table, I agree. <clears throat> yeah, in a, in a field that's filled with like a lot of amateurs, a lot of wrecks, uh, in a good way, by the way, a lot of people use those words as insults. A lot of wrecks, a lot of amateurs in this field, and to end up at a table oh, with Dominic Nietzsche and Benny Glosser, you probably um, didn't go to church on Good Friday. Indeed. Someone's mad at you somewhere. Pocket sevens for Glazer. Eights again for Patrick Terry. Quite shallow now. Might be tempted, Joe. Yeah, that's what, 15 big blinds, 300K? That's right, about a 15 bigs. Pocket ace, 15 big blinds. Does not decide to rip it, just calls. It's going to be tricky to play Ojo's there from the hijack. If you get squeezed behind, it can be very difficult to play, but wants to see a flop. And your chances of flopping a set are gonna be half as good as usual with that eight being folded. If you are set miming here, you're kind of lighting it on fire 45. a little bit. 45, yeah. I put in 40. Yeah. I 40. But I understand Benny Glaser is a intimidating opponent. Discounts there. Bottom. <laughs> oh wow, it's always coming seven guys. Set of sevens for Benny, but the good news for Terry is I think he's gonna be pretty scared of the ace and the queen anyway. Indeed, might be it easy way for him out we're really shallow here I expect Benny to have a very small continuation here so 140 in the middle the funny thing is I feel like with Terry stack size that his good aces he's way more likely to rip it in than he is with pocket eights 35,000 is my is my guess So I don't think, obviously, Benny doesn't have to worry about What's the bet? losing to an ace. Oh, I absolutely aced it, Joe. Absolutely aced Very it. Very proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Got to take the little win, Joe. And Terry is not folding and is going to go for some kind of weird semi-min raise. What? And I guess if Benny had not flopped a set, this might have worked. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's – you're absolutely right, Joe, right? When you look at the hands like this, you go, oh, wow, yeah, the guy's raising into a set. But if he had sixes here – Or if it was reversed and Benny, you know, had eights on this board and yeah. Terry had nines. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Benny's absolutely loving life at this point. I don't see any reason why he wouldn't just flat flop. Really, really want your opponent to blast off here. Not really worried about aces, not really worried about queens. And honestly, if they have that, you just pay them every time here, right? You're not, you're never getting away from the set. And Benny is going to call this with some delight. I know it's hard to tell by his face, but he's experiencing delight. Four of diamonds on the turn. 
There's honestly not really too many bad turns I can think of here for the set of sevens. No flush draw on the flop. Minimal straight draws that might have been played this way. Check, check on the turn anyway. Three of clubs, no change. So now Benny has a bit of a decision here. And I wonder if Benny is about to grab his Terry Fold flaps. <laughs> nice one. I think probably you got to bet this river just because if your opponent's checking the turn, they're going to have a bunch of stuff that they're obviously not super confident with. Otherwise, they would raise flop and then continue turn from position. So I think you want to bet and still try and get value from some Queen X, from some Ace X. All that kind of jazz. I think checking here is kind of out of the question in, in, the, in the situation where your opponent doesn't continue the turn having raised flop. Yep. All of it. Terry's like, why did I play eights like this? I don't know that Terry is regretting playing eights like this. I think he's regretting a flop. I think he's regretting. <laughs> um, yes, no good. Playing nope. eights, eights at all. Feels like he really wants to call Joe. Nice fold. Nice Terry fold. folds. Nice fold. Terry folds. Oh, nice. Look at this. Ooh, lying about it too. Huh? I fold on this, yeah. Why? <laughs> I don't. Is there a chance he misread his hand and thought he had ace eight? No. <laughs> I also folded an ace. Maybe if we were playing like tag team poker and someone looked at his hand and whispered in his ear and said ace. <laughs> Yeah, I know that's what I'm saying. I didn't want to be like. Yeah. What? Unfortunately. Glazer putting on a bit of a clinic here, guys. Obviously had a few nice spots, a few nice hands to go with it, but guys, very, very good at this stage of the tournament where a lot of players are less experienced. Folds around to Glauser in the small blind. Ooh, we should have some fun blind on blind battles between Glauser and Nietzsche. Yeah, if there's two guys that know how to play blinds at the stack depth, it's going to be these two. The local? Yeah, no. Limp in and a check. Domination Dominate. situation. In, uh, I'm from Leipzig. Notice how Dominic actually hasn't even looked at the flop yet, just looking directly at his opponent to see his reaction to the flop prior to looking at the actual texture of the flop. Well, Dominic's going to like when he sees top pair for Nietzsche. So Benny's going to fire. Seems pretty standard here. <coughs> Dominic top pair back to clubs. Just call here. Are you from here? Or yep. But Ireland? Or? No, no, no. Again, looking at his opponent to see his reaction, yeah. not looking at the turn. You see that? Things to notice at the table. Turns a king of hearts. Yeah, our languages are kind of close, but I only understand a few words. Benny really is a brick wall, though, Joe. He's great at, he's got a great poker face. Very, very calculated. Doesn't give anything away. But these guys have a lot of history with each other as well, so. Perhaps trying to find a little slice of information over time. Opportunity to continue. The King of Hearts is actually a great barrel card here for, for Benny. Obviously get plenty of nines to fold, not fours to fold. Hands like seven, eight to fold. Hands like eight, ten to fold. Not... Jack seven though? Uh, no, Jack seven should never be folding here. Not against a, a player of this caliber who is absolutely capable of making this kind of a bluff. Next call. River. 
six of hearts. Not a super consequential card. Interesting spot though, because Benny is blocking Queen 10, I wonder if he actually triples off here. When you play this close to the line, having that blocker is really significant because your opponent will be very brave in their calling hands flop and turn here. I mean, if Benny just like full pots this river, it's so hard for the Jack-7 to call. Is any amount of Dominic's staring here, is it all about gaining information or is there a little bit of intimidation there also? I'm not sure. I feel like Dominic knows he's not going to intimidate Benny. Uh, maybe against maybe against less experienced players. I can imagine that okay. really, really having a big impact though, Joe. Absolutely. So yeah, wasn't full pot, but he was chunky. Makes the call. Gets snapped off. Very good. I think I really like the line from Benny. I totally see where he was going with that, but Dominic just knows what's up. He knows that his opponent will be bluffing enough to make that river call profitable. And that's a major shift on the leaderboard. Dominic gonna scoot his way nearly to the top after that hand, if not the top, very close, neck and neck up there. Four big blinds. I can understand why you'd be thinking about this for reasons other than deception, by the way. You're really trying to figure out if you're going to shove 24 big blinds here and chase yeah. away all of your action or get a little more creative with it, which also is alarm bells. I was going to say 120 is how much I want to make it here. I think that looks like 120. Those of us who don't know what we're doing, just shove here. Reichardt has ace queen and moves all in in the big blind. Oh, wow. I mean, how do you can't really for his stack? Like, yeah. obviously, yeah. like, no matter how bad your spidey sense is tingling here, the alarm bells, you have ace queen and you have six bigs, seven bigs. Yep, I think you're absolutely right, Joe. You're, you're, you've already got money invested in the big blind, plus but, you just got ace-queen, so let's go. But now you've given Benny a really ridiculous price here. It's yeah. 100000 He's getting three and a half to one with a hand that can crack hands like kings and queens and aces. 100%. I think you hit the nail on the head, Joe. No chance Benny folds here. Easiest call in the history of poker just to get lucky. So much dead money with the addition of Reichardt putting in just shy of what the initial three bet was therefore no more additional action if Benny calls we will see a flop and he can reassess from there with all that additional dead money on the table James Hardigan in chat says the MF and Grafton and he's not wrong now it's a big chunk of, of Benny's stack here uh, I guess maybe Benny is thinking that yes that that I, I just call here is a big chunk of a stack. But I think you gotta do it. Yeah, yeah, I think there's just way too much opportunity here. Flop, 10-8 Trey, top pair for Benny. Not good enough to crack Kings yet. Action on Hofer. And Hofer is less than pop behind. I is there any play here besides just jamming, Nick? Um, I think SPR being this low, you just always jam. Yeah. I mean, having the king of spades is going to be some consideration, but I think checking would be OK, too. I think it would just be really weird, because I, th I imagine you'd probably ship if you had ace king here, too. I mean. Reichert's obviously all in, so there's no point in trying to fold out Reichert, but and you've got the extra 100K from Benny calling pre-flop. Yep, there it is, Joe. You called it. Benny can't fold either. No chance. Not with this price. He, 
he hates it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Benny calls here and loses. Will be in the exact same spot Reichardt was in at the start of this hand. I mean, even if he's even if he's losing to Kings, he still probably has the correct price to call here, Joe. Yeah. Um, it's just, yeah, I agree. It is, it is a really messed up pot, but the MF in Grafton. Yeah. So. Eleven. He only needs like twenty-five percent equity to call here, or something like that, Joe. I mean, that's if he doesn't have the best hand, I should say, of course. Right. Don't worry, ladies. That's not a wedding band. It's a whoop. Nope. It's an aura. Whatever. They're all the same. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Me and James Hardigan beg to beg It's to, horoscopes beg to for, for science-minded people. <laughs> That's right, Jai Pai. It's basically a mood ring. <laughs> Except it tell yeah, it tells you what your mood is. <laughs> My mood is sleepy today. I feel like this is a one of the rare times that this we may be seeing Benny struggle more with emotion here. It seems like he would he knows he would know what the price is. I guess he's just kind of leaning a little bit more into player tendencies. Yeah, yeah eventually comes to the decision we all thought he would. Makes the call, huge pot. 1.1 million in the middle. Mm -hmm. Reichardt not eligible for all of it. Ho for the big favorite. That's a Canadian one though. I know, that's not like most in I don't think you can afford the flop. Sorry? I don't think you can afford the flop. I think I can. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> you might be able to afford pre. Three of diamonds on the turn. Super hard. safe card for Hofer. Reichardt Hands drawing. James Hardigan PS TSD. Quite thin. The oh. river is another 10. <laughs> wow. Benny Glauser eliminates both like Hofer it. and Reichardt. <laughs> <laughs> the Glauser beam that on the stream disintegrates. Right <laughs> 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 gonna give James both Hofer and yeah, Reichardt. I, I have you with the Grafton. What a river. Yeah. I first. You first out? He first out and then first out. Yeah. Lawrence. You gotta really feel for Hofer there. Reichardt, obviously, whatever. King's life. cracked for Hofer. What a life. Yeah. 69 players remain. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Stop giving Benny Glass your hands, honestly. It's unfair on everyone else. Oh, yeah. He's good at the pokers. And once he's got monsters like that, everyone else is screwed. CF Dominic Nietzsche, who's picked up tens. And Dominic has elected to three bet with the tens, makes it 160,000 total, been folded back around to Benny. And these are two of the biggest stacks, Nick. So I'm not sure they play for this all pre. Yeah, I think if I'm Benny, I, I'm looking to put in a, a four bet here at the stack depth. So three bet was to 160. 
you want to make this about 400k from Benny. Getting good hands. Not many, Benny. How much is it going to be? A fistful of white. How much? Oh. 400. A four bet to 400,000. How does Dominic Nietzsche respond to this? I can't believe Benny stole my bet size. Unbelievable. At 1.7. Start with 1.7. Well, Pushka says, easy fold. Are you influenced at all by the fact you can see Benny Glazer has kings when you make that statement? If we could see that Benny was getting out of line with Jack-8 offsuit, would you still be making the same analysis? Oh. The call, this pot is huge, James. 860K in the middle. Smirk from Benny. Ace, ace, nine. There's always an ace on the desk, James. But fact, two of them. Two of them this time. <laughs> SPR is about 1.5. They're about. Size is down to 125,000. This is literally textbook stuff here, people. With these SPRs, this is exactly the situation you want to find yourself in and the exact sizings that you want to make. The pot is already so inflated, you don't need to conform to regular bet sizing at this point in the hand. Small bets are just as effective. It does get the tens to continue. Turn card is the three of diamonds. Benny is a 97% favorite here. One point one million in the middle, and Dominic Nietzsche, the effective stack, has roughly popped behind. Yeah, Dan O'Chris makes a good point. River 10s have been happening a lot today. River 10s do trigger me, I'm afraid. Man, this is such an interesting situation we got brewing. checks. Benny's got to be happy to see that, James. He's got to be happy to see a turn check there. And no 10 on the river. Huzzah! Whoa. Does Benny find a little blocker bet here? A little bit of a Small value bet slash blocker bet. Really love to hear Benny's perspective on this one because it's such an interesting setup we have here. It doesn't come up very frequently.
sandwiches the green between mm. two chunks of white. <laughs> What should I say? 340. 340. I mean, if this gets paid off, he just looks like the biggest genius on the planet. I think it's just a really nice spot to have a bet because you do get called by worse, and you do force the ace to expose himself at this point. Also, if he has, even if he has a hand like ace queen, he might still flat this river for fear of being out kicked, given the action pre flop. Can Dominic Nietzsche find a fold here? Does he pay off this 340k value bet on the river from Benny Glazer? Glazer. Glazer. I think about six players have been eliminated while Dominic's been thinking about this. <laughs> What if he just shoves? Makes the fold. Lays it down, but Benny still wins. A huge pot to move up to 2.3 million. Huh? Got some orange hats. Orange, nice. Oh, that's good. I Red hats. Yeah, maybe that even played in the part into the really large open shove with the sevens at the cutoff from Benny <coughs> not wanting to create an opportunity for you know the blinds to defend and get yeah. out flopped and then suddenly you know have somewhere in between 10 and 15 blinds Tinky Winky asking if this is the last level of the day nope we have got this level to play then a 20 minute break and then two more levels to play tonight and we would only not play out those two levels if we were to somehow get to eight but you've heard most people's predictions and there is a general consensus that it is unlikely we'll get to eight tonight and that means play will conclude probably between 2 30 3 a.m the players will have 10 hours before coming back tomorrow and play the action starts as far as the stream is concerned at 1 30. 20 big blinds for Benny here at the hijack from the chip leader open. I think this is exactly what you want to do here. Sanchez does actually have a hand that is pretty above what we've seen to be his average opening range. So 
He's going to want to protect these opens with some calls with hands like, mm -hmm. you know, I believe one ace nine jack. Nine, I believe. Certainly ace jack nine, suited, 20 but. 20 VB, they tell me you're a good player as well. See now, yeah, oh, I love this conversation here. Let's listen in. Sanchez aware yeah. that sometimes like he's going to be slightly ahead against the king queens and maybe some king jack suited that might shove here and then of course flipping against the pairs shouldn't really should be, be cool dominating enough. yeah wow i really like the way sanchez is talking uh. here this is someone who's clearly done a lot of work my brother says he's not going to augusta to lay out wow what a great comment Augusta, like the Masters, you don't go there to lay out. Like he's the Masters right now, and he's gonna make a stand. This will be a really sick call. Michael. I mean, this is bottom of range and makes the call. Wow! And we are off to the races in a huge flip that Benny Glaser needs to win to survive. Yeah, it's just. I mean, you always fold Ace Ten here. You always fold Ace Nine suited. Ace Ten suited is just right on the line there, where you kind of feel like you should fold, but. Can also go for it. So far, so good for Benny's nines. And Benny wants it. Give me 40 big Show points. Me Just has to fade an ace or a 10 on the river. Haven't seen Barry for a while. Nice it's nice. a deuce. Double up for Benny Glaser. Welcome back to Dublin in the year 2024 and this year's Irish Open brought to you by PokerStars and Paddy Power Poker. As day three, the penultimate day of the main event continues here at the RDS. 32 players returning from the dinner break. We have played, let me just quickly count, one, two, three, four, five, six levels and we still have four levels to play. Chances are we will not hit the final table tonight, but we'll see how damn close we can come. So James Hartigan joined by Vincent Hand. Hello, James. Delighted to be here. And Rory Jennings. It's an honor, James. Thank you so much for having me. So, obviously, the big story of this table is the fact that we have got Poker Stars Live Events VIP host Brandon Wynn still in with a short stack, trying to climb up those money ladders. Obviously, someone we all know very well. Someone who, even though has moved on from wet nursing PokerStars ambassadors, still has to make sure you've got your patches. Hold on a second. Brandon is not in charge of that anymore? Because I bother Brandon for patches pretty much every day I see him. You're telling me that Brandon's not the patch guy? Brandon moved on from that job Brandon's like a year and a half ago. Brandon is the patch guy. I thought Brandon made the patches. I think he just likes you. I Brandon, think he, just looks, he, he looks after you. Brandon still carries around the patches because he knows we're a bunch of idiots. Yeah. But he doesn't do it because it's his job. Yeah, yeah. He's just he's just protecting this us from ourselves. To me. Yeah, no, he's he, an James, icon. are you sure? Yeah, I think it's true. Even even I know that to be honest, Vincent. I, I'm not winding you up. James, it's not his I've, job. I've seen this story before. Where I come in, I sit down, I expect to commentate on a bit of poker, and I get wound up and I walk off. Okay, look at Brandon on Twitter. Look at his job title. His job title is VIP host, right, PokerStars right, Live Events. All right, all right, give me a sec. Give me a sec. <laughs> oh, he's actually checking. Give me a sec. <laughs> just one double away, boys. So Brandon yeah, has just okay, seven big game. blinds. He is the second shortest stack at this table. The chip leader is Giorgio Salaftas, who's got 116, wearing, uh, 12 like million chips. Wow. 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 He had one chip That's one a lot of thing. chips. In the middle of the day it's an amazing achievement from Brandon to still be here, isn't it? He's done so well. Amazing achievement, achievement for anybody. Yo, oh, absolutely. 32 players left in such a massive. I've, I've got Brandon on Twitter. I see his his picture here. He's got a carry. He's got Neymar at the top. And what does it say in his profile, Vincent? Patch manager for PokerStars <laughs> Isle of Man. 
James, <laughs> I'm not falling for it. This kid wasn't born yesterday. <laughs> By the way, while we're talking about achievements, Adam McCola, two years in a row? It's amazing, isn't it? It's an amazing achievement from Adam. He did so well today. And it was such drama. The hand that busted him, painful. It's affected him. I've been with him all afternoon. We've been watching the football together. He is not in a good mood. Listen, I'm not one for bad beats. Anyone tells me a bad beat, I'm out of there. But, but, for someone relatively new to poker, to lose with kings to queens in such heartbreaking fashion, I can feel that pain. Yeah, I really can. It was not, not nice. So the chip leader has opened here with king eight. And it's been folded around to Aiden Quinlan, who's got four, king four. ten of hearts. That is a call. But Mantis Belioskas folds and now we have the aces Ooh. of Mark Johnston Johnston with a T lovely position for him here Rory what's your feeling when you get aces deep in the tournament you've had a few moments with big hands deep in tournaments over the last year is it is it excitement when you look down at those red aces or are you just like oh, I just don't want to lose total fear <laughs> total fear total inadequacy uh, and I'm I'm preparing myself for the worst outcome but it's also that adrenaline rush isn't it when you look down to see one you pray to see a second one and when you do that moment that it hits that moment that you see the second one the adrenaline starts pumping and I imagine that Johnston is feeling exactly that feeling this very second so the original razor folds action back on Quinlan who flatted the raise in the cutoff Quinlan with a very pretty hand, but not really a huge amount of chips to be able to do much about this, and quite correctly Four. falls. And unfortunately for Johnston, the aces will just be taken down for pre flop war. I treat myself when I get deep in poker tournaments. At the start, I'm not too excited. I don't look at one card at a time. I just wait till I get both. But when I'm deep in a poker tournament, I'm peaking one. And like, if I see the ace, I'm sweating it so hard. Even a king, a queen, yeah. anything that I'm like, oh my god, I'm gonna get to play a hand. I completely agree. Yesterday when I was when I was playing, I was like stressing out in the high roller. Tonka was sorry, trying to sorry. Give me. Can we just pause that, Rory? You were playing poker and you were stressed. I was incredible. <laughs> yeah. This this has never <laughs> happened before. Do, do you know what, Joe James? Even even on the scale of how stressed I often am, <laughs> yesterday was a new level of stress because I was in a high roller. I was right. really excited oh, yeah. to be there, Only taking it incredibly ones. seriously. Yeah. Tonka was like kind enough to give me some tips. <laughs> And he told me that I shouldn't look at my cards because I give so much away at the table. I shouldn't look at my cards until it comes round to my turn. Right. I tried that one. I, I was just too excited. Each time it was impossible for me. You just need you know, that instant it was like, It's like being eight years old and like seeing a chocolate bar. I couldn't avoid it. I could not look. Yeah, it was pathetic. It was pathetic willpower, but I just couldn't avoid it. Rory's stress face at the poker table has just like become the stuff of memes, quite frankly. Yesterday was a new level. I, I really was like going through it all yesterday. One of my favorite moments from anyone affiliated in any way with PokerStars in recent oh, times cool. was when you cashed a 25K in the Bahamas and you're up on the chair, you're celebrating. Oh. It's like Chelsea scored a last minute Champions League winner. Do, do, well, in my life, that is a moment. That is one of the best things that's ever happened to me in my life. Like, genuinely, like, it's comparable to Chelsea winning in Munich, to my daughter being born, to my wedding well, we'll, day. We'll, we'll edit that one out in post-production. Yeah, thank you, just in case my, my, my lovely family watch it. <laughs> but no, it's comparable to anything that has ever happened. Oh, he's got all in. Wow. So, whilst it might be a little bit scary, it is only five big blinds, so it's four and a half big blinds. So you'd, you'd find the shove with the king there for four and a half big. I would, but I would also be full of fear. Yeah, well, I can tell you that Michael Hooper bossed in 32nd place, so nice if like Salvain Booz loses yeah. here, Sylvain yeah, has got the place. money jump to 9.5k. Yeah. It happens. You just put yourself in the shoes of you. I love first match. Agony. <laughs> we want excitement. Yeah, oh, we're doing. you want excitement? You've got excitement. I'm really You're telling sweating. me there's a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Jack of clubs. Jack of clubs. Don't call <laughs> for cards when you're ahead, Constantinos. Uh, unlucky. Unlucky. So that is the elimination of Sylvain Bays, taking us down to 30 players, all guaranteed 9,520 euros.
Yeah. James, when I was on the feature table yesterday, did you see the big mistake I made with the bond? Yep. Did you see what happened? I was talking about it the day before with you on commentary. I know. 7 5 suited, you've, you've seen Casino Royale. Yeah. Bond makes the straight yeah, flush. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. I told James, I don't fold it under any circumstances. I was memeing about ever so slightly. I do fold it under certain cir circumstances. I misread my stack, and the amount of chips I thought I had, it was still very ambitious. But I had half of what I thought I had, which is so embarrassing as a professional poker player, but I'm quite new to live poker still. I often miscount my stack. Don't worry, I, I, I was very fair on you when I called you out for this egregious <laughs> error. <laughs> did, did I trick anyone with uh, saying that Spraggy was in the Gloucestershire choir? Did know, anyone go for that in here? Did you hear that? I was not around when you... Okay, when okay. You, uh, okay. So what did you do? Raise? No, I, I called uh, about 15% of my stack versus a raise uh, when I had, I think it was like 18 big blinds instead of what I thought was 38 big blinds. And it was against a gentleman who made a quite large free flop. So it was, uh, it was up there with the worst calls I've ever made. And when Anik at the end of the table goes, you've got 78k behind, I just go, oh. <laughs> like... Like, just, I was like, oh, I was like, yeah, 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 I do, I do. <laughs> I thought I had 165 or whatever. Still, it was the bond. you got to play the bond. If I had made a big hand there and you're sitting in the boot, I know you would have been up. I would have loved it. I, I would have made it. a bit of redemption for how much I disappointed you the last day in the boot. Not that we're going to talk about that. <laughs> Johnston with a T. Raising from the cutoff with King Queen. So Constantinos Matseris <laughs> is an online qualifier. Big fan of the live streams, has been watching us since 2010. That last time for the break would have been good here. Yeah, looks like he's yeah. reaching for a little re-raise rather than a call. Obviously, same outcome. Not good for you, but like, you know, it's good for the, the stream and stuff, right? There's an actual players' party. I thought every night was a players' party. Sorry, guys. I Pretty much. The it certainly has been here. I will have <laughs> seven million chips. It will be worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Moore <laughs> folded there, so action <laughs> is back <laughs> on Johnston. <laughs> yeah, the David Laffin said he had like four hours sleep it's a little bit, It's a little bit so difficult like, uh, to, went to karaoke and then he was just, uh, decide what you want to do here when I've not seen too much from everyone, but Animal. I would be inclined to want to see a flop. A King Queen, uh, of course. Can be dominated, but playing a position with it probably wouldn't want to fall. But I'll also, there's 30 players left at this moment in time. Johnson's got a very reasonable <laughs> stack with the 4.6 million. Doesn't particularly want to be clashing with stacks to cover him. I'm a lightweight man. Quite catastrophic to find yourself in a, you know, 100 big blind pot with a relatively weak hand. So I don't, I don't hate the discipline. Now I just have to pick my battles, right? There's so no, what is no going on set, in the whole Team England, Team <laughs> Ireland thing? I know there was the shuffleboard and the cornhole last night. Is that it now? Is it now <laughs> over? To my understanding, given the point lead that England currently have, myself and the captain of Team England, my friend Benjamin Sprague, will be playing heads up tomorrow, and he will start with a 5-3 to three advantage in terms of chips. Okay. Now, what way that 5-3 to three will be broken, whether it'll be 50k versus 30k or whatever way they'll do it, I believe that is the advantage you will have. It's going to be a reasonably fast structure. Of course, we want to respect the competition. But and it's captains only, right? It's captains like only, heads up. Rory, you captain can't captain sub in. No, Spraggy. Not. I'd, no love tag to do, I'd love to do a team uh, tag team. Yeah, right. You know what? I might, I might tell, I might tell Spraggy oh, if he wants to sub Rory, and I'll allow it. Just, I, I, I'm willing to be generous. I imagine that he will not take you up on that opportunity. He's taking this competition very seriously. I don't know if he punts it yeah, off with yeah, A7 so again. He might. <laughs> <laughs> Three, four hours more you know, it's a real honour to be sat here with you two. I've listened to so many of these streams. I've watched so, so many hours I'm so of sorry. these streams. No, no I've, it's been it's been an honour, and I've I've thoroughly enjoyed it, and I've learnt so much from watching you, watching this. So to be sat here with you both, it really is it's a prestigious moment in my life. This. Thank you for having me. My first time in the booth with Joe and James, myself and Spraggy sat in the middle and muttered out about. Six words in our 40 minute stint. I was just so <laughs> nervous. I had watched Joe and James since I was like 18. Yeah. No younger. Never. On my 18th birthday, I started watching. You are. You like the, the James, the uh, the James and Joe 
the yeah, hooker royalty. Yeah, it's, it really is, isn't Look, it? You're being very polite. What you're basically saying is you're an old git and you've been doing this for bloody <laughs> no, donkeys years. Far from not, it. You, not you're at iconic. All. You, are, you, and, you and Joe, what you've got going on here, it's truly iconic to witness it in, in uh, first hand like this. It's, it's a prestigious moment. I'll take it. Thank you, Joe. Very kind. So what's happened here? We've had the raise from Belyauskas, the flat from Vatseris, and now we've got Soloftus deciding what to do with all of those chips and ace queen of strawberries. Given the stack that was the original Razor, I don't see a world in which we don't squeeze this. Even if you have to get in against the 20 big blinds, it's fine. Which my guess is what we see here. Well, he's yanged it. He's made it a million. Yeah, one million. <laughs> Mason Pye says, I loved watching his tenders, so when I met Rory, I felt the same as he does now. <laughs> I think that's incredibly kind, but that's definitely not true. <laughs> but thank you, Mason Pye. <laughs> Raksha says, for me, it was the bill. <laughs> it's those those yeah, TV Rory. shows that every English actor has had a role oh, yeah. in at some point. No, no, yeah. do, do you know, those sorts of shows drying up, you know, the end of Holby City, the end of the bill. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actors are massive mischief. Especially but being replaced young by well. yeah, young actors. It was all replaced by reality TV. Really, really did us uh, didn't do us any favours when Sun Hill was no more. Interesting decision to just call here. A million chips called with 755k behind. The problem with doing this is you might right in this instance say he goes heads up versus the ace queen and we see a flop of even ten jack four. He's going to end up folding post flop. I like that. No, no juice for winning either. Just like you. In my head, he's probably like, if I don't see an ace, we're going with it. Going for it. But it can be a tricky strategy when with so little left to play. He'll be all in on this flop and he won't need to worry. So a little bit of a viewpoint. Yeah, the chance of things going belly up for Belyauskas are now pretty slim. He is all in. After he is shoved on by the chip leader, and there's a pretty good chance there is a 73% chance that he holds here. It's amazing how calm he looks to me. When I'm in that situation, I'm stood up, my hair, I'm sweating, I'm <laughs> pulling my hair out, I'm all over the place. Look, he's just so calm. Yeah, and you're describing yourself in level one. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I'm actually petrified when I cover the other person. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I'm like, just so, so intimidated the whole time. So Is there any other walk of. Excuse me, James. Just going to say, as a double up for Belyauskas. <laughs> Is there any other walk of life that million, that brings on this level of stress that you regularly engage in? Absolutely none. Poker, it, it, I think it's why I enjoy poker so much. It's why the game means so end. much to me. Because yeah, you it's, enjoy being stressed? I enjoy the buzz. Okay. The, the adrenaline rush. Like, cause, because playing poker, it's full of that, isn't it? You know that tiny little adrenaline rush? Every single hand, every single time you lift up a card, it might be the hand, it might be the moment, it might be when things change for you. I'm just forever on, on the edge of, of euphoria or disaster, and I thoroughly enjoy that. Or some food or something. And it comes and then he... This is a question like, that I can definitely ask you off air, but since we were talking about your acting resume, you shared a little while ago a music <laughs> video that you've been in that had an obscene amount of views, and I know it was a very popular band, and you were the main character in it. Could you remind me what it was? Because I was trying to get to it with Sprague the other night, and I couldn't. I, I quite like the fact that you can't find that music video. <laughs> I'm, I mean, I will, t I will tell you, on the condition that you don't share it with Spraggy, I'll tell you on this stream, but I could do with Spraggy not, okay. not knowing. I won't share it, but I can't promise. he will use it against me. He'll put it on the telly in the players' party or something. It was a song called... The Salmon Dance by, Clem by the Chemical Brothers. Chemical Brothers, that was it. I knew it was someone quite big. Thank yes. you. Only, only won a Video you Music Award 2009, uh. beating <laughs> Lily Allen's Not Fair at <laughs> 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 the award ceremony in Amsterdam. No big deal. Do you have the trophy? Did you get it? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so this is Brandon's big blind. <clears throat> Aidan Quinlan folding threes under the gun. Clock is being paused in every single event. Oh, they're going to do the lottery draw. <laughs> we'll get on to that in a moment. Wait, 
Sì. <laughs> Come c'è Google? Uh, 680. All in. <laughs> He said all in. All in, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Shoving like small to big, and Brandon has no choice but to call here. Well, if he calls here, it's a great spot for him to double up. It is a domination situation. Ah, <laughs> so, I know the feeling, Brandon. <laughs> what I would say, this hand is a snap call, but we might have a pay jump. We're not on a pay jump. Debs the Destroyer has just gone out in 30th. 29th pays the same. Next money jump isn't until we're down to 27. The second thing I would like to say, this is an absolutely monstrous spot for Brandon. If he was to go on and win this tournament, that might be a little bit too much for his ego, but it is so much money that he is well within his rights to take this time. I would guess that he knows he has to call, but he's a little bit reluctant to be all in and at risk, but he will make the call. And of course, we see it's going to be absolutely great news. A chance to be back up well over 1 million chips. Rory, half an hour ago you were stood there, so you're not saying anything right now. I'm Correct. muting your microphone. No Fair. spoilers. Oh, you in the background. Don't actually know. This might be a nit roll. Shit, sorry guys. Give me a sec. It's very reasonable for Brandon to take his time here. I think he is aware that he's going to have to make the call though. Yeah, blinds are currently 50,000, 100,000. Yeah, okay. cool, 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 cool. Six big blinds yeah. all in, and he has got the chip leader dominated here. He's in a great spot to double up. Stood up. Absolutely, about? get the additional equity, Brandon. Stand up. If, if, I, if I just saw the king, I would just go just with the king. <laughs> they were, were like one off a pay jump as well. I was just, uh, yeah. Yeah, when she said like thingy, I was just like, uh, very, like 2K, very think, reasonable for Brandon. 2K. No, but I think everybody's forced, so... Mm. Why, why is it Huge pot. It's just a bingo. 1.4 million chips. Yeah, but they, they can play the hand out, right? So if they so if someone busts that hand, I can just, like, you know... Oh, yeah. I'm sweating this, actually. They are going to deal it out. So far, so good, although it's sweaty. <laughs> that was a lot of extra out to Jack. A seven uh, for what do we straight. want? Something... Backdoor oh, diamonds. Jack, don't, don't do it. It's a scary super flop. High, super I don't want to look! <laughs> <laughs> oh no, the jack on the turn and it is all over. Unless a queen. <laughs> nice hand, guys. Nice hand. Good luck, everyone. Brandon win eliminated in 29th place. Great run for Brandon and a great score, 9,520 euros. Just get it in good. It's a little bit heartbreaking. No, I don't know. I don't think I did. You knew, Rory. You knew. It was a page on. Mate, you didn't give away anything. That acting's still there. I was heartbroken. I was so, I was so upset. It was it all sh it was shaping up so well, the wasn't it? It was perfect. I no idea what when the cards turned over, it just looked so positive. It's a cruel game. Okay, so we're in the situation now where all the clocks have been paused, uh, play has been paused in the main event because they're about to announce the winner of the lottery. This is basically a bag full of money. It costs five euros to enter, and the winner is going to get twenty-three thousand five hundred euros, and all the money's in a plastic bag. Somebody I know, who I will never name, bought close to ten percent of the tickets. Yes. <laughs> Let me tell you right now, I'm about to sweat them pretty hard. I'll never reveal who it is. Never reveal, especially if you push me and try and find out. Now you probably can't hear what's being said in the background. But apparently the first name they pull gets nothing. The second name they pull wins the lottery. That's just awfully mean. Here we go. First name. Four, three, two, one. Happy New Year! Oh my God, I think that might be our numbers. You don't want it to be a number first, you want it to be a number second. Guys, I got Excel at work. I don't know this here. <laughs> Unlucky, Daria. You were the first name drawn and you win nothing. 
<laughs> it's so silly. And I absolutely love it. It's great fun, isn't it? Thank you. Thank you. Guys, this is some bad ruling. You have to change it. This is a bad ruling. You have to change it. Because then, incident. Number 4584. Five, and then the new players try to sit here. Or he can smooth. He can smooth. Because the two players in the case gets a massive advantage because he's three hands in the battle. Of course. Do we have a name? There's a lot of names on here. It was an amazing moment because there is actually just a massive bag of money. It is. It's just a huge bag full of cash. That guy needs to just learn how to control it. The search function in Microsoft Excel is not all it's cracked up to be. I quite like how old-fashioned it is, the way that it was done, just scrolling through an Excel sheet. Who is number 4584? Ashley Canning. Is Ashley Canning in the room? Yes, Ashley's in the room. Ashley's going to get a plastic bag filled with 23,500 euros. Winner of that five euro lottery. It's not what I expected Ashley to look like. No. <laughs> I thought it was a woman. I've mean, got to be honest. When I heard Ashley, I thought some lovely lady had picked up the cash. I'm now, I know it's 2024, but like. I don't think that's a, that's not what I imagined. Congratulations, Ashley. Ashley's going to be over the moon. Jenny, you're everywhere. I am everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, Laurie. 3,000, 3,000. Dealers, please, in quite eight of the mini main, shuffle up and deal. Well done, Ashley, and hopefully we can now carry on playing the uh, Irish Open main event after that completely unplanned, unscheduled hiatus. It's also a clear plastic bag, so good luck walking out the yes. venue with that. <laughs> Very safe part of Dublin. He'll be all right. He'll be all right. Right, are we dealing again? That's right, Fan Fox. At least they didn't stop to count the players again. I think they can keep track of 28 people. By the way, when we get to 24, there will be a redraw for the final three tables. Same again when we hit 16 for the final two tables. They've decided that they're not playing for the FT tonight. They're doing levels. Doing levels. So obviously, ideally, yeah, get to a final table, but they don't want to play past midnight, which will be uh, 10 full levels today. Good for you. Stand up for your rights. <laughs> What a sweat for the final remaining 28. I know, and we do the EPTs and stuff, there might be more of a first, but in terms of buy-ins, 1,000 euro being turned into 450,000 euro, which is so insane. It's crazy, isn't it? So now that little Brandon's gone, who have we still got who is a story who we're interested in? So we've got Kimo Kirko, the runner-up of EPT Barcelona 2013. We've got Porig Parkinson. I mean, that guy was playing on TV back in the 1990s. Yeah. He's one of the late-night poker originals. He is a legend of commentary as well, working for so many years with Jesse May. We have still got Connor Beresford, who is still a top 10 stack. I personally have a very good friend still in called Edo Torn. Some of that uh, I used to play poker with back when I was 18. Oh, wow. So I hadn't seen him in quite a few years. He came up to me, didn't realize he was in the main, and he just made a massive hero call for his tournament life at about 50 left. Who's this? Sorry? Uh, Adrian Thorne. Adrian sorry. Thorne, yes. Excuse me. Edo to his friends. Yeah, he spent a fair amount of time at the feature table, and yeah, he's played really well. He's a good guy. I, I 
<laughs> Selfishly, would like him and Conor Beresford on the final table. I had a little pit stop with Conor as I was walking through to watch that draw. And he was so relaxed, so calm, so confident. It was amazing. It was the antithesis of the way that I would be in the exact same situation. <laughs> just completely, just completely together. Carter is scarily good at poker. That's probably the difference. You passed a million. She was right. You, pa you passed me a million. I was getting a million. You said, you said, you said so just to be clear, the karaoke competition that took place last night, that was not part of the whole Team England, Team Ireland thing, right? This was... Feraldo's Feraldo. thing. That was Feraldo's competition that he ran. The, the and fair play to Bench. I was on his table in the, the 3K last night and he wasn't having any drinks. He was very sober. He wasn't sure if he was going to be able to get up there. And he just decided to do a fan favourite. He did Wonderwall and he got the crowd going. So I say fair play. Never knew he was so good at singing. No, he's quite decent. I think the I think the microphone and the, the sound system didn't do him any favours. Yeah, that was the issue. I heard very <laughs> good reviews of Mr. Lappin's performance of Fairy Tale Hill. Hill. Yeah, I didn't see it. I didn't hear it. I don't know if it got recorded. He harmonised. He did both parts. He's uh, he's trying to suppress videos of it coming out apparently. <laughs> Given that we didn't hear Lappin's name, does that mean he is unfortunately no longer with us? At a poker tournament. Yeah, but he's, he's still alive, Vincent. Yes, <laughs> but no. Uh, both David and Dara went out during the last session, so. Uh, that's the bad news. The good news is I think David's going to join us for the tail end of tonight's stream. And maybe Dara as well, unless he manages to spin it up in the mystery bounce. Yeah, quite a few chips on the walk by. Okay, good to hear. So, the button stays in the same. So, you're running to your middle. You're running to your middle. So, just give him two. <laughs> so Rory, you and Adam and Booby had a bunch of qualifiers who came over, right? A lot of yes. platinum pass winners from yes. your, not platinum pass, but silver pass winners from your uh, Road to the Irish Open promotion. How, any of them do well? Any of them cash? I think, yeah, I think there's been a couple of caches, actually. I think a few of them have done well. Uh, there was a football tournament where they excelled. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think it's been I think it's been a success. I think the the, the fellas who won thoroughly enjoyed it. And yeah. uh, sadly, nobody has left. But there were some caches along the way, so it was. Uh, did, did you have anyone who had literally never played poker before? Were they all kind of like, okay, they may not be the most skilled players, but they had a basic understanding of what to do in a multi-day, multi-table tournament. I think almost everybody had played simply right. because. They had they played in a tournament that we there was a there was a game that we played that we organised that they came along to, so I think they'd all played before. I there did was the tutorial one Jack. On the you did the tutorial, and yeah. They were quite familiar with the game. Okay, well that's good. But not overly familiar with the like etiquette of live poker. Okay, well that's important. Yeah, yeah. and I tried my best, gave them a few tips, told them that you should always announce your bets because it's I quite agree. important. And then I sat down. And I played the 5k high roller, and I confused the color of the chips <laughs> twice in the first two orbits. I bet 5,600 instead of 1,600 twice, and I felt quite like the silly goose. Say as I do, <laughs> not as I do. Don't do as I do, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But no, that is, that is always one of my absolute number one tips. You're 100% right, Vincent, to anyone who's new to live poker, is say what you want to do. If you verbally declare it, you then can't go wrong. So it's a cut-off raise from Brian Moore with the 9-8 of diamonds. One of the last remaining American players in the field. In fact, let's check. Is Brian the last American? This is a pretty frustrating size for Quinn to see. Generally, for the most part, people are making it around two big blinds, sometimes 2.5. But we see more making it 3.5. And I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with that. I see lots of players who do it. They execute it successfully. But Quinlan has the kind of hand that he's going to have to most likely still kick call. Press call. No, do, put the chips in the middle. Sorry, we're not <laughs> clicking. We're not pressing. Put the chips over the line. He can metaphorically click. Exactly. Confirmation, by the way, that Moore is the last player rep in the US of A. That's becoming more prevalent, isn't it? A big, big raise. Yeah, it is. Is it a strategy you ever employ? No, it is not. Um, simply because I've been studying with a smaller size for many years, and I'm more comfortable with how it works, and we use smaller sizes, so I'm trying to keep it, um, keep it that way as often as I can. 
Generally, as the size goes up, though, you just want to call less and be shoving more or re raising more. You're just getting a worse price than, say, defending. Obviously, folded more, too. Yeah, Matai noticing that uh, Helder Senna is back at the feature table and is now represented by the Portuguese flag. What often happens is if a player buys in for a tournament using their PokerStars account, it defaults to their location, i.e. where their Stars account is registered to rather than where they're from in the world, rather than their actual national identity. And so unless you tell them to change it back... Is that what it is? Yes, so that's why Senna had the UK flag earlier on, because he lives in Scotland, and obviously that's where he plays on Stars. So uh, he's obviously said, well, actually, I'm Portuguese, so I give me the Portuguese see. flag. Well, there was, that's funny, because there was, a, there was an Irish guy on my table who had an English flag next to his name, Livid. Yes, it happened Livid. to me and in the Six Max as well. Uh, John Park, actually, who's still in. Right, that's what it is, okay. Yeah, John Park, I think he lives in the UK, or certainly Stars account in the UK, and he was like, why have I got the Union Jack against my name? Yes. I had to explain that, you know, just, just tell them to change it, they'll change it. Look what they got, got me with last night. Just went to karaoke to enjoy my night after playing yep. all day. And somebody managed to get an English flag into the back of my bag. Whilst you were wearing your... Irish suit and snap a picture. Amazing. That's shocking, Karen. Fair on. play to whoever managed to do that. I won't be giving them credit. <laughs> I won't be naming them. Alexander D'Souza went out in 28th place. We're down to 27 now. That means we've had another money jump. Everyone guaranteed the better part of 11,000 euros. Wonderful. It's a pretty nice board for us to bet here after we've raised with Queen 8. Got ourselves a little overcard, got ourselves backdoor flush draw, got ourselves straight draw. I find those small pocket pairs such a difficult hand to play. I get myself into all I have sorts a simple of rule, Rory, you ready? It's really easy to remember. Tell me. No set. Get out of no there. Bet. Fair. Okay, it rhymes as I, well. I, I love Rory's version. No set, get out of there. Yeah. It doesn't quite doesn't, have no. the same. It's not as pithy. No. <laughs> yes. I, I can For the get most part, it's, not a, it's not a bad rule. Of course, you know, if you defend with pocket fours, mm. and it comes it's out, say, five, six, seven, you've also got a straight yes, draw. Yes, then yes. it can be a little bit more complicated, but... Especially in the early in the early doors. If you don't flop the set, get out of there. Get no the bet. Gone, even. Get no. the gun. Get out of there. Get the gun. Get, you know what? I get, take a hike. I actually prefer your version. We go with that. No set. Get out of there. <laughs> One I wish I had 11 million chips. I wish I had four tables left. Any. You take a starting stack right I'd now. Absolutely. James, you want to know an interesting stat? It won't quite become the it won't quite become the Spraggy. But I've bust the Irish Open every time I've played it with Ace 10-Off. Really? Three out of three. Well, sorry. On a technicality, that's not true, but I lost 90% of my chips the time I found tables with Ace 10 I'm, I'm going to say that I don't like the idea of naming a hand after someone with negative connotations. <laughs> I think it should be a positive thing. Spraggy is the exception. <laughs> yes. Spraggy's the A7, isn't he? Yes. Sam Grafton is the 9-10. Yes. I wish I knew how to play it had like 9 10. I asked him why. I said, Why is that, Sam? He said, It's the power hand. And that was the end of his sentence. There you go. So we I don't know. know what that means. It can make straights, it can make pairs, it can make trips, it can make, make two pairs. I get it. It can make flushes. I always find it interesting watching people handle the chips at this stage. The hands do start to get going a little bit if you're nervous. It's very, very tough to hide it. Not saying that happened with Quidlin. That's that's always a powerful question to ask, isn't it? When when somebody looks at you and looks at your stack, and they've got more, and they ask you what you've got, 
but now I'm now I'm all over the place. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm terrified. I'm, I'm trying not to make eye contact. Okay, well this is a great spot for Quinlan. All in with Queens against Ace Four. <coughs> I think it's been four or five years since anyone's folded ace four or ace five. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're about two we're just always in. So always all in. Last one, take this the one. game's gone. <laughs> just the You're one so heart. nervous for everyone. So fast. Feel hearts. Feel hearts. You be quiet. You be quiet. E two. <laughs> You're always up for the best hand, never the underdog. Come on, it's just a queen on there, it's boring. You want, no, I want, you I want, want the, the person best who's, a, I want the person who's hey, potentially going to lose their life in the tournament to survive. Million. No, that's not nice. See, that's boring. Now everybody knows who's going to win. How much? <laughs> not much drama <laughs> now. Yeah, and two, two. We were speaking about the power hand to 9 10 suited. I played the biggest pot I played all day with 9 10 suited. And I'm bluffing all in on the river for about 2x the pot, right? It's a huge pot. It's getting kind of close to the money. All I hear is Parker. Now, apparently the gentleman I was in the pot against couldn't hear go, every time I walk over here, this guy's all in. And I'm like, and I never get mad at Parker. And I turned around, I was like, Parker, man, I was bluffing. If he had to call me because he heard yes. that, I didn't know anything about me. <laughs> I can't explain to you how mad I would have been. But the guy, the guy music again, didn't hear that. He folded. I had, uh, I played a satellite yesterday, and I had Tonka on my table for the first time ever. It's quite the character. It, it was an incredible experience. I've never known anybody with that personality, confidence, noise, presence at the table. I reckon satellites might suit you because they genuinely do reward patience and picking your spots and not being too gung ho. But you wouldn't believe how close I came to making a pig's ear out of an amazing <laughs> situation. You had to get to fifty thousand. You started with ten thousand chips. You had to get to fifty thousand chips. Did you chips. bet an amount that I got to forty six thousand really quickly? I ended up back down at twenty seven. It was it, nobody's ever come closer to blowing it than me. Spraggy was desperate for me to blow it as well. He was thoroughly enjoying my my malaise. Checking the stacks, the players, the feature table, we can see that Helder Center is super short. Chip Leader still has 90 big blinds. We are at the 50K, 100K blind level at the moment. And we have lost a player. I was talking about John Park, the Irish player who in the six max was annoyed at the flag he had. John Park's just busted in 27th place, so he cashes for 10,940 euros. 26 remain, that means two more eliminations until the redraw at 24 for the final three tables. It's a wonderful amount of money, isn't it, for John Park to have won. Yeah, when I talked about finishing around midnight tonight, <laughs> one thing I hadn't factored in was that there'll be a redraw at 24 and a redraw at 16. That always adds time to the day. I also didn't know we were going to have to have 10 minutes of uh, lottery presentation either. <laughs> it's good for the game, James. Yeah, absolutely. Game. Finishing at 1 a.m. rather than midnight is always good C4. for the game. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, wow. <laughs> Rory, I love watching poker with you, playing poker with you. <laughs> like, there's nothing that we'll see on this screen that will get such a genuine reaction from James. He'll give you, like, the best delivery of every line you'll hear. But when Rory says to, oh, wow, like, I feel the pain oh. deep down in his belly of, like, he's genuinely hurt for this person. Mate, he's got seven big blinds. He's got king, queen. It's a good hand. I know, but sitting tight. Also, it's just the emotion of your tournament being over. It's just such a, it's a the journey ends. You don't want the journey to end. It's just a story that's being written. Oh. <laughs> Imagine feeling that love for the game when you see a seven big blind jab. I, Roy, it's like, you know, if there's any kids listening, please mute their ears for the foreseeable few moments. You know when a kid, like, wakes up on Christmas morning and they see their presents and they're like, oh, my God. Santa brought me the presents. And then at some point, a few years down the line, they might find out some new news that will break their heart. Yes. No kid can ever go back. 
and you're in that beautiful moment right now where you're a four-year-old on Christmas morning that and nice you come down and, and your mum's made you cookies. <laughs> <laughs> you, got a little, you got a little bit of snow on the carpet. It looks like yeah, there's been people the there. The you got the yeah. brand new Chelsea jersey. We have an all-in that's more important. Well, I mean, it's not looking good for Helder Center, is it? Just the one live card right now needs to spike a king. Only a king saves Helder Center. It is a nine, and we're down to 25. Fantastic run. Good, my friend, man. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I really love you. I really do. Fantastic run. What a shame. Uh, I uh, hope that you never lose one. that optimism yeah, for the game. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. It still feels very, very fresh at the moment. I love it so much. It's no, no. See, this is what I mean. See, he's done now. Goodbye. That's yeah, the that's, end. That's how it works. I know, but it's uh, there's three thousand two hundred thirty-three <laughs> people. They can't all have four hundred k. There was, I think there was one like EPT or something where some guy went to the toilet and they're like, oh, he's probably this is like, exactly <laughs> what I was discussing yesterday over here. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what the reference is? James? <laughs> during the I mean, it'd be bad enough like the actual sound effects, but like I imagine. Oh, we forgot the house. <laughs> oh, dearie me. Stream. <laughs> I had a moment like that my first ever time in the radius of an EPT microphone but I was very lucky that the tournament had gone to a break myself and Kevin Clean at EPT London many many moons ago were making jokes about what we were going to do with spending the money and it were very much jokes but then we realised the mic was hot and the fear that ran through our blood at that moment but we were okay they were on a break also not being funny any decent so we got, we got sound, sound person. Off. Sound off. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You actually didn't even play a hand that was doing that. Well, the fold, yeah. no, I went Oh, it's saying we're down to 24. Second hand in about 24. Gosh, it's dropping like flies. Yeah. It's rapid now, isn't it? So actually, <laughs> it was just before Senna went out of the feature sure table. Is. Jacob Linden went out from one of the outer yeah. tables. So both those guys cash for ten and a half grand. Uh, obviously, we've got big money to be paid out to the top ten, and they are going to do the redraw. But there is still a hand in progress at one of the other tables, so it could be that the redraw is to twenty-three rather than twenty-four. Table redraws at this point in the tournament are actually incredibly important. We were just talking about, say, someone, for example, like Connor Beresford. Yeah. You want to be as far away from that man as possible. You, and the last thing you want is him on your direct left. So at this moment in time, you want to be, if you can, avoiding the players with lots of chips and sitting on your left. Because you know the way you say you get a little bit scared at this stage? Yes. You so you see the triangle here, guys. Uh, Boris Chong Sit, who's in the seventh seat, bet out and David two in seat six has shoved. So the question is whether Boris is gonna call here. Full board has been dealt. It is King Queen nine ten three. Are you taking up all the mics? So David the at risk player. David has moved all in and it looks like a fold from Boris. And so that means we are going to hit the redraw break. And that means a new feature table. See the gentleman in blue here, just at the very front of the yes. screen. He is the quad queen man. He took Adam McCullough's chips. He took all of Adam McCullough's chips. I could, I could feel the anger in was that, voice. Was Adam McCullough eliminated by quads? He was. Is he aware Kings of the... Kings versus queens. Is he aware of the hashtag death by quads? I'm sure he is now. Well, you need to tell him. Adam, you were a victim of hashtag death by quads. I will most certainly tell him that every day from now for the rest of my life. And that there in the blue was the perpetrator. So the players will be given new seat assignments around the final three tables. One of those tables will become the feature table. 
And a reminder that we will keep going tonight until one of two things happens. Either we'll get to the end of level 32, which will mean we'll have played 10 full levels today, or we'll hit the final table. I do maintain that second option is highly unlikely. Very good chance we'll get to two tables. Very good chance we'll have to redraw to 16 and maybe play a few more hands. But getting down to nine is going to be tough. Still a lot of chips in play, as you'd imagine, with 3,233 total entries. And I'm told that now we are down to the final 24. Our friends and colleagues at Poker News are going to observe the 30-minute delay. So that means live updates on Poker News will be synced with the stream. 30-minute delay on both the stream and the live updates which is good news if you want to follow what's happening at the outer tables and if you want to get follow chip counts, etc., etc., everything will now be on sync. So short break should take us about 10 minutes to get the redraw done, come back with a new feature table, and then we'll continue playing down here at the Irish Open in Dublin. Under the gun with Ace Queen. Stack to have a king here with. That's the secret. You just gotta do Keen's it. Keen's next. Keen's next. That's what happened the last time. Isley then Keen. Oh God. Yeah. Makes it forty thousand. Isley then Keen. Yeah. Yeah. Double up and then Keen. Sounds like a pretty good strat. Well, that's what happened the last time. Oh. The last table. Nice. And gets through. To the blinds, Terry with king six suited. Just doubled up, doesn't really have the chips to mess around. Okay. On to Molinar with nine eight suited uh, and does have the chips to mess around. We got a mess around hand and we got mess around stack. Expect some messing around. Gotta mess around. are going to two a flop seven five four it's a mess around flop joe two hearts it is a mess around flop it's a it's a board that favors the messer around her indeed checks through five on the turn mcguire may be feeling a little bit better about his ace the board pairing but molinar is going to be well aware that his range contains way more hands that connect with 4755 five than Maguire's does. I want him to bet 90K. Well, that's nice. looking pretty close. That looks like exactly 90, to be honest. Oh. A 110. <laughs> exactly pot. Very nice. Love to see it. Really want to see a chunky lead here. Um, if I'm McGuire and I'm checking ace queen on this board, I probably always call turn here. Just because it's really important that if you're gonna check this flop, you don't get exploited by some straight draws and or some flush draws that will lead like this on turn. Although it's a big portion of his stack, so you gotta appreciate why that size is so good, Joe. Yep, nice work. Let's call with the best of it. Obviously still not out of the woods yet though. 10 of diamonds is clean. Ace Queen will win at showdown if we get there. Is Molinar <laughs> going to make that easy or make that difficult? Oh, man. I think there's some better rivers to bet here if you're Molinar. But I think that either option is fine checking and or betting. I always get caught betting here, but it's whether or not your opponent's capable of making the Ace Queen call, the Ace King call, the Ace Jack call. Ace 10 might still be in there as well. I don't see why not. So that's obviously got to be a concern. Would have loved to have seen like a, oh my days. He made it difficult. There will be no showdown. Molinar wins this pot with pure elbow grease. Oh man, that is some real spice right there. 
Talk about bet sizes. This table is on fire, Joe. Back to the feature table now. 16 remain. Thank you for that outer <laughs> table action, producers. Very good job. I know it's late. Still bringing you guys all the action, or as much as we can capture. Zeddy says, looks like a cool venue. It is a cool venue, Zeddy. Honestly, I am really, really thrilled with the work that Patty Power Poker and Poker Stars have done here. Lots of green. I love it. Very bright, lovely environment to play cards. What has happened here? We had a raise under the gun with 9-7 suited. Okay, I said folks are going to knit it up, but Shaw calls. O'Donnell calls. Flop for pairs, generally speaking. The Jables here definitely loving 646 six usually. The fact that the big blind's not involved here is also pretty cool too. Not even a gut shot. Well, we're on the turn. So now does have a gut shot <laughs> with his ten. Yeah, did you see the flop action there, Joe? I, 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 I don't. I guess Robert Sakos is the person who, who led as the only thing that makes sense to me was continued. I'm not sure I missed it though. I did too. I, it seems odd guess. that there would be a, then it went check, bet, call, call. Yeah. But I am surprised to see Robert Sakos still in the hand either way. So I he looked away momentarily. Sorry, gang. As the initial, as the initial razor, I guess there must have been a C bet yeah. on the flop. Burn off top MTG says the C bet 60% call call. Thank you. Thank you, sir. That would certainly make sense. makes more sense. Yeah, than I was gonna say check, check check check. Check calling. No, it definitely wasn't check check. Yeah. One million. It's checked to O'Donnell, who's betting a million with not the third best hand, but now it is the worst hand. So Shaw's hand kind of well disguised here. O'Donnell pretty much puts in half of his stack. Half of a small stack, by the way. O'Donnell's got like a quarter pot left behind. Yeah, exactly. Four spades, no change. Uh, four spades is very, very bad for O'Donnell. Yep, the counterfeited now. Does Shaw just put them all in on the river here? I mean, all in. O'Donnell shoves. <coughs> my, oh my, you certainly don't want to show this hand down. One six. Playing the board. 55. <laughs> I'm not sure you can yeah. fold. It's so little Six. to make this call. 55. Yeah, it's, I mean, jacks, they're just going to be the best hand a ton. And so what is, the, what is the pot odds here? Like the how many times do you have to be right? Uh, so total would be eight. I mean, this might be one of those situations you're like, okay, I only have to be right like one in every nine times, and you just might think you're never right. 
You need to have the best hand here about 18% of the time. And you might just come to the conclusion like he always has a six here like 98% of the time has a six or a four. I, I, I would argue he, from that position, given the action, he's probably not going to have a six all that often unless it's exactly right. like six, seven. Or okay, fair can, enough. Can yeah. still have hands like seven, eight. Can still have hands like eight, nine. Can still have hands yeah, like... Yeah, so it, it seems well... <laughs> I mean, it seems like you're getting... By far the right odds. It's then. it's a it's it's mental. He could also still be doing this for the ten, and he thinks he's doing it for value, right? It's uh, it's a really really odd one. He's trying to rep the six or the four, of course. Yeah, chat. You got it I mean, right. I, I, or is he? I mean, rep, Are you repping queens, kings, or aces? Not really, right? Because there's no re-raise pre-flop. Yeah, and I and I don't know how much trapping he's gonna do. Oh Gets the my fold. goodness! Wow, wow, we wow. Can't win with that, can you? <laughs> Why? Play. Wow. Did you text Joe? No. <laughs> My daughter's going to have this you know, oh, at the bar, so she's probably dead. taping it. I thought you were calling me. He finds out. So that was then. This is now. Welcome back to the year 2024. And the Irish Open main event presented by Poker Stars and Paddy Power Poker. We just took a quick break, a brief hiatus for the redraw. Down to 24, down to the final three tables. New seating assignments. That means a new lineup on the main stage. And among the players we're watching right now, Connor Beresford, Irish poker legend, Porrick Parkinson, and Adam McCullough's nemesis, Oliver Boyce, Vincent Hand and Rory Jennings, still alongside me, James Hartigan. This is it, this is the... This is where it all kicks in now, the business end. Uh, sitting in seat one is also a good friend of mine personally, not someone who would be known to the streams, but Adrian Torn. Grew up around the same area, played poker when we were young lads. Used to play a little home game. I mean, went to school with his cousin. Really? He used to batter us in the free games when he wasn't even old enough to be playing poker. Not playing for cash, just to be very clear. <laughs> Man. Parkinson, legend of the game, has yes. cash for a ridiculous amount of money. I played with him on day one. He put me in the blender about 14 times in about 20 hands. Now, I will say, I did eventually get all of his chips, but he almost made me fold a very good hand, but I'm not good enough to fold, and I called, and he was getting way out of line. <laughs> way out of line. I feel like, I think I see Barney Boatman tweeting about his hope that Parkinson will win, right? Yeah, I feel like I did. I mean, it would be continuing the theme of like, let's see all the OGs with major <laughs> titles in 2024. Barney wins EPT Paris. Porrick Parkinson wins the Irish Open. Would love to see it. I was having a drink with Steve Warburton, who is an English rank for those who may not be familiar. Very lovely chap. And he has moved myself and him into the old timers bracket now. Apparently, we're closer to Barney and Parkinson than we are, say, the 20, 22, 23 year old people in terms of etiquette and how we go about the game. And I don't know, it just it made me feel very middle aged for the first time in my life. <laughs> I think it's an honour. I think I think it's a moment, isn't it, when you suddenly become <laughs> like as soon as you can qualify to play seniors football. You know, as soon as you're over 35 and you're allowed to play seniors. I'm not quite there. It's it's a it's a poignant moment. I have one year to go <laughs> before I can play event? seniors events. <laughs> oh yeah. my days. Yeah. Spraggy used to make this joke when we first started streaming together. Spraggy was 25 years old, and he always used to say, old man shouts at cloud. It's from The Simpsons, yes, I believe, yeah, yeah. right? But there was a 20-year-old on our table, because Spraggy asked him, are you going to be going to WSOP this year? And he was like, I'm not old enough. And Spraggy was like, excuse me, this guy plays 25 games and stuff. It's crazy, 20 years old. And Spraggy plays a hand, and he gets questioned by this young chap. And Spraggy just starts saying a load of things, but he just wants to play in peace. And then he realizes <laughs> he has become, become that guy. Yeah. what he yeah. used to just take the piss out of. Yeah. And it was just so good. He gave, he gave it the handshake and the old man shakes. Really, yeah. yeah, yeah. uh, so. so the opening race has come from Brian Moore. Round to the blinds. Connor folds the small. Look at him rocking the real bad man jump. Real bad man, Connor. Real bad man. <laughs> Chris Johnson. It's accurate. Folds the big. Yeah, we were wondering earlier on, what, is it meant to be that he's a real bad man or is it real bad man? 
<laughs> no, there's no comma. No, it's <laughs> I, I, think it's, I think it must be real bad, man. It's not a big blank. I walked up to him earlier on and I said, you're a real bad man. And he said, stop it. So I don't know what way he wants to be in the gym. He needs to embrace it. You can't say stop it if you're wearing the, <laughs> yeah, if you're wearing the garments to suggest that you are the real bad man. So it looks like Heapneen is chip leader once again with around 9.3 million. Dangerous glasses. You could give away your hand in those. Have you ever seen the beer to me where Kim Kardashian, I believe it is, and she's doing a charity poker event, and she's wearing glasses out of a blue reflection, and she's looking at her cards, really? and you can see them. Honestly, they look like they're the same brand. I'd be very careful. Nine have you had the chance to go explore the Dublin City or been too busy with the I, activities I and the poker? No, I've been on the compound, although we're in a lovely area, aren't we? The compound. I've been on the compound. <laughs> it's not the great escape. We're not in like Stalag <laughs> Camp 63. I've, I've been I've been hauled up around here. But we're in a Did lovely area. Did you get area. to the farmer's market? Nice restaurants. Yeah, I had a walk around there. Nice restaurants, nice park. I've been within the vicinity, but I haven't gone any yeah, further. Really. I love it around here. I live very close. Yeah, it's nice. Lots of nice restaurants. Beautiful restaurants, very close by. So Porig has opened with Ace Three of Spades, made it 250k. We're still at the 50k, 100k blind level. Action is on Oliver Boyce in the big blind. Do you want to know something incredibly impressive, Rory? Because I heard you singing at James's praises for many, many years when he did commentary. See the way Boyce has no cards. Yes. That's who they had to do commentary. I, I did one session ever where they had to talk endless amount of content with no cards available until there was an all-in. And I can't imagine doing that now. Hour after hour after hour of talking shite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I have no idea how you managed to do that. But it, the cards up, the cards up coverage, it's so, it's so, it's amazing. yeah, it's so enticing as well. You know, if you put it on, sometimes in the morning, I think, I'll put it on for 10 minutes. Still there an hour and a half later. <laughs> Where's my take I know, on? I know. I it's, want it's my time back. Once you click on, it's impossible to turn it off. We are the Pringles of live yes. streaming. <laughs> What's you, pub? What's everyone's spice bag count that this week? Serious questions. Pardon? One. 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 It came like, like a rumbly tumbly after the event. I wasn't going to go down that avenue any time <laughs> soon again. <laughs> you don't know what a spice bag is, Roy. You've not even got that far. No. Oh, I, I tell you where. I don't know what to do with you. I, sh I, I just the reason I ignored you wasn't out of out of rudeness. I have no idea what you're saying. <laughs> I thought I better not flag that on the stream. So I just sat here hoping that it would move on. What, what did you say? I asked you had you had a spice bag. Right, I haven't, I don't think. It's slightly inaccurately monikered because it comes in a box rather than a bag. Right. It's a box of food from the uh, Asian cuisine truck. And oh, no. I, I'm going to use the word Asian in inverted commas, by the way. Yes. I haven't eaten from any truck. There are lovely food options from around here. No, there is. So, um, I've been in a lobster pot. Hello. There's a lot. Have you been in there? It's just down I the road. Not, it's very nice. It's next to a. My lunch has been in a place called Sprouts, just down the road yeah, every day. Yeah, my wife loves Sprouts. Very nice. They've somehow managed to make salads taste well, so fair play. Yeah, yeah, it's lovely. Vance187 asks, is anyone grinding poker stars while watching? I sincerely hope so. Hashtag play on poker stars. Uh, tomorrow, guys, there is an Irish Open live stream tournament that can be played starting at 3 o'clock local time. That's 3 p.m. British summer time. It's $1.10 to play, and we're adding 2K in Sunday Million Anniversary tickets to the prize pool. And you can register now. In fact, I am among the players registered. Have you enjoyed your Sunday Million adventure so far as a man who for many, many moons could not play? Absolutely. I have a 100% cash record in the Sunday Million. Part of me, part of me wants to play the Sunday Million anniversary. Part of me wants to maintain that 100% record. Have you played it more than once? That's not relevant. 22 <laughs> players have registered.
for tomorrow's Irish Poker Open live stream tournament. It's happened again. Oh, wow. This, this guy. This beautiful joy in poker. He really has. Johnston living the dream. Derry beat Dublin. Liverpool won. Yeah, penalties. He's given up the 275. And he's kept uh, it small Liverpool enough, won. hoping to get a customer. Arsenal, and he's going to get one. Looking good. Really opens up that, that whole league title's opened up. Okay, so Moore has flopped a gut well, shot. That's something, I guess. <coughs> Interesting enough spot for Johnson. Might be tempted to check here occasionally. Depends how he believes Moore is playing. Seven, check. Block faster on poker. Eight, check. At this point, two flush draws on the board. <laughs> I would start putting a lot of chips in. Might even be tempted to bet more than that's in the pot, Rory. That's a huge tactic. Huge statement you'd be making there. Ace is a very strong hand here. When you think about what your opponent in the big blinds are going to call, like they're not really going to have like 10-2, 10-4, 10-5. That much. They're maybe for the small price at 10-5. But we are down to the final three tables, so most likely we'll fold. So your hand's very good right now. Does Boer fancy making a bit of a play? Still does have a good shot to the best hand possible. Might believe the 8 and 7 are good, but no. The matchy matchy was not good enough. Running very nicely, isn't he, Johnston? I love poker. I believe it's the greatest game ever invented. But the reality is, at this stage, you really do have to run well. Oh, yeah, you're beholden to. Well, I certainly am beholden to my card. But everybody is. Yeah. It doesn't matter who you are. If you get dealt aces versus kings, you're out. Yeah. Right? Like, that's just how the game goes. Correct. And I feel like that's just why it's so beautiful. No limit hold them. Because we have any hand, Rory. It's a joy, isn't it? <laughs> So right now it is Oliver Boyce who is the table chip leader with eight and a half million. Ace eight diamonds here for your buddy Finson, Adrian Thorne. Yeah. He's a man who generally won't pass on an opportunity to put chips into the middle if it's presented to him. So some players at this point playing eight-handed might be tempted to fold, they say. Yep. But I'm not surprised to see Ado, a.k.a. Adrian, raise it up here. Seven fold. That was the game when I was playing my Eight fold. Oh. Ace king for Boris Chongset. What would imagine with this stack? We will simply see it all in, then we'll simply see it fall. Nine, all in. I don't hate Adrian asking for a count here. He's not going to call, but sometimes, particularly on such a large TV table, when you're in the seat one versus seat eight, it can be hard to see what your opponent has for chips. So one, it's nice to get no, the count so you out. know for future yeah. hands. But also, just in case he has like eight big blinds, you know? He might have eight big blinds and he might not be great eyeballing stacks. I'd be very shocked to see Adrian call here. I think he's just going to be folded. Let's see, he just wants to find out. I don't, I don't hate that, he's not wasting too much time. Arnie C9 says, Finton, what is your best live cash if you don't mind sharing? I'm not 100% sure what it was for, but when I won UK to Edinburgh last year, that's what it was. Somewhere in the region of 50,000 euro. I've not played many live tournaments um, in the grand scheme of things, but in the last 18 months, I've definitely played a lot more. And I would hope that if I play the EPTs for the coming year, which I will, along with some UK PTs, and a few other tournaments, maybe in Ireland, that I would love to beat that score this year. We're firing into some pretty high tournaments, so I pretty much have to cash a tournament for a few quid at some point, or we're going to be in trouble, James. 
Rory Jennings might have a bigger high score to me, actually. It could be pretty close. It could I, be pretty I, close. I, it's, I think it's similar. If yours was, I think yours was a touch, a touch higher. But yeah, I not far I, off. I had the best luck of my life in the Bahamas. That was that again. Was, yeah, that was the best day <laughs> on the chair, on the chair celebrating. That state that it wasn't a stadium. That room erupted, didn't it? Yeah. Like you know when the when the bubble popped. Well, you have to take into consideration, particularly in that tournament, the twenty-five thousand dollar buy-in. There was a ridiculous amount of seats given away. Maybe as many as three hundred. But we see Johnson here with the with the jacks. Yeah, this is Chris Johnson, not to be confused with Mark Johnston. Ah, that's, that's why he kept ah. saying with the T. Exactly. Well, it's also a reference to the gentleman, but that's another conversation for another time. Toward getting back to back ace eights. <laughs> My guess is he's just got a call, but you never know. He might have played with Johnson. A hand that you generally would like to just see a flop with here. King, nine, seven. Jack still good. Be interested to see if Johnson wants to bet the jacks on the board. Generally, when these king high boards quit, most people are going to just be betting. Could become very tricky for him if he does get check raised here, though. I find this position very difficult. When I've got jacks in the king high board, I'm petrified. Oh, I'm really petrified now. I don't know what to do now. I'm going to let you in on a little secret, okay? Yeah. It's now less likely that your opponent <laughs> has a king. Yeah, but if he's got it, he's going to be, he's going to kill me now if he's got it. I'm in big trouble now. How has this guy had so many caches? <laughs> Adrian wisely elected to check here. Not a hand that you really benefit from betting. You're not really going to make your opponent fold a better hand. And when people check back this King Line 7 board, for the most part, they're going to have a lot of pocket tents, pocket jacks, pocket queens. Not always, <laughs> but it's going to be quite condensed in that area. So pretty disciplined. Adrian does unfortunately lose back-to-back -back pots for himself with ace eight, but not making any mistakes, just cards not going his way. But a nice pickup for Johnson, who was sitting with about 15 big blinds for that hand, getting himself up to around 20. See in the background there, the man in the uh, yes. stripy jumper, that is Ed Kilworth, one of our moderators, <laughs> who won the uh, Poker in the Years free roll at the Hippodrome a couple of weeks back, yes. and won a silver power pass, which he redeemed for an Irish Open main event entry. Lovely. Did, did he cash any luck? I don't think he did, no. Did Joe Stapleton play any other tournaments? Looks like Ed might have cashed, looking from the nods of heads coming from summer. So he would end up to level 32. Most likely. But did Joe play any other tournaments except for the six months, or is he back to back final tables? He played the Hendon Mob Championship as well. Listen, I love Joe, but I love to hear that, because if it was back to back final tables, it might have been a bit much. <laughs> I lived with Cotter for quite a while. No, well, that's not quite a while, about a year. And as I said to you when we were chatting off air, like, exceptional poker player. One of the best the UK has ever produced. Mm. Just such a good poker player. And when he first moved in, you know the way if you get the opportunity of Parker starts talking about poker, you're like, do I? You're looking at him, you're like, give it to Tell me, me. Give me every Tell little, me everything you give know. me yes. every bit of information. Yeah. The first Sunday where, where Connor was living with me, he was like, can I just watch you play today and I won't play? And he was like, I don't know about that. He said, I don't know if I want you to sit beside me for 12, 13, 14 hours. Just be like, why'd you do that? Why'd you do that? Why'd you do that? I'd be like the kid in the back, like, are we yes, there? Are we yeah. there? Are we there? Um, so he let me sit there for a couple of hours at the end. And he's done so many cool things, but he doesn't really like to discuss it. You know, he's right. like a quite. I feel but like he's a reticent man, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he's quite quiet, quite stoic. Doesn't doesn't reveal too much. But I felt like I learned a lot. Anyway. Yeah, was it a good session? Uh, <laughs> so the first Sunday that we lived together, I think he won about 100k, and I was like, "What is this? Like, what what is going on here? Incredible, crazy." So a lot of people watching on YouTube delighted to actually see Ed K must play 
in the flesh. Confirmation Ed did not make the money in the Irish Open main event, but I think he enjoyed the experience, and he certainly seems to be enjoying that Guinness. <laughs> Would Boyce be the first person you'll ever Andy sweat after what he did to Adam? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe, I don't, yeah. I, I think I would, actually. Out of loyalty <laughs> to my dear friend, I think I would have to do that. Moore is a very Irish thing. He's definitely got a great, 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 I mean, great grandparent. Brian Moore. I mean, it <laughs> couldn't be more Irish. And then we're going to see more of Moore. He's called Porrick Parkinson all in with Kings. Action back on Oliver Boyce. He did the Kings earlier on. Could he do it again? Yes, he did. So generally with sevens here, we can see the cards. Yeah. It can give a little bit away. It can be hard to think about it without that. But generally here with 24 left, when someone pulls the trigger, sevens isn't really the kind of hand you want to go. You're yeah. just not going to do that well. It's going to be a lot of pairs. You're going to be flipping sometimes, of course. But you are getting a decent price. And Parkinson sometimes puts the pressure on. And if he feels like he's trying to be run over, we might see a call here with sevens. But in general, I would want to filter. I have, however, watched enough of these streams to know that sevens are a very good position to be in because you know what happens. Sevens always coming. Exactly. I mean, what is it, 16 bigs? I'm all in. Wow. 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 <laughs> oh, my God. That's a bold move. Brave. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> well, this looks like a double up for Porrick Parkinson. Let's see if it is always coming seven. King's holding. Someone, me, someone sir, doing we'll do the commentary. <laughs> no, I, I think someone's doing a poker strategy video on the sidelines. <laughs> Either that or they're telling a bad beat story. Huge river card for Parkinson. Got to avoid a seven and a seven only. No seven. Horrick doubles up. Kings. Now playing 3.6 million. And that may be the last hand of this level. I think the blinds are about to go up. Is that the top of your range? Just about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are still at 24. Uh, Finton, as you're here, we wanted to show you the story of Joshua Rawlings. Now, Josh is a big fan of yours. Yes. He's also a big fan of the Poker in the Ears podcast. And he won his seat to the Irish Open. So we're going to see how that happened and what Josh's experience in Dublin was like. And then we'll get the action back underway. I'm Joshua Rawlins, I'm 29 years old and I'm from London. I've always listened to the Poker in the Ears podcast I've listened to probably since the middle of last summer. Um, always wanted to apply to be a super fan but never really found my topic of what I wanted to do. There was a free roll and um, we turned up at half past six and the queue was already out the door at that point. Fortunately for us, there was one seat between the three of us and uh, my friends Tim and Keller were like, you have to take it, it's, it's, this is your thing, you have to take it. And so that's what, that's what happened. 
It was a 100 person shootout tournament uh, and there was a bounty on every table. I was sat at the table with Finn and Had, who I watched his streams all through the pandemic and I was just like, I shouldn't be here. And now I'm sat here next to him and I'm just like, you know what? It would be mighty fine if I, I won a ticket or I knocked him out. Yeah, and I won, I won Finton's bounty. So yeah, it was an incredible experience. Not having the seat, then getting the seat, sitting down with Finton on my table and then knocking him out of aces. It was uh, a story written in the stars. So when I won the silver pass, I was debating as to what I should use it on. I saw Finton in the wings and he was basically like, so you're coming to Dublin? And I was like, oh, I haven't really thought about it. And he was like, you've got to come to Dublin. You've got to use it. You've got to use it there. That was it. I knocked Finton out and he told me to come to Dublin and now I'm here. And uh, he came to Dublin and cashed. Yes, in the main yes. Event. well done, sir. Cashed in 307th place for 2,340 euros. It was such a lovely moment at the Pokeneers. Free roll. Woo hoo hoo! Well done for me. Thank you, sir. Wow, that guy called the tree dive. Yeah, we can. Okay, okay. well. That is Richard Weeks eliminated in 24th place, taking us down to 23. I'd like to tell a story about Richard. Please do. I played with him all day on day one. He was one of my favorite opponents that I've ever had, and I do not say that lightly. He's a gentleman from Bristol. He came over, he plays in Bristol regularly. Came over for the Irish Open. We played about 15 hands together across four hours. He bluffed me with seven deuce off. How many times do you think in 15 hands that we played, Rory Jennings? Well, uh, well if, if I would say that he, if he did it on more than three occasions, that's very impressive. Would you like a guess, James? I don't need a count. No, just tell Four me. times. Four wow. times. In the space of four hours, he tree met me, he limped, he flatted, he, he mixed it up completely. And, he kept showing and you every as well. time he windmilled it down the table in my face and giggled like a wild man. It was beautiful. So I'm delighted to see he got 24. Obviously, unfortunately, he didn't go any further. Johnson versus Johnston. By the way, the guy who was celebrating there was Stephen Groom, who just won a huge part while Richard cashed out for 10,940 euros. And yep, back at the feature table. John Sun gets the better of John Stun. Just, just also to have a little word on Josh, who you showed the video of at the Poker in Years. He sat down on the table after getting the seat because it was quite, there was quite a queue. Um, a lot of people wanted to get into the free roll. There was a lot of added yeah. value, so quite naturally, managed to swindle his way in there somehow. <laughs> gets sits down. He doesn't say that he knows me. He doesn't mention it. Doesn't say that he's watched the stream. And within about two minutes of sitting down, I shoved. And he looks at his hand, and like he went like white. <laughs> and he's like, this is so surreal. This feels like a dream. I have aces, and you are easy with aces. I always watch your stream, and I'm about to take your bounty. And he just won the bounty. And there was, of course, smaller bounties, but he wins the silver pass, gets himself to Dublin, and like you said, just as the video, he cashed a main. So that's, I'm just so happy. He's such a nice guy. A great night, wasn't it? The hip oh, I loved it. It was amazing. You missed out on the cash game, Adam. No. Boovy got a seat, but uh, I don't know if it's you and Rory. By the way, I believe, I believe Adam's meant to take your place now, isn't he? Oh, is he? Oh, you, you're upgrading. It's Adam MIA. See Adrian raise it up here in the hijack to 240,000 chips. Unfortunately, don't quite have his cars right now. Mm, couple of hands before, I think it was. Two hands? Oh, yes. three now. When I was in a small band, it would have went up. Sleeping here. Not getting any hands. Three and it's been a long week. <laughs> Did you play on else? Hey? Did you play on else? 
uh, the 5k at the start of the trip. And then cash. I just want to That's about it. Tango on that, didn't he? Didn't really get a chance to buy anything else, thankfully. Tango on that, didn't he? That's a nice problem. Mm -hmm. Tango on that one, did he? Yeah, yeah, he did. Arnie C records Adam still in hiding after United's performance last night. Oh that, that's God. almost definitely true as well. I was on the table with Spraggy. And we hear a large... So he's seen the goal. He's watching on his phone. And we hear a large cheer from the bar. And he was like, oh my God, Brentford must have equalised. And I was like, there's no way there's that many Brentford fans in there. They must be watching on the delayed stream. They've just seen the United goal. Yes. And he goes, that makes so much sense. That's exactly what's happened. We've won one nil. The game is over. Of course not. His stream was the one that was delayed. About 45 seconds later, and they score. It's so good. I love that he was still celebrating the United goal as yeah. the Brentford goal went in. It's brilliant. Brentford? Brentford. I mean, yeah. I don't know much about <laughs> football, but I know that Brentford is not in the same league as Manchester United. They are certainly not comparable clubs you, in terms you know, of stature. Do you know Tony Blue? Yes. So he has a football the club. The Lizard? Yeah, he has a football club, and his partner who he originally set up that company with also has a football club and they split at one point and they're both like money ball football clubs so he's brought them right up the leagues Brentford and wow. it's a really really cool story they're one of the best run clubs in the world they're very well run but very, for Manchester yeah, United to lose to that, that, that club that regardless of how very successful they've been <laughs> sorry those <laughs> points are still <laughs> very embarrassing <Yeah. laughs> how many lines can you read can you read line four you can see the timer and the players and I just can't see it. I can't see that. Ah, that's basically all you need to know. <laughs> so blinds are now 60,000, with a 120k big blind ante. Oh, 30 and Stevie would have been all right. Like, you know. By the way, I'm not trying to get rid of you, Rory. I'm just conscious of the fact that Adam hasn't had his much time in the spotlight. So if he's not around, though, sod him. You can stay. <laughs> We played a little game before we came on air, James. Yes. It was trying to pronounce Irish names. It okay. was Rory versus Adam versus mm. Parker. Rory's dad is from Kerry. Adam's mum is from Belfast. Who do you think won? Not Tonka. Parker <laughs> wins everything. <laughs> and one of the names was Rory. Yes. <laughs> well, I saw a quiz where people were being asked about Irish Open trivia. And Tonka was tanking at that. The only question he knew was who won the 5K high roll, because it was him. <laughs> when asked, when did the Irish Open start? He went 2004. Oh, yo, yo. How many players were there in the main event? 3,900. Adrian getting another one of these middling hands that he has to kind of raise, get in the mix, but can take a lot of heat if it comes out of him, but he's going to actually pick up one. It's weird, we've got to that point where the action is starting to slow down. Pay jumps are going to yeah. start getting considerable pretty soon, I guess. Also, the harsh reality that, you know, at some point this is going to happen when you consider how fast the eliminations have been all day to get down from 109 to 24 with still with three levels to play on the day. I don't think we've seen anyone being overly tight, right? No, no, Just no. Just a little bit slower. But for instance, a lot of time we might see those sevens folded where we saw the big all-in versus the Kings. But players still seem very willing to get in the mix. I'd love to see if Parkinson's going to play this. He's going to fold. Because he played so aggressive on my table on day one. He must really try to spin up the stack. Is it possible he just had a run of really good hands? On my table? Yeah. No, he kept showing bluffs. <laughs> oh. It's so much more jeopardy now, though, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it yeah, means yeah. so much now. Six Binsburge 1957 asks, what time is the final table tomorrow? Seven. No guarantee that we will be at a final table by the end of tonight, but the final day, day four, will start at 12.30 local time. So the stream starts anyway. And we'll continue through the final table to the winning moment. We'll crown a champion. Then we'll pack up and go home. 
and do it all again soon. In Monte Carlo. Yeah. I'm super excited for Monte Carlo. I've not been in so long. Were you in Monte Carlo last year, Roy? No, I've never been. Oh, wow. I've never been. When Rory really Jennings thinks of poker, he thinks of Monte Carlo. He thinks of three-piece suits. He thinks of cigars. He thinks of gentlemen gambling with yes. real cash on the table. So he is so excited to get himself to Monte Carlo. I really, I really am. I've, I mean, I've, I've looked up the casino there. It's an open-air casino, isn't it? Well, it's in a room, and the roof opens like Blofeld's volcano, and oh. I only live twice. Wow. I've never seen the open air room. You've never seen it with the roof open? No. They do it almost every day, but you have to be in the room before play starts. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're, we're the problem. Because we're live streaming and televising it, it, it kind of like screws with the lighting. So once yeah. play starts, Has unfortunately, we have to close the roof and basically close the curtains. But it is an amazing venue. As I always say, the most beautiful poker room in the world. Except for the RDS, where we are live streaming <laughs> from Dublin. No, it's a fantastic venue, but the Salle des Etoiles in Monte Carlo is the most beautiful poker room really? in the world. Even the name is it's so much so refined, more beautiful than the RDS. It's the Royal Dublin Society I should have went with. I should have <laughs> yeah. given it its full name. A few years back, I want to say it was 2017, there was a guy who made the final table of the main event who had got married in that room, had his wedding at that wow. venue. And of course, he was like thinking about the fact that he would win this prestigious tournament in the room he got married. But normally I'm thinking of, how much does it cost to get married in that room? How much did it get cost to get married anywhere, anywhere. in Monte Carlo, let alone this yeah. prestigious venue? It's a concert venue, by the way. It's mainly a concert space. It's got like a backstage area, and the musicians like Sting have played there. So if you have your wedding there, I you're paying top I genuinely dollar. would guess at eight figures. Like, genuinely. Wow. I know that is such a silly number, but have you ever bought a drink in Monte Carlo? Have you ever paid for a sandwich in Monte Carlo? Oh, yeah, yeah. My first time ever in Monte Carlo, you might know the name of the bar, you might not. It's some bar that Jimmy's. Long. Jimmy's. Jimmy's. Yeah, yes. As soon as anyone mentions <laughs> Jimmy's, yeah. a bar slash nightclub in Monte Carlo, I am 99.9% .9 sure they're referring to Jimmy's with a Z. I was brought to Jimmy's, had a lovely time. I went in in shorts. <laughs> I, I bought four drinks, handed the barman 100 euro. He laughed at me. It's like, you're going to need to give me more than that. So I gave him the cash, and then as, as the, the moment the cash <laughs> left my fingers, they're like, no shorts in here, son. <laughs> so uh. I, didn't, I, didn't, I got to buy the drinks, and I didn't even get to pick who got them. I was like, boys, get the drinks. And I got taken <laughs> out. Very sad. Yeah, 140 euro for, for four gins. Is it, was it really? Yeah. That's, it was that, that's ludicrous. Just to be clear, you're talking about a nightclub. Yes. Like, you know, it... it and that particular nightclub at that particular hotel, you are, it, it's not standard Monte Carlo yeah. pricing. I mean, in Dublin, though, you would pay 25 euro for a double gym. You know, that's what you would pay. So, like, it's not a million miles from Dublin. Yeah, Jimmy's, Jimmy's is famous as well, isn't it? Oh, Connor's up and running here. All right, buckle up your belts. <laughs> I just love watching them play poker. I get so excited. It's always fireworks. If I'm sitting at the big bar and Ricardo raises, don't even look, just fold. Get out of there. Just get out of there. Get out of there. Uh, exaggerated a little bit, of course. Round to Parig. Who folds the five deuce? Light work. I might start playing in sunglasses. Maybe that's what's you missing from my game. You did tell me 
prior to coming to this event that you were going to wear sunglasses. I brought my sunglasses across, and then I thought I'd look ridiculous. But then I, <laughs> <laughs> but then I, then I can see somebody as skilled as Conor Beresford doing it, and perhaps that's what's missing from my game, because he looks fantastic. I don't know. When I wear sunglasses, everything seems too dark, and I'm already quite colorblind. So the idea of having sunglasses on and making it more complicated to read the board seems awful to me. I'm going to give it a go. Next time I play poker, I'm going to wear sunglasses. Do you think it could help? Can I show James a photo of the sunglasses that you're going to wear? I oh, what, my folded <laughs> punk face. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Great radio, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Ace Jack, Queen Jack. The Ace Jack folded. It's Johnson who's opened under the gun here with the suited connectors. Is it okay to show? Yeah, of course. Okay. Would you be intimidated by that man at no. the poker table? If that man was staring at you, it's suggesting fold. Would you fold? That, that is possibly the least intimidating <laughs> presence imaginable. Yeah, I'm kind of on board. Now I'm looking at my own face with sunglasses on. You're right, there's nothing intimidating about that. I don't think you want to be intimidated. I, I think do. you want to go under the radar. No, I want people to be scared. So a few raise and take it. Checking in on Konstantinos Vatseris, the Greek qualifier. Big tower of orange chips. That's around seven and a half million he's playing right now. <laughs> Bless you. And immediately picks up his cards with those hands. I will say, I absolutely hate when people use their hands in any way to sneeze or cough. Yeah, I just hate it. Just put it into your sleeve, use the tissue. I, it just, it makes me so sad. But you can't say anything because what can you do? No. I remember, I remember back in the day. I mean, all, all of like 18 months ago, where there was hand sanitizer everywhere, and now it's almost like we've forgotten. We lived through a bloody two-year pandemic, and everyone's like, ah, oh, whatever. <laughs> Just sneeze in my hands. Do you know what, though? I actually prefer it this way than uh, when we couldn't do anything. So I'll accept a little. I'll accept a little cold every now and then. Parkinson with a good blackjack hand, but not getting the ball. Oh, yeah, hello. Oh, here we go. One million. One million. That's a very, very quick decision to raise there. I like it, though. Powerful. Or might feel like he's getting too good of a price here. 600k to call. Play ace jack in position. I personally would be petrified. I would be long gone. Looks like we're going to be seeing three community cards, though. Yeah, it's um, some good ones. I don't think it's been as great as other festivals here. Talking to people, I don't think they were. I don't think it was as flown as other years. Yeah. We are going to see a flop. Huge pot, two million chips in the middle. Johnson re-raising to a million, leaving himself 1.6 behind. <laughs> Queen 8 4 on the flop. <coughs> Interesting to see how small Johnson wants to go here. I'm going to take 
something in my bag. It's a pretty big price. Maybe if more had the Ace of Diamonds, I could get behind continuing here. But after the re-raise pre off a relatively short stack, not really flopping anything, you probably just got to fold. Johnson wins the pot. And you may have observed that we've ticked down to 22 players. Tobias Peters eliminated in 23rd place. Cash is for 12,580 euros. That's what we're paying out now. Well, we're going to say farewell to Rory Jennings, but he will be substituted, replaced shortly by Adam McCullough. Upgraded. Upgraded to Adam McCullough. Thank you so much for having me. I've loved it. Thanks, Rory. Really enjoyed that, Rory. Thanks so much, man. Marley Sprague watching from the rail. During the week now, I just don't think it's as good. Yeah. Aaron says, love when he's in the booth. He's class. So you be the judge of whether this is an upgrade as Jennings steps out, McCola steps in. Adam, welcome. It is definitely a downgrade because Rory can talk for England. <laughs> but as far as the Irish Open is concerned, you've got results, buddy. You've got pedigree two years in a row. Yeah, two years in a row. Two one six last year, ninety three this year. Man, top hundred is sub achievement. Make it day three. I know. Listen, I'm not. I said it earlier on when you weren't here. I'm not normally a man for bad beats. But tell the people how you lost your chips. I'm going to allow it. James has got to allow it. It's a heartbreaking one. Let's hear it. Look, it's another bad beat story. He's on, I don't have to give you any PTSD, but I you realize he's on the screen right now. I get the impression that this is going to be a genuine yeah, bad beat story rather than a Rory Jennings bad beat story, which involves yeah, Ace King good. losing to 10. So that's yeah. just losing a flip. Yeah. Yours is a legitimate so bad beat, right? It is, it is a bad beat story. Um, the gentleman there in the blue polo shirt, uh, fantastic guy, loved the table I was on. Um, absolute gentleman. Uh, I had kings. I started the day with 230. Wow. Sorry, I was going to cross you, but this is a monster pot. Did he say all in? No, sorry, sorry, Adam. No, it's sorry. no problem, it was a big hand. I thought he said all in. Apologies. Let's see how this plays out, I guess. Well, Johnson has three bet with the ace jack. It looks like the action's back on Connor. Any money? Connor's going to be all in. All in. And now you've got to decide whether you want to call this with Ace Jack. Yeah, 2925000 I'm pretty sure. It's the man that wants a call. So when you got Ace King in this situation, once you don't get slapped, you're quite indifferent. Your opponent's not likely to have a pair that would re-raise pre-flop and have to think about it, right? Like, if he has pocket deuces, he's not going to re-raise and then decide to call it off. He might shove pre or he might call, but he's not going to play it like this. So. Connor does want to call, right? He's very likely, when his opponent takes a few moments, to have a hand like this, to have like an ace-jack or a king-jack suited that, instead of just shoving himself, has re-raised. Johnson's put himself in a tricky situation. Now, it might save him chips because he might get away from it, but generally with like a hand like ace-jack off here, you might just go all in versus the button open for this stack size. I, 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 I'm really not sure what you're supposed to do. I, I, I wouldn't really fancy re-raising and then calling it off with ace-jack myself. Easy to say while looking at Connor's cards. He could as easily have ace-five suited or something of that. Okay, the longer it goes on, the more Connor is hoping for the call. And I think he might be about to get it. This would be such an astronomical pot for Connor if he click makes the call. Does make the fault. Sorry to cut across you, by the no, way. No, no, let's let's hear track. about the hand. Um, so I was in the big blind with Kings. I just got my 230k stack or whatever it was up to about 700,000. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I appreciate that. The the under the gun plus one raises a reasonable normal. I think it was two and a half big blind raise. Um, the small blind next to me then went. I think it was about eight bigs. 
So the pot's getting quite big now. And at this point, I'm rubbing my hands together like, <laughs> come on, boys, you don't know what's about to hit you. Um, I'll shove it all in because uh, they both had me covered at this yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. I didn't really want to get into like a heads up with <laughs> three of them, to be fair. Uh, sorry, with two of them. I didn't want to get three handed. So then I shoved it all in. Snap call by Queens. The man in the small blind falls. I flip them over and I'm just like, what bring you got? it on. I'm <laughs> yes. doubling up. It's going to be a 1.5 million pot. It's going to be happy days. Um, and then there was a queen in the window, uh, which obviously gave him a set. And then just, I was looking for a little bit of hope. I just want to see a glimmer of a face card on the river. And I seen it and it gave him quads. Have so, you um, heard about? It was ultimate heartbreak. Have you heard about James's favorite way to go? It's a great meme. Hashtag death by quads. Death by and quads. that's what happened to you. It, it you was were a victim. actual death by quads. Um, a horrible death by quads. Um, and yeah, I was just... <sighs> is it, uh, I compared it to... I haven't felt pain like it. Manchester United fans listening will know this well. Since that Aguero moment. <laughs> that is like, a big comparison. It was... For those who don't know anything about football, it was, a, it was a goal heart, that went down to the very last kick of a season that took the title away from Manchester United for their biggest rivals. Yep. And Manchester United's game had finished. <laughs> so the we could do nothing. The last kick of the season. <laughs> so we could do nothing. Yeah, it was the Aguero moment all over yeah. again. Um, I'm starting to recover now. I'm buzzing with what I did. But yeah. yeah, it's weird, isn't it? How there's the initial disappointment, the, the, the shock of it. And the, then, it's like, hold on a second. I finished in the top 100 from a field of 3,233. I made the money. I laddered up. It's like, then you focus on the positive. Yeah, and also there was a point on day one where I had 7K. Like I had oh, nothing. I remember that. You had, had done nothing. it on one bullet? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'd done it all on one wow. bullet. So I had 7K at one point and I managed to and spin it. what did you it cash for in the end? Uh, five and a half. Mate, that's an amazing score. Euros. Amazing score. Um, unreal score. So, yeah, I'm absolutely buzzing. It was nice to get another cash in Ireland, but next year I'm coming for that title. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the gentleman here. Yeah. Are, are, you, are you doing this to kill me? <laughs> Look at all those chips he has as well. Oh my those God. Are, some of those are mine, you know. <laughs> Still got my fingerprints on them. <laughs> What's small? Is there a one click there? Well, no, he's behind here. At one point, by the way, he was over the 8 million mark. He started this hand with six and a half. Yeah, we've got a little, little bit no, of a massive. Be interested to see what size he's fed here. What? 450k. Doesn't really give Johnson any sort of decision. You never really want to be raising. Always just want to be calling. Boy, he's kind of just trying to set his price. He's got a pair in the flush draw. Wants to see that river card. Johnson is just going to call. Pretty big pop, by the way. 2.2 million out there. Now, if I was Boyce, I would never bluff this hand. I would never value about this hand. Interesting to see if Johnson wants to bet. Again, I would probably take my shot. Remember, this is Johnston with the tee. I think I'm a little bit. I'm a little bit bunged up, but I think I got the tee in. <laughs> a little bit. Johnston. King. Ace. What would you? What would you do there, knowing the opponent Johnston's likely got a weaker ace? Given he's just calling it. If you've got the king nine, what would you have done in that situation when you don't get the flush? Exactly what was done. Yeah, just, just check, check and try and win because he could have a miss flush draw. He could also have a jack, like a jack ten or a queen jack that had a pair and a straight draw. So mm -hmm. generally, when you're bluffing, you want to use your hands yeah. that can't win when you check. Mm -hmm. And if you bluff there with the king nine, you're you're, you're starting to try to make him fold an ace. And if you want to do that, you just want to use a weaker hand. You don't really want to bluff with your medium strength hands. So a lot of time. You're going to have really weak hands, so you generally want to bluff with them. You're going to have really strong hands, you generally want to go to value bet with them. And then you're middling stuff when you're out of position. A lot of time you just want to check. So if you want to break it down like that in your head on every time you're on the river, what's the worst thing I have here? Probably have to bluff this. Now you don't always have to bluff it because you can't bluff everything. And then your best hands, you generally want to do the betting unless you think you can check raise and get even more chips in. But you need. It to be likely that your opponent's going to bet. And then your middling stuff, for the most part, you're looking to bet very small to check. 
But on that board, I would still even consider like a weak ace of mid lane hand, right? Because it's it's got three to a straight, three to a flush. It's not easy for your opponent to have worse hands to call, you know? It depends all on the board, you know? It's not always as clear cut as second pair being a mid lane hand, you know? Sometimes a second pair can be the, definitely the best hand. Let's say you blind versus blind, and it goes check, 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 check. Second pair is generally going to be a super strong hand where you might want to start betting lots of chips. So it's very. Uh, Situation dependent. It's also such high stakes at the moment. For oh man, guys. it's so. Uh, it's, Sam Grafton always gets giddy when we're doing EPT commentary together and we're getting down to the final table because all these pots are worth so much money. Like, of course, we see chips and the chips will determine the winner. The goal is to be the last man standing or last woman standing and get all of those chips. But each pot at this moment in time starts to become worth like five, mm -hmm. ten. 50, 20, 25,000 euro. And then when you're on the final table, you're playing some pots that are worth 100 grand and more. It's crazy. It's amazing. And the beauty about this field is there's so many different yeah, levels oh, of players. Absolutely. You've got wrecks up to pros and everything. So Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Adrian, having to fold again, hasn't had too many playable moments. A few suited aces. I want to, I want to, I see Pori get in a mix. I want to see, yeah. I want to see if he'll pull a few bluffs the way I see, because he was on the table the other day, Adam, I was saying it to uh, Rory before he came in, he bluffed me about five times. <laughs> Maybe he just doesn't like you. Maybe he doesn't normally play like that, but it's like, oh, it's that. <laughs> that might be it. Maybe watches your streams. <laughs> <laughs> That is a real bad man, isn't it? Ah, oh, the baddest man. <laughs> the baddest man. Okay, so Mark Johnston with Ace Queen of Hearts on the button. <laughs> it's raised to 300,000. Still at the 6120 blind level. More folding the small blind. It is Boris Chungsit in the big blind. What you got, Boris? Thought we might be seeing a little re-raise after the long deliberation. Was there, wasn't there? No, just a call, and it's swept with Johnston time because we don't know what Boris has. Action checked to the pre-flop aggressor. Two hundred and twenty-five thousand. We're going to play the game of guessing what he has. Yeah. All right. Let's try to do it. Got to take into consideration the fact that he did take a long deliberation pre-flop, so could have some hands as strong as say a king jack, an ace yeah. jack. I was thinking queen jack, which has now improved to two pair. It has given Johnston top pair, top kicker, so this hand could get spicy. Yeah, if I'm Johnston on that turn card, it's a turn card that we generally just want to bet a lot anyway, but when you've got ace-queen, that turn card is looking beautiful to me. I'm thinking, I'm getting all these chips in, I'm going to be betting, you know, in the region of about 550, 60k, setting up a very natural river shove. It's, it's, it's an unusual turn for the big blind to tank on. It's not the kind of spot where you would generally see a call and a lead. So Ooh. I'm starting to get a little suspicious. Has our big blind decided to flat like kings or aces pre-flop? And I was like, I better not see, I better not see a, a little like a scary river card because it's not the kind of turn card you'd often see a lead on. 
He could also have a hand like maybe 6-7, six, 6-8 six, of spades. He's trying to set his own price. There's like lots of options, but it's a little bit peculiar. What's your feeling? You're sitting there with ace-queen, Adam. You've, you've raised, bet the flop, and now your opponent leads. There's a bet, there's, there's a, there's a bet of, you know, one decent bet left. A little bit less than par. Are we going to be all in? <sighs> I'm thinking that turn has done me a load of wonders, and he's in a lot of trouble. But I also thought that when I flipped over my kings. <laughs> <laughs> and someone someone get a counter for how many times Adam mentions the kings. I'm going to keep saying <laughs> it. I'll just fold them from now on. Johnston calls. Oh. And six of hearts on the river. 1.79 million in the middle, and Boris Chong set is the effective stack with 1.31 million behind. I've got to let you on a little secret, Adam. I have no idea what Boris has. None. He's shipping this. I got a feeling. See, my problem is, and I make the mistake of not thinking enough about it here. If I'm in Johnson's position, if Boris shoves here right, it's what, just over 10 big blinds. Mm -hmm. I've got top pair, top yeah. kicker. I call. I would yeah, never fold. I would never fold Johnson's hand. And I would always, oh. always show when we get checked to here. Okay, well he has been checked to. Now I would like to make a new read. It's really weird. He's called. I would like to I would like to suggest that he has King Jack he wanted to go with a pre-flop. He wanted to go with on the flop. And AC the Queen was like, no, no, this wasn't part of the plan. Yeah, yeah. This was not part of the plan. We're going to bet small. We're all going to have a little gentleman's game, and we're going to check it down. We're Jack so 10 suited. Jack 10 of spades. That improved on the turn. Man, this is what you had to do all the time. I, the I think King, <laughs> King Jack is more likely because of how long he thought about it pre and thought okay. about re-raising. But... Johnson has been very generous to his opponent here by not putting them all in, I feel. But maybe maybe he has the reads. Maybe he's putting his opponent on more like an ace-five. And he's just like trying to milk out that little bit of extra value. Maybe he's trying to maybe he's trying to induce him to do the show himself. He's gonna have some like pair, like sevens or eights, isn't he? I'll tell you one thing. He better call because if we don't <laughs> find out what this hand is. No, the great thing is if he doesn't call, you can say it was King Jack yeah. and Look like a genius. Oh, is that is that a call? No. Careful, Boris. Forward motion is a thing. I, I have very rarely seen the chips being counted out, the hand being put on the chip several times, the hand being put back on the chips, look back at the cards, and then the fold. Look, it might happen. But he has 100% got King Jack at this point. <laughs> 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 you knew what it was. You just counted it out. Maybe King Jack's a little too strong. Maybe King Jack would have already called. Maybe we need to go for the ace-five. If I name every hand... <laughs> Eventually, you'll be right. <laughs> yeah, call. There's call the call. It. He's called it. No. No, don't muck don't it. Don't muck it. Turn it over. No. Oh. Oh, no, the dealer just put them away. I'll be back in a second. I'm just going to go out and ask him what he had. <laughs> Well, it wasn't a winner. No, I think it was quite obvious when he took so long that he was not going to be able to beat Ace Queen. To be fair, I wasn't sure about the size on the river, but given the anguish and the time that it took to call 450, it feels like it might, you know, it might have been the perfect price. He might have known his customer, knew what he'd pay. Just man, you can really get caught on Instagram when you're <laughs> when you're oh, on yeah. those tables. I was, just, can't I, you? I was thinking just the exact same thing. <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> This Boris is not invincible. It's a very quiet table, isn't it? You just, 
Normally you need someone in there to just mix it up a little bit. Generally, as you get down to the final two, three tables, there's not it as much shadow. Now it's becomes not as, a bit it's, serious. It's not uh, impossible. Like, if I was on there and Connor was there, I'd be having a chat. If I was on there and Andy Black was there like he was on day two, I'd be having a chat. Yeah. You won't be able to get that man to be quiet no matter what's going on. Well, we 250,000. Two hundred fifty thousand. Beast with Ace King. Off. Yeah, with some of the things that Andy comes out with, it might be worth him <laughs> being silent for a while. I've got to say, on on this trip, I think it was day one. I was on one one of my favourite tables ever. No, no, day two. My favourite tables ever. It was a laugh, a joke, a rank good. Everyone was having fun. It's what the Irish Open's all about. Yeah. yeah. By far, my favourite trip. You know. Listen, I'm obviously so biased, but I love it so much more than this. This Barcelona is okay. Barcelona is incredible. But Dublin might be picking it. Prague and Barcelona are always super close for me, but the sun just edges Prague out in Barcelona. Is Monte Carlo your favourite, James? It's tough to have a favourite, I'm not going to lie. They all have their strengths. Oh wow, he's, Here we go. he's made. Oh wow. Torin absolutely heartbreaking heartbroken that he's not gonna get to see a flop with Jack Dan suited. It's so sad. Oh, Connor makes the call. A very, very important pot for Connor. And the thing about these pots out, right? When your opponent gets a little out of line and shoves a hand that generally wouldn't be recommended to shove, it always hurts that little more if you lose. Right, like if his opponent jumped ace queen here and we see a queen on the flop, Connor would not mind. But if we see Connor lose this one, it'll be quite frustrating. Like, he's barely a favorite. Oh. All right, ten of hearts is scary for him. Yeah, yeah, it's a now, I thought. Here we go. Connor up to almost a 70% favorite with two cards to come. Lots of bad turn cards, though. It's pretty safe. Eights and sevens. The outs for Boris. Extra equity for standing up. Absolutely. Oh. Oh, date with an eight. And Boris survives. <laughs> Paid off. Got it for Connor. But huge pot for the Frenchman. It's my friend. Rowdy. He called the head for me. Thank you, Master. He may have lost the pot, but he has brought the Evisu back <laughs> quite well, hasn't he, Colin? <laughs> Rocking the Evisu cap. <laughs> Boris has got a fair few friends on the rail. I was like... That woman laughing at Connor Beresford's misfortune. How dare she? It always feels very like. I always really want to celebrate hands. Yeah. Yeah. I wish that it was more commonplace <laughs> to celebrate like you'd scored a 19 minute winner when you win <laughs> a big pop. But because it's not, I never do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't want to piss everyone off. I don't want to be too. No, I get it, but it sh I feel like it shouldn't be frowned upon. I you're agree. Not, you're not rubbing it into no, you're I agree. happy for you're yourself. You're celebrating right? for yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The problem I feel is if you allow the flamboyant celebrations, you will get reactions right. and it will just lead to tension. Yeah. I think about what yeah, a football you can't stadium looks like. About, you know <laughs> <what> I <mean? laughs> or Eric Yeah. Oh, Agent Thorne pointing out had he played the Jack Tenner clubs, he would have won that hand. Was a sad one to have to fold. Yeah. But once the all-in happens, there's nothing you can do. Well, do you know what? That's not true. You can go all-in if you want, but it would be recommended. Boris back in action. Ace 10 on the button. Raises to 300,000. Boric Parkinson, sorry, King sorry, 9 in the big. Sorry, sorry. Faults. 
Park took me for fool on day one. He set the image. Man, I'm lucky I wasn't on this table on day two or day three. He would have got all my chips. So, uh, Jimmy, I think, was on your table on day one. Messaged earlier saying, Vincent, I think he was considerably drunker on day one. Ah. That makes a bit of sense. For those wondering where Spraggy is, he was last spotted entering the mini again. Really? Yeah. The man loves it. He, he loves punishment. Yeah. He didn't get any bounties in the mystery no. bounty? Um, I'm not sure. He didn't look like it when I saw him. Yeah, but I mean, the thing is, when you see Spraggy, <laughs> you would never know whether he's won 100k that day or if he's lost 10. Very true. His facial expressions rarely change. So Johnson has jacks, Johnston has nines. Johnson raised it to 250,000, and here comes the three bet from Johnston. 600,000 total. It's a little bit aggressive to go with the nines here if the intention is to re raise and then not fold it. A little bit on the spicy side. Like, if I'm Johnson, with the jacks. I am not loving life with jacks. He does elect to only call. We will see some boards now where John Stun with a T will potentially be able to win this spot without flopping the set. And this could very well be one of them, but is he going to be aware that he should turn his hand into a bluff here? When you think about the hands that Johnson is going to re-raise with pre-flop, He's not really going to have a worse hand anymore. Maybe as a King Jack suited, right? But that has a better chance of winning versus a main hand. Once you check, it's going to be kind of tough. Oh my god, two queens on the board. <laughs> <laughs> Did you play a hand with two queens today, Adam? <laughs> By a point, I think. Very <clears throat> Having flashbacks. It's not far. Yeah, that he's dairy. Five fifty. Interesting. Yeah. Very, very, very interesting. So Johnson may be trying to tell a story that has a king queen, a queen jack, and if he has pocket nines, he can certainly have these hands. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> I would probably fill my jacks. Might have been all in pre with them, but at this point, if I got here, I'd probably put them in the bin. I would as well, because you kind of think maybe he's got ace, king, ace, you know. Or a little bit of a sneaky play in aces. Yeah. Maybe an ace queen trying to trap, and now it's like, I better start putting some chips in. Oh, you've already made an empty, so don't worry about that. So Mark Johnston is the table chip leader with close to 75 big blinds. Boris Chung sit the short stack at the table with 18 bigs. The blinds are going to go up in about five minutes' time, by the way. We are coming towards the end of this level. Actually, close to 10 minutes' time. And that part was so important for Connor, eh? 22 big blinds instead of about 40. Yeah, and uh, I'll highlight it. New blind level coming up soon. Twenty-two players remain. And we are going to play two more levels today, so we've got ten minutes to go until the break, and then when we come back, another two hours of action. At which point we should be down to the final two tables, but as we've said all along today, unlikely we'll hit the final table.
really enjoyed the uh, England vs Ireland stuff this week. Yeah, no, it was very, very fun. I, I, I like to pretend that I'm not a competitive person. <laughs> yeah. But let me tell you right now, when I was at that darts, and I said it in the PokerStars blog interview, I would be better off with a team of blind people with no arms than my team at that darts. <laughs> yeah. I know you were part of it, so I am trying to say to you. Because <laughs> I know you shot. I won my leg, by the way. Did you? Yeah, I did. All right. Because our team was, and then me and you were the only two that won it. It was shockingly bad. Mm. Some lad didn't know what darts was. Yeah. And I was like, how is this my team? <laughs> how is I? Uh, Hardikin's like six foot seven. He could have almost reached over and just put the darts where he wanted them. But, and then, so I was a bit salty about that. And then obviously Tom Garrett, who uh, was over for the very enjoyable quiz you did with the club versus the pitch side. Sure. Just chanting England, England after they won. I honestly, like, I had to leave. You would, yeah. You I, the England, the England chant any, is the worst any, noise. It, it, I, anytime anyone puts a third syllable in the word, it <laughs> tilts me beyond belief. England, England. Oh, yeah. It's a lovely lad. Yeah, oh, I, can't listen lad. To, I can't listen to anyone chanting that. Yeah. Anyone. <laughs> I hear it. And Spraggy chanting as well. You know Spraggy <laughs> smug face when he wins. Did, did you catch Spraggy's karaoke performance? Yeah, I did. Very good. Unreal. Very good. Unreal. I put a lot of effort in. He's one of those ones, though. I don't want to do it, guys. Oh. you got to give him a bit of credit. No, I don't want to do it. <laughs> and then he gets up there and he just jumps straight into it. He's not yeah. shy at all. He had his song ready and everything. Yeah. Like, he is that guy. Um, but I'm with you on the competitiveness. I remember... Ah, no, you wear your heart in your sleeve. You know you're racing, competitive. Inflatable horse racing and thinking, I'm not taking this too serious. And then looking across at my opponent and being like, There's no way you beat me. you're finished. <laughs> <laughs> Fella in the burgundy jumper. Fantastic players under the table yesterday, Georgios. Took a lot of chips off me as well. Yeah, he has quite the stack. Last time I checked, it was like 11 million. Yeah, oh, wow. when he left the feature table before the last level, he had 11 million. Crazy. So he's obviously the, was the chip leader at that point. I would imagine so, James, correct? Around 11 million was the chip lead? Yeah. opens this, it would be a little bit of a sign of getting ever so <coughs> slightly impatient. Desperate to play a pop in on the feature table. I think he'd know himself that this is a little too wide, but I said earlier on at the start of the broadcast, I've known Adrian for a long, long time, and he is not a man who likes to pass up on too many spots. So if he thinks he can take it down here, if he thinks he can get a little bit frisky and get away with it, that's exactly what he's going to do. A very aggressive and talented poker player. Frisky. Would you recommend doing it with this hand from this position, though? No, no I would not. <laughs> Voice calls with a six. Heads up to the flop. Jack, five, five. Ace high is good. He might just get away with it, though. Voice without a heart, without a whole lot. Adrian's got the backdoor flush draw. It's a board that you generally just want to bet a lot. You can occasionally check it, but with this hand, you definitely got to just bet. Just a small bet should get the job done. if we get the fold here. Unless Boyce is feeling a little out of line himself here, he probably should just fold. Like, but he's not going anywhere just yet. This is going to get a little bit tricky down the streets unless we see, you know, Queen, Heart, something like that. Oh, he's raised it. Oh, wow. Check and raise. I look at Adrian Torn here, I do feel like he's got some bad intentions. <laughs> I've seen the look in that eyes before. Now, I don't actually know 
in what way he plans on going about this, but he does not look like he's going to fold to me. We are playing some street poker here at the Irish Open. Listen, Adam, I'm going to tell you straight up right now, this ain't in my repertoire. <coughs> I'm not pulling this move. I don't have the cojones. I'm not, I'm not. He's getting very frisky right now, isn't he? It? It's. You well, have to be so sure of your read I to do anything here, because so often you're just going to do something, your opponent's going to have a five. I can see. Um, his oh my God, you're so <laughs> naughty. You're so bold, Adrian. What are you doing? How do you know? <gasps> This reminds me of that Phil Ivey hand from years ago when he seven bet jammed a flop. What is going on? How did he know? James, how did he know? Unreal. I think so long to push all in. Oh my oh. god, stop. Oh my days. Stop. Is there a chance? Immediately stop. Go on, if Boise. he calls, I walk out and I'm never doing commentary again. I support Boise here because he's got my chips. So <laughs> Go on, oh, oh my days. Listen. You might not find it in your little GTO books. You might not find it on your PC. But we're playing street poker at the Irish Open, and I love it. Come on, Ado. <laughs> Unreal. Thorn in my side. Wow. That's all you ever want. I were. told you he had some bad attention Unreal. those eyes. I've seen that look before. There's a man that just got unhappy with all the cards he was getting. <laughs> Take this. Are we balancing? Oh, that means there has been an elimination. Yeah, I've just heard that over on table two, which is going to be our next feature table, by the way, we are going to change during the break. Pete Nin has just eliminated Jordan McGurr in 22nd place. Oh, here, Romania. Uh, Kings held against nines. That's taken us down to 21 players, and that's why we need to balance off Mr. Johnston as we have to have three tables of seven with 21 players Sorry, remaining. Just fast. We've got 21 players to go. Yeah. <laughs> Just very careful with the singing. Your voice is beautiful. And you <laughs> might, it might be so good that you'll get a strike. So very, very good. That's happened a lot. Let's hope no one from the So Solid crew is watching. <laughs> James was letting the people know at home. He got the reference. <laughs> I feel like Rory's appearance in here was a little bit wasted because of a man who would get a lot of movie references would be Rory. And you're so used to wasting them on me that you just, they weren't used that often. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you hear the defeat in his voice? It's like seven, eight years, whatever it's been of that nonsense. Oh, he, oh, sound, he sounds like my poker coach when he looks at my hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've been on the receiving end of a few of those from the same poker coach. <laughs> Break is fast approaching, by the way. You should be able to squeeze in one, two hands at most at this level before we take a 20-minute break and the blinds go up. These are such long days, aren't they? I mean, they're great days, but if you're playing deep, which is the dream, they're such I mean, it's long slogs. It's, 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 it's not, not just I, it's look, mental. It's not ideal to be playing this long every single day, but this is what happens when you have an event yeah. which has 3,233 yeah. entries and they're trying to get done in four days. Now, my two cents is that come 2025, you put the, ships here the field is going to be so big <laughs> that it's just not going to be possible to get this done over the Easter weekend anymore. So my recommendation, and there's absolutely no reason why they would listen to me, is put the day ones back to 10 levels, have the day ones play over the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then have day two on Friday, but still let people buy in at the start of day two, at the start of level 11. And then have day two, three, four, and five on Monday and make it a five-day event and have more manageable playing days. I guess they might worry about the ability to get the same numbers if they lose the Friday. You could still buy no, it on the Friday. And also, 
I did not see that much of an increase in people here in this room between Thursday and Friday. It's fair. Most it's fair. people are here by the tail end of the week. True. It's a back holiday weekend. players racking because we are going to switch tables during the break. Just got to play out this hand to its conclusion. This is one thing I don't think they'll do. This was a suggestion from McGee. With the numbers getting bigger, do you reckon they might okay. increase the buy-in? I think Paul and JP are very keen for this to remain a 1K buy-in and yeah, to keep it accessible and keep those numbers going up and up and up. That's, that's why you get the beauty of the field that you have, I'm sure. Yeah. So that is going to take us to the break. 21 players remaining. My thanks to Adam McCola. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. And my thanks to Finton Hans. Really appreciate being here. Maybe I'll get in tomorrow if you have a little bit of space for me, James. Would love it. Absolutely. We'd love to have you here for the final day. It likes to be more than just the final table, but there's still two levels of poker to be played today. Two more levels. How many will we end on? Find out when we come back with a new feature table on the penultimate day of the Irish Open main event. It's always good to be back in Dublin and it's good to have John Duffy back beside me in the commentary box. Hello, Colin. I don't mean to go on about it, but this new haircut of yours, did you just go in and ask for a vanilla ice? Was it as straightforward as that? Or? <laughs> I knew you'd never let it go. I just knew it. It's like being at school with you. You look, you look along the bottom of the screen at the moment. That, that's like a who's who of poker and they're all gone. I know, it's an amazing lineup that we had. A lot of them have died. Not died. <laughs> <laughs> Should I say it? A lot of them are out. I just thought it was like at the Oscars, you know, in the day. This is who we've lost in the last last 12 months. Everybody cries. Well, let's have a look at this flop. We are here to play poker. Olin and Thorson both check. That'll probably get cool, Colin, I think. With ace high. Well, the homegrown players always pack this casino. Still quite a few left from the Emerald Isle. And that flop will make no difference whatsoever. He throws a few quid in the middle. Is he going to call this with ace high, John? He's got it. I think he will. If he doesn't think he's got anything on the flop, then he probably doesn't think he's got anything on the river. <laughs> Willie Tan looks like he wants to play the hand for him there. And there you go. No. Goes to show. I think it's a good bet. William probably thought he was winning with a with a jack. I think most players in the living room would fold that if they didn't hit anything on the flop, but he, he read it well. Harathmason then with the uh, ace queen. Don't bother writing in about the pronunciation, thank you. Surely you've got better things to do with your time. The Jonathan Lewis fold. David Murray then, he's going to throw caution to the wind. He's got a pocket purr in his hands. He knows it's going to be at least a coin toss for him. And he's going to get a call here. Finner wants to have a look. The ace queen's slightly behind, but this is a coin toss and probably a good move by Murray. He didn't have very many chips left, John. So behind the chip average. Oh dear. And it's not worked for him, obviously. That's a shame. Rathenson has hits his pair. 
and only an eight is going to save him at this stage and that doesn't happen obviously also there was the flush draw going as well for Finner so we lose a Murray it's never good to lose a Murray people but that's exactly what's happened here in Dublin on the EPT plenty more Irish to come today He's taking his time isn't he you can, you can never hurry a Murray uh, that's right John and you can never get a, a round of drinks off a of Duffy well, we'll need a new player here at the TV table, and that's Hans Eskelson from Sweden. Obviously, there must be a low-budget airline that goes between Ireland and Scandinavia, as there's a massive amount of them have made this trip, more so than, than played in London, for example. Well, they kind of share the same personality, you know, very quiet, softly spoken. Mm -hmm. Intellectual. Yeah, intellectual. Great in bed. Oh, look at the... Um 554,000 for first prize, that's a, that's a hell of a lot. Baby faced, I think, would be the word for Torson. Yeah, he is very young. So William Thorson just called with pocket fours in an early position. We're seeing the Ace Queens a lot, suited. And he's only sat down, hasn't even warmed his seat up yet. And Eskelson. Raises 7,000 and he will get a call from Torsen if it's heads up. There's the hammer. Yeah, he's more than likely to get a call here, I think. Well, just yesterday he was filming the new Milky Bar Kid ad. And here he is on the EPT in pole position. Torsen could add this stack. I think he's even considering a re-raise here. No, just a call. We have to think about it. He's in no rush. Let's try to work out what he got, you know, ace king, ace queen. That's well, a very good flop there for pocket fours. It's a very good flop. He's not going to reckon uh, Eskelson raised him with tens and sixes in his hand. So he knows he's probably in, in a nice position. Good news for Torsen here. He's only got the... Oh, dear, that kills his hand dead. What happens now? You need to look at this twice if you're new to the game. It's tens and sixes, which means ace high from Eskelson takes the hand. Torsen's fours mean nothing. He's got a four kicker with two pair. There's the price of slow playing. You don't call the tower, right? You're falling the tower. Four? Ah, you're Swedish, This is our TV table. Luckily, our, our scene for this particular leg of the EPT is very near the airport. And let me tell you, the departures terminal's full. They're dropping like flies. Started off with hundreds. We're down to a handful. Well, as you can see, we're rocking all over Europe. Dublin today, Copenhagen tomorrow. Dortmund the day after. And who isn't looking forward to that trip to Warsaw? Hey, John. That, yeah, that's right. And uh, OK, so Willie's... Willie Tan has uh, limped in on the button. He's just called the 2000. With the ace in the hand, Torsen's likely to raise him. We know how he's been playing this tournament. He always makes his mind up. What, he, what I like about William Torsen, he makes his mind up what he's going to do, and then he thinks about it again before he makes that. Everything's double-checked. And we've got a new player at the table, Kevin Vriesick. He's a very, very strong player, Willie. William Thorson. And Willie, actually. The two Willies. Two Willies, just like our commentary team. Um, what's he doing there? So wait a second. I think he's, he's up. One, I think he's folded. Is he full? Or has he not put enough in? You have to put an eye on him. thinking about Yeah, Thorson's, Thorson's uh, suggesting that you, they should keep an eye on Willie because Willie's actually thrown some chips in asking for change to try to get a read on William Thorson, but uh, with, uh, with no intention of calling. That's the outer tables keeping busy. There's a woman bending over, which is never a bad thing, but uh, John Duffy has rather cruelly left me to do a sweat hand. After three series of the EPT where the expert has to call the hand only looking at one player's cards. He's played a bit of a joke. He's went and sat beside the table and he's going to leave me to do it. Well, it might be OK for me because it's William Torson who's on the small blind. So maybe he'll just blind steal and I'll be covered in glory. John should be down round about the table. A rather cruel thing to do to someone you've worked with for ages. OK, so the cards I'm getting to see is King Seven of Clubs. Let's see what Torsen does. He just calls, which makes it very hard. Well, I mean, 
Frisic could have absolutely anything. Let's see how the flop works itself out. Well, now the betting's going to be a great indicator of what Vrisic actually has. Although Torsen checks with the with the kings, which which you'd imagine there's only two other fives in the pack maximum. He's got to he's got to imagine Vrisic doesn't have that whatsoever. So he, he would think his kings are good at this stage, and he certainly can't slow play it anymore. Now, what is Vrisic up to? He's raising. Could he have be, have a lucky five in his hand? I don't think so. I've got to be looking here at, at a straight draw, at a flush draw. I'd maybe lean maybe towards a, a, a flush draw. I can't see any other reason why he would stay in this hand. He's obviously defending his big blind here. Maybe he, he doesn't give Torsen much credit. And there is Duthie. Look over the shoulder of Rysik. An almost smug look in his face. Leaving me to do this. Well, OK, Thorsen had to call that, of course. Let's see what the last card is. Now, that's a spade, so if Rysik has been on a flush draw after the turn, which is what I'm going to plump for, although it really is hard to tell with no raises. They both checked it out, so he doesn't have a flush. Let's see what he does have, though. A6. I suppose there wasn't that many chips involved, 7,000 in all after the initial blinds each. And he said his ace and got quite lucky. Now, just very quickly, the hand that we sweated, would you put him on a flush or a straight draw as well going into the uh, the river, be, be honest? I thought he probably had a six or something like <laughs> that. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get back to the poker. Eskelin's got pocket kings, fantastic. Second best pre-flop hand in poker. And Torsen's got queen jack. He's had a lot of these hands today, the king nines and the queen jacks and the king tens and the ace queens, and he likes to play them, likes to play them all. Uh, let's see what happens on the flop. Ooh, wow. Oh, there you go. It means that Torsen's hit his flush in the flop. And Eskelson's hit his set. It's three kings. <laughs> and they're both Scandinavian. <laughs> well, they're both Swedish, in fact. Oh, all, he all hell could break loose. This is Armageddon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Alan Partner just joined me here in the commentary box for one hand only <laughs> but this is wonderful these are hands that you know you could play all night you only see one or two of them you see them rarely the six comes out that's going to be no good no good for Eskelson but he's putting himself in the lead at the moment without a doubt if another club comes he might get away Thorson will have to move in now well Thorson's going to have to raise here oh yeah yeah for sure because he's, he's worried he's worried that uh, Eskelson's going to have aces with the ace of clubs but he's oh. actually got a set of kings Eskelson doesn't have many chips left let it just be said so he's, he's obviously going to call that and his heart is going to sink when he sees what's in front of him here now there still is outs involved here for Eskelson the other king a four a nine a six they will all do the job for him here because he'll hit his full ice and for once he doesn't want to see an ace Eskelson can walk away from the table and say, I did nothing wrong. But my three kings were a curse of biblical proportions here in Dublin. So the blinds have gone up, 1,500, 3,000, with a running ante of 300. You call the action, John. It's another sweat with William Torson. Let's see if you can do as, as well as I did last time. I'm going to try. Keep abreast of everything here. So Willie's Willie's raised here. He's made it four thousand seven hundred more. Okay, Thorson's. Oh wow, he's just calling with pocket aces, which is very very tricky play. Very tricky play. Tedal eighteen. So he's he's got position on Willie Tan. So Willie's. If you go go back through this, Willie's raised it four thousand seven hundred. Everybody else has folded so far. Everybody else folds. Okay, so it's between Willie and William and William has position on Willie so I would have thought that Willie's probably could have ace king he could have a, a small pair now if he's got ace king he's in trouble it's the only small pair at this table let's see what Willie does now okay so he's checking is he trap checking okay Willie William trap checks as well here it's pretty innocuous flop there's no flush draw there's no straight draw I still miss 
Okay, so Willie said I've missed. And William, and William Thorson checks again, so he's checked twice with his aces. I've still missed. Wow. I think, I think that Willie Town must have something like a pair of fives or Queen Jack. All right, so William Thorson bets his over pair, his aces. Has he waited too long here, John? Well, I don't know. Now Willie's, now Willie, Willie Tan is thinking. Maybe he's got ace queen. Maybe he's thinking of calling with ace queen yeah. or with pocket fives, yeah. something like that. Because of the way he's thinking, he's probably got. He might have ace queen or a small or a small pair, or he may have ace. So he showed the ace. That's an interesting. It'll be interesting to know what his kicker was. Oh, ace jack. Yeah, there it is. There it is. But he gave him enough chance to hit it. He made a bit of a boob of that hand. He gave him so many chances to hit that flop, to hit that turn, to hit that river. Well, yeah, but he, no. But the thing is, he knew he was winning, though, Colin. I think he he actually knew he was winning. Thank uh, goodness the other was the club. <laughs> he was trying to get Willie to bluff at the pot. He was trying to get. He was trying to induce the bluff. He knew he was winning. He wanted to make as much money from the aces as he could. William Torson's ruled this table so far. And he's not going to play that King 7 offsuit. Oh, he's got a huge chip stack now, William Thank you, Adrian. Some players Thank do you, need Andy. to get busy. Thank we you, haven't Lord. seen much of Andy Black yet, really. Oh, look, he always finds a hand in me when I'm black, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> he always finds a hand, <laughs> isn't it? Amazing. <laughs> Every time in a big blind, you always find a hand. <laughs> Well, as usual, when you're on the button or you're on the small blind, you're going to be accused of stealing, and that's what Willie Tan's saying. And Willie Tan wants to know why every time he's on the big blind, Andy Black seems to push in. <laughs> Andy shows a three, a three there, which uh, is a bit of a joke. He's having a bit of fun. <laughs> Previous EPT winners is like a who's who of world poker. None come bigger than Ram for Swanee. Now, so far, the man who's looking to add his name to that list and is most likely to do it is William Torson, who's been fantastic. And he's got the chip stack now to be able to be creative and he can call with seven yeah. hands like seven eight. And John Dothy, he can, he can bully if he wants as well. He, he can pretty much do what he likes. Jonathan Lewis from the USA. He's always been a patient player, and he's got into this hand courtesy of the big blind. Oh, uh, there you go. Two pair for him. Hot favourite. And he checks his two pair, hoping that somebody would bet with a nine or an overcut over pair. Well, nobody's taking the bait whatsoever. It's only a small bit of danger. He's actually increased his chances of winning. Only a six is a bad card, that middle pin straight. Oh, dear. River is a six of and there it is, the five, six, seven, eight, nine, because Torson really okay. needs the chips. And he, he set the mother of all streets. Let's see how he bets this, John. I think, I think, Lewis, I think Lewis has got to call this. He's, I mean, he's bet 3,000 with two pair. Thorson's come out with a big raise up to 15,000. I think, you know, it looks to me like Thorson is just bullying and using his chip stack. Wow, that's a that's a hell of a fold. I would have I would have I would have definitely called that. Hey William, where, where did you finish in the World Series? Thirteenth. Thirteenth indeed. Uh, I played so bad the last time it's ridiculous. Not an, not an unlucky possession though. It was a million, was it a million he got? What did you get for that? Did you get a million for that, yeah? Welcome back to Dublin and the Irish Open 2024 presented by PokerStars and Paddy Power Poker. Day three of the main event, the penultimate day of the main event, and we enter the final session of the day. 21 players remain. That's three tables of seven. Trying to get down to the final table. Chances are we'll get down to the final two because we are going to play two more 30 minute levels. And then the survivors will bag and tag and come back for tomorrow, which will be the final day. We will play down to a winner tomorrow. So you will get the final table tomorrow. You may also get the road, the journey to the final table as well. 
come back from break and the blinds are up, of course. 8160 will be the new blind level. And a new feature table, we have flipped it, flipped it for real during the break. Back on the main stage, players like Kimo Koko, Konstantinos Vatseris, Stephen Groom, Heap Nin, Dan Quinlan, Mark Johnston, and Mitchell Heinem. Well, I'm joined by 34th place finisher in this year's Irish Open main event, David Lappin, welcome back. Thank you very much, a little bit of a rub down. No, not really, you meant no. it like it was a good thing. It was a good thing, I was celebrating. You finished the 34th out of 3,233. Plus, a player who had a deep run in last year's Irish Open, Tom Murphy. Hello, hello. I'm, I'm going to have to stick with laughing on this one. You made it sound bad. Made it sound bad. <laughs> I was not trying to. I was trying to celebrate your success, in all seriousness. I had dinner with Tom about two hours ago, and all he did was brag about how easy it was to get from 34 to 12. He said that was the easiest uh, passage Probably the easiest part of the tournament. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. In all seriousness, congratulations to you and pass on my regards to Dara when you see him. Great run from both of you in this tournament. Yeah, more or less the, set, the same effort from Dara. He came, I think, 42nd or something around there. Um, he had about four bigs on the bubble, got a spin going, actually had a really big stack. I was never in that same situation where I had a good stack going. He actually did build it up to be coasting around about the average for quite a while. It's usually a stereotype for Dara to be nursing the short stack, and it seems to be you, you were in that role this time, David. Yeah, I've, I've, I'm a Padawan you've adopted, you've to adopted his the Jedi. Ways. Exactly. <laughs> Some familiar faces on this feature table as well from the Irish poker circuit. Uh, definitely egging on for the Irish guys here. Oh, that's your a really problem. big sweat. A few yeah. people on the rail sweating on their mates. Some big money up top. Absolutely. And... We are getting to the point where the money is getting very, very serious. Of course, tomorrow we're going to be paying six-figure scores to the top five, 415K up top. Don't know if you guys heard the plan for today, so we don't really want to be playing till 3 a.m. Um, we're going to stop at 1 a.m. in two hours' time, so we're going to play out the next two levels. If we hit two tables, if we hit 16, we'll have to pause for the redraw, slightly annoying, but we'll basically play to the end of level 32, end of the next level, and then call it quits. We'll come back tomorrow with between probably 12, 16 players and then play down to win. And I think it's happened last year, right, Tom? We didn't get to it, the final table. It did happen table. last year as well. I was about to say, you hear, you hear a lot about this world-famous widget. What are your predictions for finishing out day three? Okay, you want to see the widget in action? Okay, I want to see it. I've, you want to see the things. widget? It's, it, it's not really that special. All it is, is an algorithm, Could which is basically just looking at average stacks. So okay. at the end of level 32, we should have, based on a 30 big blind average, 12.9 players. Okay. Well, there can't be 0.9 of a player, so let's, let's, let's so round one one Let's call it 13, unlucky 13. I don't know, I'd say there's some players who qualify as 0.9 of a player. <laughs> <laughs> No, can be uh, there's some players even less than that, so. <laughs> They're lucky to get to the table. By the way, if we're going to talk about familiar faces uh, in the Irish poker the community, he just got moved off the feature oh, table, but Porrick Parkinson is still going strong. He, he still is a person in this tournament. Oh, you mean the whole big, yeah. Now, something else you might not be familiar with, David, is that Joe's a bit poorly today. Oh, so he's not been here all day. So I have been holding down the fort. So I genuinely was very happy to see you go deep. But when you were eliminated, I'm like, I can get lapping in for the end of the day because he's a gobshite and he can just give me an easy last two hours. <laughs> I would like to ask who did coin the phrase clapping for lapping. They deserve punishment. That was Joe Stapleton. Okay, yeah, Joe deserves what he gets. <clears throat> That was an amazing, amazing session you had on the feature table yesterday where you basically just ran it up over the course of 30, 40 minutes. Yeah, well, and it actually continued for about half an hour after we were moved off. That was definitely the, the biggest move I had in the tournament in terms of big blinds. Um, had a very fortuitous spot where blind versus blind, I flopped at trips and my opponent turned river trips. So oh. I, I made a boat, but he had the worst boat, and that got oh, me a well, full well, double I, as well. The way you were saying this, I thought that was going to end up in 
fortunately for you. Well, yeah, that sounds pretty great. Yeah, no, it, it went very well. So, uh, yeah, no, that was a great little purple patch. Obviously, you got to see me slapped around the final or the feature table earlier today. Managed to uh, build a stack while simultaneously being humiliated by bluff after bluff. Oh man, you <laughs> nearly, nearly, nearly made the call though with the ten. It was it was a frustrating oh. spot because basically everybody came over to me about 20 minutes after that hand and went, "Oh, you can't fold against this lad." Just so you know, this lad, no folding. <laughs> and I was like, "That would have been really good half an hour yeah, ago." Because yeah. now I know I definitely should have called that spot. Thanks for the <laughs> intel, guys. Yeah. Anyway, we've an interesting one here. Great to see Quinlan in action. He has been a real improver on the Irish poker scene. He's a bit of an online grinder. He's been dabbling in the live streets. He was at a recent Unibet Open. And uh, he plays very well. Actually, we had him in the commentary box at that as well. So he talks a good game too. And uh, lovely chap. Very much part of that new generation yeah, of Irish it, poker that you are part of too. I, I am also a part of. Yeah, you're maybe a bit too old for that now, David. Can I help you in the new? So, slowly entering the seniors, I'd say. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, a Aiden's a good friend. It's great to see him go so deep in this tournament. Lovely guy too. We were just talking during the last level. I was on with uh, with Vincent that I am literally one year away from being eligible to play seniors tournaments, and it is very, very depressing. Five million behind. Maybe Should highlight the way, by the way, that we have dropped down to 20 as this hand plays out on the main stage. At our previous feature table, Christopher Johnson lost a flip to Adrian Thorne, ace queen losing to tens, and that means Christopher was eliminated in 21st place for 12.5k. Yeah, there's a very tricky spot here for Quinlan, as it seems to have went razor to go and call the small blind, call the big blind. Quinlan leads out in the turn. For value. Will be calling Sierra River? Dean put him in a tough spot with the flush draw, the king high flush draw, raising it up. Yeah. I spoke to Aiden at the previous break and he said that Nin was putting him in some really tough spots already. Yeah, did, I wonder yeah. if he will find the hero call here. For that reason, he al already has it in his mind that this guy is going to try and take pots away from him. Of course, definitely. The one thing I will say is uh, certainly wearing his emotions on his face here. This doesn't look like a man that's happy to call a turn raise, right? You know, <laughs> counting out his chips, thinking, mumbling to himself, bunch of options in his head. It never really is a huge sign of strength, right? And I'm not a live reads person. Do you think it's because he's thinking he'll either go all in or... Yeah, I, and I think... And therefore, it's kind of been taken oh. away. No, he does make the call. Here we go. This is going to be a huge part in the context I, I think of the you're tournament. right, though. I think maybe he's considering is there merit to shoving here or... Oh, it's the diamond. Yeah, first to act. Oh, look at that. You're first to act, says Heapnin. Speech play Everything coming into that. effect. <laughs> Diamond, six. Question is, how many six in a range? You could have a big blind, you defend. You mean raise only? It's definitely the small blind, not the big blind. I probably don't have six. Okay, I played with Nin for about an hour and a half today, and every time he pumped out this sort of speech play, it's good for strong. table, yeah. It's good for TV table, yeah. I wonder if he's balanced especially, in this especially, spot. Especially, especially again, especially against this man, right? Oh yeah, the troublemaker. <laughs> Some guys are good at being balanced in these situations yeah, yeah, and are good at chatting it up, but I only ever saw good hands when he you did this. You have to go, you know, get me off. And I wonder if Aiden could pick up on this. <clears throat> You're going to have to go all in to get me off. Yeah, Quinlan, I definitely think never considering the shove here. I think maybe potentially <laughs> considering whether it's best to Why go for a type bet. <laughs> or just check his option. What's happened? And I think he's considering blocking here. It's as bad river as he could have seen. Yes. I just realised that... <laughs> Nin's actually rivered the straight and the flush. Yeah, I, I, I realized you said diamond, and I was going, no, it's a straight. <laughs> but this looks super strong, right? You know, Nin's talking hey, a big so game and saying, you're going to have to go all in to get me off it. And now it's checked to him, and if he shoves, I'm so you know. disappointed. So you never checked the six there? Eh? <coughs> so maybe, could I have any value hand? <coughs> So what you play behind, probably less than two million? Aiden is going to read this situation like a book, I think. 1. He's 5? a very studied guy on this. About 1.5 million. How much is it? He's not gone all in, but it's like most of it. What can I do with my set? <laughs> yeah, I, th I think this hurts a lot, right? Oh but I my think he is going to get away from this. Uh, Aiden's what very good at just leaning back, taking in the information. Lots of information you have, you available right now as Nin sort of 
chatters away. I think another another great factor. You can uh, still have like a uh, one, two, a great three, factor in any good poker player is he's not emotional. Too big left no. to come he's back. He's not playing into the speech play. I don't getting want emotionally to be attached, greedy. wanting to I don't call want to out spike, shit. which is of course what his opponent wants here, right? Yeah. No, and credit to Nin, this will work against some kinds of players. Some kinds of players, it's like their head's not screwed on. Great foul, Aiden Quinlan finds the foul. You see you on TV, right? You see you on TV. Go to TV, man. Oh, that old chestnut. <laughs> I hate to break it to you, it's not going to be on TV. It is on the oh, internet. It is the king of diamonds. <laughs> Reminds me a little bit of, of a diamond. young Pork O'Neill, does Aiden Quinlan. Oh, really? Same sort of demeanor, sits back, lets it all happen. Really non-plus by those types of situations. You see, I love the fact that you've just called him a young Porrigo Neil, and they look equally young to me. I was, I was going to say, <laughs> what is the age difference between Aiden and Potter? So <laughs> Three years. <laughs> I was just in the bar with Porrigo Neil. I'm hoping he's listening to this and thinks I've aged him more significantly than yeah. he is. That was the only reason I said that. <laughs> oh, you called the tone, right? So I'm guessing you probably have eight Listen, we don't have to play into it anymore. He's going to see it in half an hour. On TV, apparently. <laughs> on TV. Look, I'm on TV, Mom. Maybe not. And uh, from what you've seen so far, James, uh, who are the people to look out for on this <laughs> table? So I, again, try not to express any bias, but Konstantinos Svetseris, who was What's on our feature table really yesterday, show? No. kind of worked his way up to the chip lead at one point. <laughs> he introduced himself at the start of the day, and he was just like telling me how nervous he was to play on a feature table for the first time, how he started watching the live streams back in 2010 and has been a huge fan for all these years, and how great it was to be at this event, having qualified online, and just like, he was, his, his enthusiasm was infectious, okay. and I'm like, good for you. Yeah, you're rooting for him. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, for him. absolutely. This tournament needs stories like that. I always say there's like three kinds of stories that can come out of a, a, a big tournament such as this one. You've got the exemplary high stakes pro who's just brilliant. It's the Steve O'Dwyer story, and it's yeah. the guy who just shows you that poker's a skill game, and it's wonderful oh, to oh, see oh, the best do oh, the best sort of can I get the that they can. There's the grinder story of the person who maybe never got their just rewards yeah. and have tried and tried and maybe never quite got there. They're a no, great story, but you have to have that romantic of course, to riches of course. in there definitely, as well. Definitely. Everyone loves an underdog story, and I think the Irish Open is the tournament for that. Oh, here we go. It's Quinlan versus Nin, round two. This time it's Quinlan doing the shoving, and I guessing that Nin has folded because he's walked away from the table. One point has folded, Nin's in the small blind. He's one more player to act. Throws away in the key turn. Seems reasonable to me here, right, David? Like, 20 people left in the tournament, some big money up top. King 10, obviously, we can see, is the best hand. Yeah, hard to call it off with that hand, for sure. Good decision by Nin. Nice spot there. Nice pickup from Quinlan. Back on the horse immediately. I'll check this. To me, the appeal of poker and the reason that it makes such good, I'm going to use the word, spectator sport. And of course, what ignited the boom back in 2003? Oh, hold on, what's going on here? We see over the top of Simon Wilson stack there. So we pan around the table. <laughs> That was a very interesting oh, game and of cards. Interesting to see Simon Wilson actually, we got, we got an over the top shot. He's actually got a calculator out on his phone. I do this. Doing a little All bit of math. All the time. I okay. do because I need to know how many big blinds it's I've got. <laughs> and I can guarantee that's 100% the reason, right? Like Simon's wow. not thinking of his head, oh, what well, percent? If it was the 100K blind level, it's easy. When it's 160,000. So who knows they're 160 times stable? No These modern. Online kids who just press the button that tells you how many big I, lines you have. I Absolutely. think that was my biggest issue on the feature table last year. You hey, put your phone in the box, and I went, where's my calculator? Well, I do not know. Yeah, 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 within. Well, uh, in, in your hand. Return to action on the feature table. Almost two. Yeah, no, so I was just saying that, you know, we it was the moneymaker story that ignited yeah. the Pokemon. I can't remember whether so you were with us when we were talking about this player. yesterday, Tom, but... I, I, I was. Yeah, it's it's David that versus Goliath. That is the classic story which makes poker so appealing. The yeah. fact you've got the accomplished pros, you've got the amateurs, and occasionally the amateur can you try. Can what I have. Definitely. Okay. He doesn't have... Look you on know, TV. we may, we may <laughs> start an Irish moneymaker-esque 
story here with the eventual champion. Uh, honey, tournament. you're up. I know, I, I think it, yeah. Oh, okay. Is this guy David or Goliath? I can't quite work it out. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know, I said there was three stories that could come through, but there's actually sort of a fourth one, and, and no, actually looking at Simon Wilson there on the outer table, strikes me as the fourth one. He, he's a superb player. He is genuinely going to be one of those high roller guys, worked, in my opinion. I haven't seen a young guy. Present company excluded, of course, Tom. <laughs> I haven't seen a young guy in Irish poker as talented as him since Alex Kulov kind of came out of the Irish scene. Obviously, has that Bulgarian flag. He only kept the Irish flag for one year so that he could deprive me of the GPI award that year. Anyway, that's, that's neither here nor there. Just thought I'd get it in, though. Um, no, Simon Wilson, extraordinary talent. And that's a story, really, is that like yeah. that guy getting his first marquee result. The guy you know is going to be one of those yes. guys. I, I agree. I'm absolutely no hard feelings. I, I think Simon Wilson is on a completely different level and a huge talent for the future. Oh. <coughs> so you'll start like seven and a half? No more. And a great gentleman as well. Very nice person off the felt. Which is oh, you have three, and very handsome. five bubble. Mm. Right, you know, yeah, very exactly. He's got everything That's going for him. Five, By the way, I've, I've six, quickly eight, checked with the team, eight, Tom. Next time you find yourself at the beach table, yeah, we eight, will eight, allow eight, you to bring four, a Casio calculator. Seven, Thank you. Because you can't Thank receive you. messages on that. I appreciate that. That would help me significantly. Now, if we could wind this date back a year, okay? Tell me this information then. They got me oh, for my smartwatch. They didn't spot mm? the smartwatch until back. maybe like yeah. 10 hands in and then they were like, is that a smartwatch? I was like, oh God, they got me. You got me. It's a, it's a, it's a, I, I a was sack just, this year, right? They make you put it in a bag. Or they they I, I, I just like to have it because it well, apparently it's going to tell me if I'm about to have a heart attack. <laughs> I showed well, a flash before. We were, I mean? in all seriousness, we were questioning why you had the patch under Versus the under. I'm thinking, I think he's trying to did kind of like the mute the thing? sensor Why because he doesn't want it going off. <laughs> <laughs> like when he's when he's on the bubble. No, I was being really what? cheeky actually. They tell me I can only have one. You have a one patch rule. It's and not. I, it's, by the way, Irish Open rules, not our rules. No, 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 absolutely. So I was like, okay, well, the sponsor will be very upset if I don't put the sponsor patch on. But I did. I want to give some love to the chip race. So I thought, well, it's like a tattoo here on my hand <laughs> if I just leave it here. Yeah, you got away with that. <laughs> A bit of speech play going on there in the last hand. Button opens. A lot of speech play going on in this not table. It's a small bunch of guts. Takes it down. Mitch Hynum, another English reg. Very capable. Young, up and coming player. I actually don't know how young Mitch is. And I have a flood draw and then a thread draw on the turn. Yeah, I played with Mitch uh, on oh, the. So I could have any set. That's why I, I could be Actually, saying he, young up and coming player. Do you know what? He sure. wasn't on the feature table. It was when we were off the feature table. He was brought to our table, and he, uh, yeah, he won a very key flip for me that sort of spoiled my day. Oh, okay. But good for him. So we're rooting against Mitch. Yes, <laughs> that's all I wanted to get across. A big this hand coming on here on the outer table. Is an all in and a call, and it's Porrick Parkinson who has Boris Chong sit covered. And. Porig's going to win that all in, and Boris is KO'd. He shoved ace four into Porig's jack. There was a jack on the turn, so no river card could save Boris Chongsit. He will be out in 20th place for just shy of 14 and a half grand, and we're down to 19 players now. Porig Parkinson flying the flag for the Sporting Emporium, where, of course, he's an ambassador. You can find that card club in the centre of Dublin, just off Grafton Street. He's in there Does most evenings. Holding uh, court, and yeah. he's probably yeah. going to have a lot more money yeah. on the table in future weeks, I suggest. Money maker esque <laughs> boom. Oh, so you second. Yeah, yeah. We were saying that half jokingly, what a great really narrative cool, though for this good. year. If you get like Barney Boatman wins Paris, Porrin uh, Parkinson I was thinking that as well. wins yeah. the Irish Open. Just oh. all of the legends, all of the old guys. Just I was going to say, what do you call that, though, right? You know, yeah, like the, the year of the OGs. <laughs> OGs is a good way to put it, I guess. Yeah. The, the, the cast of Late Night Poker. Yeah. In, in, it's the 25th anniversary of Late Night Poker this you year. It kind of feels appropriate. You are a lot more creative than me. <laughs> the year of the seniors, I'd say. Well, considering that seniors is now defined as 50, I, these, these guys are considerably north of 50. That's why we have the super seniors now. Nice 
How do you approach this one, Tom, here? Kirko, obviously, with the second of flush draw here on a paired board. Johnson probing away here with the threes, hoping his hand is just going to take this one down, protect it a little bit. Yeah, of course. Uh, again, this is the kind of topic that we touched briefly on the chip race, right? The three letters that I have no clue about. I, C, M. And... Uh, yeah, you know, it's kind of a tough situation because we do see Johnston has a monster stack rocking at 8.2 million and is well covering Kirko. Yeah, I like this show from Kirko. I think with 1.3 million, just getting it in there, you know, putting a lot of pressure on hands like sevens, eights that would have sought protection, threes as well, of course. If he's thinking Johnston is also possibly getting out of line with his opens, which you'll see in these ICM situations, maybe these pairs don't do so well. Um, very happy to get this in and just deny a ton of equity against hands that don't have anything, right? Yeah, and at this depth, he is going to have flush draws, but he's going to have Jack X, and, you know, maybe, okay, he might flat a 6X, but, you know, a lot of Jack X is going to be in the mix. Johnson has to make a fairly heroic call here. Yeah, this Aware that he can be counterfeited as much as anything else, too. And, yeah, this is a good point as well, right? Like, Trees is obviously ahead, but an underdog, given, given the run out of this board. But we do love an underdog story. Look at this. Oh, he's thinking about it. <laughs> he does have a big stack, maybe feeling as though his opponent, would he always shove a jack? I think he probably would. I think he would, right? Like, what, what, what are the mines? 160. Yeah. Sub 10 big blind jam. Like, there's not a lot of playability here. You just want to run your equity. Yeah, you feel like your, your big blind opponent's just looking to flop some equity and go with it. Exactly. Obviously, that can be a flush draw, but it can definitely be a pair. Yeah. And I think maybe just taking into consideration, even if he doesn't have a jack, thinking of the exact scenario he's in, right? Like, what if my opponent has a flush draw? How am I doing against the flush draw? Am I getting the right price? How valuable are these chips to me this late in this tournament? And it's crazy, right? Because your chips are literally worth these thousands and thousands of euro amount of money. Yeah. They're no longer a 5k chip, they're no longer a 25k chip. It's thousands of euro worth of equity in these chips. Just lay it down. A rail foreman, which I think is a great addition this year <laughs> to the setup, and I'm very interested to see. Didn't it, didn't it used to do like that in Germany with the um, cigarette packets? <coughs> Stuck in yeah. on the spot. With 19 and 20 pack cigarette, uh, cigarette box. Obviously, I think the uh, lineup at the, the final board. table will probably dictate how many people choose to occupy said area. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It's also <laughs> two things I've noticed about like spectators around tables is number one, an event like this where there's so much poker being played and everyone's either in the mini or the mystery bounty. Or, it, that, that sucks people away. But also when there's a live stream and people can watch with cards, it's kind of like, do I yeah. really want to stand there by the table? It, it's typically really close friends really right, that, are, that are watching on the rail, really trying to get involved in the moment. Uh, as we mentioned before, when you when you mentioned there were streams and there wasn't cards of coverage, <laughs> it was a whole lot less popular, right? You're like you don't want to sit there and go, well, well, what's going on? I don't know who has what. Yeah, yeah. I mean, those early seasons of the EPT when they had like tiered seating around every final table and it would be full. There'd be people queuing up to sit down to watch a final table. And now there's RFID ruining everything. <laughs> Comes around to Kirko in the small blind and he's found new chips added to his stack after that hand. Sitting on about, I can't do maths here, 15 bigs? Yeah, and it's an interesting one because I feel like 7 8 suited, you're definitely sticking it in. 7 yes. 6 suited, you might be. 7 5 suited, pretty close. And th these ranges are definitely going to change based off who your opponent is in the big blind. If you think your opponent is going to be calling the correct range and is going to be aware of this, and it suddenly changes Mitch Heinem in the big blind. <laughs> Certainly capable. Well, I tell you what I did see with five tables remaining, Mitch Heinem made a very loose, I thought, call with ace four against a cutoff shove for somewhere around 12 or 13 bigs. Okay. Guy had queen jack and he won the hand. Actually, sorry, he didn't. He lost that particular hand. But I thought that ace four was quite a aggressive call if you want to yes. go that way. Like it was a little bit maybe 
not as icy am aware as I would maybe be a bit more precious about my really? chips at that point. Credit to him, he just you know decided he wanted to bash himself out of the really stacked awesome. position he That's was fair. in. Terrible, but I think we're talking about someone who will station off maybe close to Chippy V there. Also, yeah, if Kirko's aware of that call, well, right? Like maybe thinking he isn't tightening up in this ICM situation, then maybe he's not willing to jam as wide. Yeah. But do you think 7-5 suited merits a limp there maybe? or? 7-5 suit is kind of an interesting one. Yeah, I suppose, yeah. It, again, it depends on how often you think your opponent's going to pounce. Of course. Yeah. Well, there are definitely certain players where you just know you're burning money by limping in. They're just so relentless. All these pretty hands that when you're much deeper earlier in a tournament, you'd love to open. Now you're in the ICM shackles. Playing what I call boring poker, <laughs> tight poker. <laughs> what do you mean I can't open more. eight six? Feraldo yeah. would be so a shame. Survived. A suited gapper? That's the nuts. Yeah. I can sell one over. Neen being honest here, gets the raise and take it. And what do you think about giving away free info this late in the tournament, right? I suppose I think there's two kinds of information you can give away. If, if you're basically telling people that you did something that they would anticipate you would always do, yeah. it's sort of not real information. But yes, of course, you're right. Showing cards, sometimes you are giving away the keys to the kingdom. Of course. No worries. One more stack. One more I remember, I can't, I can't yeah, remember what stream I was watching. Yeah. I think it was an EPT stream that you used were covering, James. And there was someone like Steve O'Dwyer and a, a, a bunch of players at the table, and you've got the future table, about six tables in a row to do a game of... You win a hand, you have to show your hand or something like that. Oh, they, that, that was a thing that they kept going, yeah, you yeah, yeah. You could not pay me enough money to be at a table with people such as Steve O'Dwyer deep in an EPT saying, OK, yeah, I'll show my hand, come on. Yeah, go ahead. Take this free information. <laughs> I think Steve O'Dwyer would do a lot more with that information than I would with his cards, so. That was, I get that a lot. Earlier, he absolutely screwed it with our heads. Two, two steps. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny how in the previous session we were saying how serious the action gets, how quiet the players get when you get to the stage. The feature table not proving that to be true, but we have just seen Alexander Davis eliminated by David Two. Alexander shoving ace six into jacks. And deja vu, Jack on the turn. Drawing dead on the turn. And Davis out in 19th for 14,460 euros. The Jacks are certainly the hot hand of the hour. I did meet Alex briefly about an hour ago. He came up to me, we have each other on Twitter. Very nice man, great to see him go deep in this event. Obviously it hurts to, you know, it feels so far away, but you know, to come 19th out of 3,233 people. Yeah. Hmm? It's insane score. By the way, Jack's Maybe. hot hand of the day said no one ever. I would love to. Speaking of hot hands, there's no, no, no. Riz Rizzo. Johnson with the ladies here. Eyeing up a... Well, about two million. Maybe a three bet or maybe a shove against what I think is now having the blinds gone up a I think there's still 17 big blinds. There, you think, okay, so it's a 2.5x open. It's a well, maybe, bit. maybe you're right, actually. Do you, do you know what the blind is? It is still 1.6. I think you're right. So this is a larger open on the book yeah. with the ace nine. Interesting to see whether Johnson decides to do a very small click or just stick it in. Yeah, that's true. The, the, the larger size does make it more difficult to find a click, right? But maybe you can all still in. find yeah. six or all seven in. big serve. But Alex to ship it in the middle. Yes. Christmas is coming. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas did not come. He sent those cards into the muck. Yeah. Unfortunately, it was Easter, not Christmas. <laughs> it was Easter. And all you got was a not Kinder even. Egg. Oh, yeah, not even an Easter Egg. <laughs> Nice pick up for Johnston too, has already mountains of chips. Johnston, I'm told, is I think 21, 22 years of age. And wow. I believe is pursuing poker for the next couple of years uh, as he dropped out of uni to pursue, pursue poker. Well, we love a story like that. I love to hear stories. Obviously, Simon Wilson is finishing his degree. I just think there's a lot more profitable career in poker for that one. I want one. you to leave. I'm sure leave. we'll have Simon on the, the stream again, no doubt, over the next uh, day or so. But Simon's journey, while also being a full-time student, is quite remarkable. I played the WPT yeah. win with him uh, back in December. 
and I swear he was getting up at 4 a.m. in the morning to do online exams before jumping in the 10K. This guy is studying at the table you, in you, between hands. You really do need to listen to, to the podcast episode. It is incredible, what a story. So uh, obviously we've just lost uh, Heapnir, not eliminated, just being balanced off the feature table. And the table now becomes a whole lot quieter. <laughs> By the way, I don't mind his antics at all. It's the not one, not two, not three, but four card protectors that tilts the hell out of me. <laughs> you need all the good luck you can get, especially this deep in the tournament. Johnson finding himself with the dominated hand here. And I, I was going to actually ask this before we got onto the stream, David. A scenario like this, the middle position open, roughly 20 big blinds effective, how different, so obviously we can see Johnston as the table chip lead, how different does our tree betting range change, right? Like if we're tree bet bluffing in a regular earlier in a tournament, on the button, maybe from an MP opens, queen 10 offs, king 10 offs, hands like this, etc. Does it change? I think we can still do it, but I think our sizing can get smaller, which is yeah. kind of fun. We can sort of leverage bet of this course. this amount that we have raised folds off and lean into these guys who have all the ICM pressure right now. Obviously, he's sitting there with 9 million or whatever he has. No real ICM pressure unless Good he framing. specifically gets in a clash with uh, Vatseris here. Speaking of Vatseris, here he is in the big blind with a very defendable 10-8 suited. I have two classes, well, three classes of hand. Bad hands, just pretty hands, 10-8 <laughs> suited. And then there's, you know, good hands. King, queen, aces. Aces is a good hand. Kings is a good hand. 10-8 suit, it's pretty. Just the one diamond. And Heinem ahead with king high. Yeah, Vatseris has some back doors going on, but it's, it's very tricky against an open here. Heinem can really just bet one big blind here yeah. and put Vatseris range in a pickle. I don't know if he has to maybe have a minimum defense frequency that includes a hand like 10 8 of diamonds to a single big blind. Obviously, I'm preempting things, assuming that that's the sizing we're going to see, but I think it will be very small anyway. I think so. I think one big blind makes complete sense. 1.2, 1.3, something along the lines of this. And it does, I, I understand what you're saying about the defense frequency, but it can be quite tough, right? Considering how short, well, he's not really short, but 17 bigs. The SPR of the pot is going to shrink up very quickly. Well, Does decide to continue. Yeah, and maybe feeling like you know he'll get an honest response out of his opponent here. I think so, right? <laughs> Remember Heinem, the one in ICM jail, as we were talking about. And Fatseris, well, you know, he was thinking about how wrapped around that seven of diamonds he was, but actually finds the ten of hearts here. Yeah, I think Batseris is going to think his hand is good here a lot too, right? Like, how often does your opponent flop trips? I think Heinem would be okay with checking back here, realizing his equity. Yeah, Heinem probably coming with a, a range 200k on that flop all the time. Yes. Doesn't necessarily mean that he is an ace X. Combinatorically with two aces out there, it's obviously less likely. You'd still do it with pocket eights. You'd still do it with pocket sixes. You'd still do it with kings or queens. So, you know... Fatser is probably likely to tread somewhat carefully. Heinem may be thinking, how often can he get a seven to fold? Decides to check it back. I don't think that necessarily means he's done with the hand. Definitely not done now. Yeah, definitely not done now. And I think that makes sense too, right? You're saying check back. Like, if he does have kings, queens, etc., jacks, I think maybe he encourages more bluffs from his opponent, right? Feigning weakness. Maybe he thinks there's more EV and finding a bluff catch. But no need to bluff catch now. The best hand. And does Vatseris come with the block? Or does he check and put himself in a spot where he might have to make a decision for more chips? He is going to look to block here. Ten. Ten no good. Wow, and just a call yeah, from Heinem, who didn't think about it for very long. Yeah, I certainly have considered that one for a while. Wow, okay. It's also, uh, 
that's interesting, right? Because obviously it's a paired board. There are going to be better hands, right? Like full houses. Sure. But you would imagine... They're not blocking. Yeah, and you'd also imagine this player, like based off the position he's opening, is going to apply a lot of pressure with Asex. He's going to find tree bets. He's going to put you to the test pre-flop. Would have liked to see a raise there. Yeah, like the ace-10 and ace-jack might have just got sent in free. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Huh. Happy to take it down and add chips to his stack. I'm not saying for a moment that it's wrong, I'm just interested by the fact that he took no time. No time to consider the value of a raise there. So three tables of six right now. 18 players remaining. The rail filling up here, obviously the free bar <laughs> in the crack den. Money well spent. Guys have loaded up Trying to save the weekend somehow. and can yeah, now come in rail well on your way to with the point in hand. Might already be saved, to be I think you're announcing that now, there's instantly going to be hundreds <laughs> of people. <laughs> no, there's no, I mean the, the, <laughs> the free bar's closed, all the money's been spent, don't go in there now. There's no alcohol left, go home. <laughs> See friends of Aiden, Aiden on the rail, Clicky, Justin Boyle. And this field, this is what I love. I hate ICM, but I love having a nice stack. I love getting to raise up pretty hands. I love putting on pressure. I don't like having a short stack on the other hand. <laughs> Not a nice thing to have. Well, Queen Ten suited pretty pure. Maybe even allowable as an under the gun opening range. Probably maybe the worst one you allow yourself to open under the gun. Is it, Tom, or do you go looser than that? Well, in this exact scenario, off yeah. this stack? I think you can still do it even in a somewhat high ICM environment. It's I the right so. kind of hand to put in there. You need to have some board coverage. You can't, like, block yourself off to too narrow a range or else, yes. you know, actually big blind defense find it easy to play certain boards. Well, what are we talking about, David? What do we know? Room oh picked up. Pocket Kings here. After Vitzeris tries to apply the pressure to the other big sack with the ace eight off. Yeah, it's a dreamy situation. He gets to ship this one in. There's already so much in the pot. He can pick up almost two million without oh. showdown. And if he does oh. see a showdown, he's most likely going to be ahead. Of course. Groom playing about a little over 30 big ones. Happy to cold for this in the middle. And there's going to be two bridesmaids to this groom, I feel. Both players are going to have to get out of the way here. Vatseris made his move. Nothing wrong with it. Yeah, I don't think there's anything Just wrong, a bit right? unlucky with the timing. I don't think Vatseris is getting too out of line here. Just, uh, just unfortunate with the timing. Good. Looking very happy with himself. Playing around 7 million right now. We think it's Oliver Boyce who is the current chip leader with just north of 11 million. Oli Boyce came 32nd in the Irish Open not too many years ago, pre-COVID certainly. Maybe, I want to guess, 2018 or 19. Very deep run there in a pretty big field. Uh, so no stranger to going deep in this particular tournament. Got to play alongside him yesterday and today. Lovely guy to talk to at the table. Absolute gentleman. Someone who brings a sort of a sports person's ethos into the game of poker. I like that, I like that. And I did see, I think we were talking about, uh, it was his name, Nian, who recently left the feature table. Of course, talking a big game, a lot of table chat, but, you know, ultimately knocked someone out of the tournament earlier in an all-in situation. Shook his hand afterwards, showed sports and shit. I like that. Yeah. It does. Love to see it. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of good sportsmanship. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us how you really feel about those cards. <laughs> so you, you'll see that a lot, right? Where just oh. oh, what do we got? It's Parky's table again. And there's Ollie Boy's center of your picture in the oh, blue. Oh, Connor Beresford sending the chips in the middle. That is Connor Beresford eliminated. Connor Beresford is out in 18th place. Oh, no. He just lost a flip. Connor had ace-queen. Guess what the other hand was? Pocket don't, jacks. Don't you Correct. Dare. Don't you dare. Jacks held, and Connor 
has just been KO'd, cashing for 14,460 euros. Well, I for one am feeling real bad man because Connor was my pick from very early on, day two. If you remember the first time I appeared on the feature table with Connor, obviously ran a little bit well to win a flip against him. But I did say to him that day, I thought his name was on the trophy. I thought he was going to go all the way in this tournament. In my book, the best player in the room this weekend, Connor Beresford. 100% agree. Hats off to Connor for the score. But I have to say, if I was in this remaining, what are we at now? 18, 17 people. I have breathed a huge sigh of relief that Connor has gone. Oh my goodness, yeah. How this tournament has opened up because of his presence of no longer. Oh, three fifth chairs, thank you. I'm and a huge favorite with the people remaining. With Connor's elimination, two key things. Number one, money jump. Everyone's now locked up 17 grand. Second point, we're one away from the next redraw for the final two tables. Pocket Kings plaguing this table. <laughs> and this this is a hand right and again I'm not sure about this I'm not judging Heinem I don't know the answer okay that if I was in the early stages of a tournament and we were about 20 big blinds effectively we could have opened I'm sailing these in the middle yeah but do you think this late in the tournament it's okay to find a call here with pocket fives we've got 24 bigs, is that right? Something in that region. About, I think less, right? Maybe, yeah, but between the region of actually with the call, maybe about 24, 25 bigs. Yeah, it's definitely fine to jam this kind of hand in for sure. But I suppose maybe feeling like calling in the big blind, you're almost automatically getting the implied odds uh, price. And then, they, uh, you, sorry, you're all running in the direct price and maybe with the implied odds, there's even more. Yes. Sometimes you can tread a bit more carefully. I don't know, I, I kind of on your side on this one. We see it would have been a disaster. Of so course, good for him that he's chosen this more passive route, but. I feel like he has to call again, though, on this yeah. poor texture. And this is the thing as well, right? Like you've sort of underwrapped your hand and it's going to be tough to realise your equity here with pack of fives. I wonder how worried Vatseris would be about the possibility of a four in the range. You would think a lot of the fours are actually the ones that fold in the big blind. Yeah. The four X kind of do get dismissed. So much more likely to be a ten here that you can target. True. We're, we're not too worried about the big blind having you know every hand in the book anymore there's going to be some a lot more off suit hands folded they can't defend as wide your chips are so valuable again as we mentioned yeah icm really ramping up now as we get obviously to its sort of pinnacle with nine ten players left that's when it peaks as we approach that phase it just gets bigger and bigger <laughs> happy to come out here with a second ba yeah, I dropped the tune of about stop three big ones. Yes. Good fold. Come on, play. <laughs> <laughs> well, I could tell you, David Lappin, we've just had a message or had a message earlier from David Lippins, who every time he posts, I think it's you. Uh, just <laughs> catch the Sunday million. Wish me luck. Got in for five dollar fifty. So nice. Well done, David Lippins. Yeah, that is a nice ROI. Five dollars to what I assume was about cash. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, I forgot that it was Sunday. I was Sunday. praying you had Queen. It's a Sunday. <laughs> it is a Sunday. What are you doing here, David? Feels like a Saturday. Feels like a Saturday. I forgot there's guys out there doing their Sunday grind. Thank you for tuning in, by the way. If we are the soundtrack to your Sunday grind, we appreciate it. I think you thought it was a Saturday because of the open bar. <laughs> The soundtrack to your Sunday night, which is mostly the PA system at the Irish Open. <laughs> no, I thought it was a Saturday because I never normally get to play poker on a Sunday. I've already been eliminated. Brother, sorry, you got more than average. I know. What did you get for the ladder for? Quinn then looking down at the measly five-two. This can hurt, right? I 
like obviously he hasn't gone through complete card death here. No, but what's crucial here, and this shows great awareness and professionalism from Aidan Quinlan, is he is going to take a little bit of time here because he's desperate for there to be an elimination on this table or the other table. Yes. You know, and the other table is what he's rooting for with that tank as well because then the redraw, then he doesn't have to pay a big blind and big blind ante. I have to say, I did the same trick with five tables left. It took it almost until the point that the elimination had gone that people realized that that's what I was at. There was a little bit of, uh, you'd have enjoyed this one, James, actually. Someone shouted at me from the other table, oh, you're stalling again. That was the one time I got the clock <laughs> all of me in the entirety of the tournament. But yes, I was being a little bit cynical, I'm not gonna lie. And the guy screamed me from the other table, are you stalling again, Lab? And oh, I see it's not just that one tournament. And I shouted back to him, I said, do you want me to give you a nickname? <laughs> nice use of the raggedy suited hand, the nine do suited, beautifully fitting in. I do quite like this, right? Like when you look at this again in a in a regular chippy V spot, you're gonna see. A lot of your offsuit trash, isoing these sort of hands like eight three off and eight four off. Love it. But in this high ICM situation, it, it is kind of a trash hand, right? Nine deuce is horrendous. But nine deuce suited, can still flop quite well, apply a lot of pressure to what we've seen as a better hand, Jack Ten. Gets the fold. And is eight Quinlan about to get a little reward on that tank as we see the outer table? Is there a hand in progress, James? We have Simon Wilson. Involved in a hand against Georgios Soloftis. They're on the river on the board of King 10 7 3 3. There are a lot of chips in this pot already. Three diamonds on board as well. See a good few red chips in there, David. Yeah, I don't know if there's even a, a pot size bet left in this one. I think there's well less than a pot size bet just from eyeballing it here. Action appears to be on Simon. Simon always so studied. We'll have to find and out what happened there in a moment. Action appears to be off Simon. <laughs> <laughs> well, we will keep track there. Obviously, we are trying to follow the action on three tables simultaneously here. A lot of action going down here in the RDS. Uh, three point. The business end of this main event. One away from the final two tables. Okay. It it went to showdown, check, check, and Soloftus showed a 10, and that was good enough to win the pot. One and a half million in that pot, by the way. Wow. Body blow there for Simon, who, by my calculations, probably back to like 1.1, 1.2 million after Seems that hand. about that, right? It's, it's also crazy when we say, whoa, there's one and a half million in that pot. 10 big points, James. <laughs> <laughs> 10 big points. <laughs> it is incredible to think. Literally, a big blind is... Five starting stacks, five and a third starting stacks. I'm looking forward to when the big blind is seven starting stacks so I can call it an Ian Simpson entry to the Irish Open. <laughs> <laughs> Was he wearing black pants? Was he wearing white pants? <laughs> Ian Simpson. <laughs> 340. Ian, of course, former winner of this tournament all the way back in 2012, and he took an obscene amount of money from the Irish Open community. <laughs> Parlay that into a opportunity to do anything else. <laughs> proposal to his girlfriend, who obviously felt like she couldn't say no. So I feel like it was we all played a part in the <laughs> entrapment there. But anyway, Quinlan, all in and at risk. Oh, Quinlan, Quinlan's called, right? You're going to see a flop. Oh, I'm so sorry. I got, I got carried away. You, get, you got carried away in a tra entrapment, I believe. I was, <laughs> I was, I was entrapped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Gro Groom has raised it to a little over two big blinds here. Quinlan well, defending off about the 10 big blind stack. And he has flopped a little bit of something, something here. Yeah, d these spots I always find so tough, right? Very tough. Because you found a piece, like your, your, pair, your pair outs could be live. We can see he has 40% equity. What do we do facing a sea bay here? We have no diamond in our hand. He decides to throw it away. Aiden very unsure about that one. 
Yeah, he just heard that he thought he made a mistake please. by defending. I don't agree, actually. I think he does need to maybe I think defend that's fine. that hand. I and think that's fine. I don't know whether he's supposed yeah. to go, continue go on that particular texture. It's a tricky one. That is tricky. I think the mistake is not knowing, Aiden. That is your mistake. You can see that's haunting him a bit. He's wearing that on his face. But yeah, the beautiful Emma Simpson, or Emma, as I knew her before she became a Simpson, yes. proposed to Ian got in on bended knee moments after winning the tournament. Wow. And, well, she just couldn't say no, obviously. <laughs> he was suddenly a very wealthy man. And we're going to continue the turbo flight of mini iron shot from the lines. 1,000 and 2,000 for Big Lan and Okay, so we've come back to the outer table to see David Two in action. Simon Wilson, the other player in the hand. David Two felted me. So I'm on Team Wilson there. One four. Picking up action back in the feature table. As we've come to a key hand. Johnston surely. Feeling, Johnston. <laughs> Johnston chip leading this event? Yeah, I think he might be. Quinlan with a shove here, blind on blind. Nine bigs. Queen High going to be ahead of a He's lot of hands. Going to send this one in. May take his time here. Are we on a ladder jump, James? Seventeen left. Is there a jump to sixteen? No, I think uh, I think the ladder was after um, Connor went out. So I think seventeenth probably pays. Sorry, sixteenth probably pays the same, right? Seventeen, okay. sixteen. So no reason to hold chips back here or do anything funky. Ah. Quinlan sends it in, <laughs> and Vatseris with a close one. I think he'll probably <laughs> land on fold. Yeah, I think so. Obviously, you would be delighted to get it in here, 70% favor, but Vatseris peeling the queen, and I think the big sigh for seeing the five of spades in his hand. Just a couple of pips too wide to call off, I think. Now, if only Quinlan knew it was queen five and not king six, <laughs> he'd want the call. 1,485,000. I, I don't particularly, you know, if I got it in queen nine, my opponent had king six. Yeah, you're behind. I can win a 40 percent. I believe this. <laughs> <laughs> Quinlan drawing the crowd into some applause. Felt a little bit like a jet push moment. Days, I'm not going to lie. Please clap. For three days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love this. He's really living at the moment. And that's a big thing about these things, right? Like, w w one thing I was definitely quite focused on last year was living in the moment, taking it in. How often do you very, end up very, very on the final two tables of the Irish Open? Not very often. Wait, All right. They did have Team Ireland versus well, for some England. Maybe well, never. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we're going back to this table. Maybe we'll see, like, I don't know, one bet and then cut away again. I did play with this particular player with the green glasses on day one fight. He did bust, but it seems to be doing much better on another bullet. Hand goes to showdown. Georgios. That looks like a grin of someone who's... We're going to have a little hand funeral. Yeah, ha having a hand funeral. Has to pay it off. If this was a slow roll, this would be <laughs> very sick. I want to push back, James. Y you say we, we cut across and we saw one bed. Well, what we actually got was a full minute close-up of Simon Wilson, and I enjoyed that personally. I'm glad. I'm glad. We got suspense. That's what we got. <laughs> people, love, people love a sweat. <laughs> and I, I think I've pitched this one to, to Joe James, but you know, if you want to coin the phrase, whoever coins the phrase, I don't mind. Okay. Just give me some that. equity <laughs> in it. Sweat opportunities on the turn. The hands on it. No, normally it's not, not too hit. bad. You just not, third time's a charm, no? No, no, I'm still talking about the <laughs> charm. <laughs> we find ourselves in another blind on blind confrontation here. This time, but Sarah's going to just limp in here with the 10 6 suited. Groom clearly will want to play for more chips here with the very sexy looking ace king. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> By the way, uh, the key thing to tell you about that hand is that it's left Simon Wilson super short. Yeah. It has. I think he's still 10 big blinds, right? 
<laughs> yeah, by my eyeballs, I would say eight bigs, and maybe the blinds have gone through him again since, so it could be very back, short. Yes. Simon, so something of a short stack ninja. Yes. I've played against him online very often. He is very good at working his way out of that zone. So let's not give up. Simon's, Simon's an all-in winner. It's my only intimidation. He's very good at that part of the game. You know, he's, uh, <laughs> you've no, even, in, <laughs> even at your young age, you've noticed that there are people who are better at that part yes. of the game than others. Yes. Yeah, I don't know. But well spotted. Me being one of them. <laughs> 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 no, Simon got to be very aware of what to do with those seven, eight big lines. And, of course, getting short, but would be uh, quite could comfortable. Be. Uh, yeah, good chance. One in six. No, uh, speaking of short stacks there, Aidan oh, Quinlan did get that one through with the Queen Nine, but still hovering around the ten blind mark as well. The gentleman on the one is. I guess you don't. Uh, I heard someone say he was an absolute sickle. Yeah. He's six. Two. Four. Yeah, good for uh, a live single? Three fold. <laughs> and how many players until we get this this redraw, James? Sixteen. Play live. More? So it's not Simon. Um, with a very pretty pocket tens here. You know what? Sorry, this isn't a pretty hand. This is a good hand. Yeah, this is a very nice hand. Good hand. Good hand. Yeah, I think he's got to stick it in. I don't think there's any inducing off that stack. We yes. tens. Oh wow! I mean, at this point, Wilson's pretty much committed, right? I think most of his yes. chips went in pre. Yeah, Simon's held back a big blind by the looks of things, and they are going to check it down so far. No real reason for Simon to put chips in here unless he has to. Those remaining few chips could be very valuable for a spin-up. Check to showdown. Wilson showing king-queen, two showing ace-queen. That's going to win the pot. And yeah, Wilson left with 40k. Wow. That's half a small blind. Well, that 40k could be worth a ladder. It could generate a spin-up. There are a few things that can of happen. Of course. I think that's a good decision by Simon, right? Yeah. You can still take down big blind ante as well. Just potentially getting the pay jump here, making the final two tables. And remember, he always can win the ante as well. So any chips back, very valuable for the yes. way they can multiply. Very much in the danger zone, however. And we see that Quinlan did indeed stick it in, but kept 100k back. Exactly. Alice same Simon Wilson, same idea. Hmm. And a dirty diaper, no good for Kirko. Appears to be a bit more successful than Simon in this one. Get the true and we'll take down the blinds. Any raise and take it, a huge pickup now for Quinlan here. He'll be delighted to get a little bit more fold equity on his shoves. Maybe, just maybe, some fold equity on his reshoves now. Yeah. <laughs> And I, thi I think maybe because I play online so much, and I, I particularly, uh, I'm not saying this for, for because I'm on a PokerStars stream here, I particularly play on PokerStars. There's a ton of bounty tournaments, but you certainly have a lot more full equity in a regular MTT with big money up top, right? Like even if it's a seven big blind shove, an eight big blind shove, a ten big blind shove, that is a lot of chips at this stage of the tournaments. I'm lucky I didn't rely on this for um, day two starts. Interesting one here for Vatsera, see just how much he's getting after it here. This would definitely be a couple of pips lower than you would expect, but maybe he'll... No, I feel like he was tempted a little bit. Yeah, I think so, but I think he's also aware that Groom has picked up a bunch of chips. They're quite similar stacks. He has been active in terms of he's pulled four bets, he's found three bets, he's been raising, and certainly will be willing to put him to the test. Oh, and a... Interesting spot here for Heinem here. Mandatory defend, but does he go the aggressive route? We didn't see him do it with the fives. Maybe not likely to do it with the king ten for similar reasons. 
Yeah, of course. It'll be interesting to see what he wants to do here. He does seem like a man eyeing for shove. Yeah. Settles on call. Is dominating his opponent, but out of position without the betting lead. Still plenty of ways for Groom to win this one. Yeah, the, hard, the hardest part about these situations is uh, we can see oh Simon dear. Wilson going away in 17th place. Yeah, got his last 40k in the middle with 9-5. Saloftus had ace king, board run out. 10, 3, 7, deuce, deuce, and that will see Simon Wilson depart in 17th place, cashing for 17,140 euros, and that will take us down to the final 16, and it will necessitate the redraw for the final two tables. Yeah, Simon looking very dejected there. Yeah. There is an Irish expression that comes to mind for me. Chucky our law. Simon's day will come. I have absolutely no doubt about it. Simon's day will come for a really big score. He's already had plenty of those medium-sized results over the last couple of years in a very short career. He's had a few crossbars in these big ones, and I think I think the day will come we're going to see him really, you know, go on. Place in the WSOP online main, a medium score. That was that was a sick one. That was a sick one. That was very sick. You know, he didn't close either. So I just I think his day will come. I think his day will come. Definitely here for the long run. Simon's a phenomenal player. This is just the start of it, as we can see. Kind of unfolding the better hand, but as we mentioned, it's so tough Mike's to realise equity here in these situations, right? Without yep. the betting lead, out of 50, position, 50, 50, folds the better hand. And now that we have a little gap Look behind in you. proceedings, oh, I suppose this would be the time <laughs> when, <laughs> James, you would have a lot of pre- uh, should you draw prepared material uh, which would lead me into talking about my trophy that I won this week. <laughs> I presume that's how we're going to use this interlude. Do we have footage of the karaoke? If we get footage of the karaoke, open, I, I heard you were trying to suppress every single <laughs> version of this video. I've heard that all footage has been requisitioned, <laughs> deleted, burned. My, my, my PR people are doing a catch. <laughs> Catching, what was, was the phrase? Catch and desist? No, it's cease and desist. Cease and desist and uh, catch and kill. They're doing a catch and kill on all the uh, I'll find mobile phones that were pointed at me for a uh, four minute period in the wee hours of last night. Not ideal preparation, I'd say, for no, a day three. I'm going to say it's impressive you played a full day of poker <laughs> yesterday, then <laughs> took part in a karaoke competition till I believe 3 30 in the morning, then lost an hour. So effectively went to bed at 4.30 in the morning and we're back playing day three today. Listen, when you look at David Lappin, all you can think is... Specimen. This is peak male performance. <laughs> okay? He fuels his body with nothing but water and key nutrients. Okay? That would be gin and tonic. Gin and tonic, definitely. Yeah. Which I believe have all the main food groups in there. Uh, there's, there's certainly some nutrients in there. They said you're going to win it. So it's already been a long day and there's still more poker to be played. We've just got to get the redraw done, get the players to their new seating assignments and obviously get one of the two tables up onto the main stage to be our feature table for the concluding session of day three of the Irish Open main event. We have played most of this level. We've got one more level to play afterwards. And then players will bag and tag and come back for the final day when we will play down to a winner. So short break for the redraw, and then we'll be back with more from the Irish Open main event here in Dublin. Nine players remain. Nice. Like 
stop giving Benny Glass a hand, honestly. It's unfair on everyone else. Oh, yeah. He's good at the pokers. And once he's got monsters like that, everyone else is screwed. CF Dominic Nietzsche, who's picked up tens. And Dominic has elected to three bet with the tens, makes it 160,000 total, been folded back around to Benny. And these are two of the biggest stacks, Nick, so I'm not sure they play for this all pre. Yeah, I think if I'm Benny, I, I'm looking to put in a, a four bet here at the stack depth. So three bet was to 160. I want to make this about 400k from Benny. Getting good hands. Not many, Benny. How much is it going to be? A fistful of whites. How much? A four bet to 400,000. How does Dominic Nietzsche respond to this? I can't believe Benny stole my bet size. Unbelievable. Pushka says, easy fold. Are you influenced at all by the fact you can see Benny Glaser has kings when you make that statement? If we could see that Benny was getting out of line with Jack-8 offsuit, would you still be making the same analysis? Oh. The call, this pot is huge, James. 860K in the middle. Smirk from Benny. Ace, ace, nine. It's always an ace on the desk, James. But fact, two of them. Two of them this time. <laughs> SPR is about 1.5. They're about. Size is down to 125,000. This is literally textbook stuff here, people. With these SPRs, this is exactly the situation you want to find yourself in and the exact sizings that you want to make. The pot is already so inflated, you don't need to conform to regular bet sizing at this point in the hand. Small bets are just as effective. It does get the tens to continue. Turn card is the three of diamonds. Benny is a 97% favorite here. One point one million in the middle, and Dominic Nietzsche, the effective stack, has roughly popped behind. Yeah, Dan O'Crisp makes a good point. River 10s have been happening a lot today. River 10s do trigger me, I'm afraid. Man, this is such an interesting situation we got brewing. Checks. 
Benny's got to be happy to see that, James. He's got to be happy to see a turn check there. And no 10 on the river. Huzzah! find a little blocker bet here. A little bit of a small value bet slash blocker bet. Really love to hear Benny's perspective on this one because it's such an interesting setup we have here. It doesn't come up very frequently. Which is the green between mm. so two chunks of white. <laughs> How much did you say? 340. I mean, if this gets paid off, he just looks like the biggest genius on the planet. I think it's just a really nice spot to have a bet because you do get called by worse. And you do force the ace to expose himself at this point. Also, if he has, even if he has a hand like ace queen, he might still flat this river for fear of being out kicked. Given the action pre flop. Can Dominic Nietzsche find a fold here? Does he pay off this 340k value bet on the river from Benny Glazer? Glazer. Glazer. I think about six players have been eliminated while Dominic's been thinking about this. <laughs> if he just shoves. Makes the fold. Lays it down, but Benny still wins. A huge pot to move up to 2.3 million. Huh? Got some orange hats. Orange, nice. Oh, that's good. I Red hats. Thank you. Take the piss out of me, you want to put 80 grand in the bank. And we're back.
Welcome back to the RDS in Dublin and the Irish Open 2024 presented by PokerStars and Paddy Power Poker. Day three continues. About an hour of poker left to play. We have reached the final two tables. We've just had the redraw to 16. About to get cards in the air once again. James Hartigan still alongside Tom Murphy. And we have lost a lap in, but gained an Okani. 47th place finisher in this year's Irish Open main event. Dara Okani, welcome. Thank you very much. Um, I'm obviously delighted to be here. I'd still prefer to be in the tournament, but this is a very good uh, consolation prize. Uh, when we interviewed you earlier this week, when we had the chat with you and David on the Poker in the Years podcast, you said that you kind of told a tale of how the Irish Open for you has been a lot of missed opportunities and a lot of uh, like uh, early bust outs. Is this your deepest ever run? Is this your best result in the tournament? Yeah, this is by far my deepest ever run. My, my deepest run before was memorable but boring in the sense that the first hand after the bubble, I bust in a standard flip to Andy Black. That's why I can remember it. Um, so it was literally the minutes of Mincashes. Uh, this was my first day at three. Um, and yeah, uh, very happy at least to get sorted near the business end. Fantastic. Well, this is our new feature table. Can you believe, Dara, that Porrick Parkinson is still in with 16 players remaining? Yeah, I was talking to Porik just before the break, um, and he was obviously very happy. There's been a huge uh, grand spell of support for him, elder statesman of Irish poker. Um, and it has to be said, like, from the Irish perspective, there's not a lot of recognizable names yet but left, but Porik's is, you know, as big as it gets. Also at the feature table, I'll do the players in seat order. We've got Konstantinos Vatseris, Robert Shanley, Stephen Groom, Van Nien is back. <laughs> Georgios Siloftis, <laughs> Oliver Boyce, and Adrian Thorne. Plenty of big stacks, plenty of players around eight or seven million. Granted, the big blind is now 200,000, so stacks are getting shallower. We have rolled into the final level of the night. 100K, 200K are the blinds. Yeah, I think, I think the widget has pretty much hit the nail on the head, right? 16 players left, an hour left to play. Stacks looking an awful lot shallower. What was the prediction of the widget? The prediction was 12.9 players. Now, I said you can't have 0.9 of a player. Me and David went back and forth and said maybe some of a player. But I reckon we'll finish in the ballpark of around 13. Yeah, that seems reasonable. Ace Queen off suit from Georges. And I guess if we have a similar length day tomorrow, if we try. We aim for 10 levels, should be able to get it done. Should be able to get down from 13 so. to yeah. 1 inside of 10 levels. Yeah, no, I think they've done a very good job. Last year, they, they came back with more than that. And they had had a, a marathon second last day. Yeah. Um, I know that because uh, one of the people still involved with that stage, Kevin O'Donnell, sent me out to his car to get opi opioids because his back was completely seized up oh. after the long day. Um, but this time, I think they've uh, timed it much better. So the Queen 9 has pulled ahead here. It's domination rotation in favor of Groom. It's not a board the Ace-Queen's going to love anyway, so he shouldn't really be wanting to put too much chips in. You think it's tough for him to, you know, claim a story that he has a huge advantage on this board from such early position? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he obviously has the over pairs, but, but he also has just a lot of unpaired over cards. Um, yeah, and just, just a credit to the new structure this year, obviously doing a great job with an additional 730 runners yeah. and still to be down to hitting the nail on the head 16 players left an hour left to play and yeah. I think everyone would agree not a huge change in playability right still plenty of play in the tournament you yeah. don't ever feel like you have to rush and get your chips in it's super turbo -y. So yeah, it was certainly faster on day one, but I think that was kind of welcome, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. definitely. A, lo I, a lot I of people. I, I mean, yeah. I, I wasn't playing this year, but yeah. I preferred it. Yeah. I actually thought that, you know, the double levels and I would even say, and again, this might be unpopular. I think you could probably bin off 100, 100. I think you could yeah. start at 100, 200. I think so. I, I agree. Mm -hmm. I find it so <laughs> joyless when you win a, win a massive pot on the 100 level. You're going, oh. <laughs> 20 big blinds. This is a very insignificant amount of chips. I added 6% <laughs> to my stack. Yeah. Groom feels his hand is good enough to go for value here. Yeah, and he's 
Scott, how are you? The ace high call. And he's got the face of a man who was dominating pre-flop, but not by the river. A brief, brief hand funeral. Sarah. Hand funeral, yeah. And listen, I'm, I'm okay with that. You want to have a hand funeral, that's fine. If yeah. it's brief, do it as much as you like. But people, when you're a short stack, the blinds are about to go up, you're about to be in the big point, you're tapping their hand. I can't believe I missed. I can't believe they take 15 seconds. Just put the hand in. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, Stephen Groom now, chip leader with 10 million on the table. Uh, Porig is down towards the bottom. Ollie is mid pack. Uh, I have a soft spot for Ollie. Ollie actually gave me a lift home last night, um, and we were chatting about the old days. Ollie used to play. <laughs> pretty much full time um, I and I hadn't right. seen him in years this he told me he came back playing in after in the Calgary. pandemic yeah I know right before you enter a tournament right yeah so meanwhile we've got Robert Shanley clinging on with just three big blinds one thing I will say it's great to see so many Irish flags on the feature table that's crazy very decent it? chance of seeing an Irish champion here this year yeah keeping the trophy on Irish soil when you put it like that I guess it is you just got attacked 3.5,000. Jesus. I was kidding when I said it was the worst thing that's ever happened to me, but it must be close now if it's 3.5k. I can imagine he's going to open the King Jack here. He's a man who's not afraid to put chips into the pot. Yeah, Nian proven to be very aggressive so far. Certainly putting players to the test. And a lot of rubbish hands behind getting tossed. Round to the button, and now the blinds. Can I? Uh, Sorry, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Steven. Six five off. off. And Porig. And he gets, gets up the it paper. done. You think Poydrick can maybe find some defense with King Seven off suit, or again, as we mentioned, some of that ICM talk cut off those yeah. feathering ends. Yeah, of that's range. the that's the part of the range that does really bad under ICM, the sort of high card, low card hands. Um, I think I, I think it's uh, best to just fold there and stay out of trouble. You're just going to be dominated so often. Just taking a look at the lineup at the other table, the other <laughs> eight players. We've made the final 16 from a starting field of 3,233. Yeah, I see oh, okay. Lithuanian-based Irishman and Victor there. He's known as, to me as Victor. Uh, we've gone for coffee a few times. He's had a very interesting life. He's former uh, Soviet Special Forces in oh, Afghanistan. He's a, he's a hard man. He's not a man you would pick a fight with. Jeez, I bet he's got some stories. Not yeah. one to be reckoned with on the felt or off the no, felt. No, no, he's uh, <laughs> formidable. Shanley giving his hand a shuffle and is going to be delighted with the sight of the ace and the ace. Not many hands get better than that, there. I love the fact no. that he gives a big sigh <laughs> yeah, before he uh, contemplates. Perfect. What will I do with my aces? Oh my god, I have three big blinds. I need to remember <laughs> my three big blind charts. I think a limp looks good here. <laughs> that one looks suspicious at all. Send him in the middle. Frankly, the Mr. <laughs> Shanley, my chips are all in. The shrug, the Give shrug all in. <laughs> Seven. <laughs> Four extended. Your eyes really must be bad. <laughs> and Ian kind of get an insane price here, right? With yeah, the big he's Nancy, the big find already out there. Call almost anything reasonable here. I reckon so, right? Like yeah. Unless he picks two to, off two to one. seven deuce off. You know, yeah, even. yeah. He's got uh, king four, king yeah. Four this feels more than reasonable. Yeah, this is reasonable. He says, would you believe it? <laughs> <laughs> and then you act. <laughs> the whole, the whole Much to the amusement of the rest of the table. Listen, get, get the bad beats out of the way, just for three big blinds, cruise the rest of the tournament, yeah. and take home four. There's some table talk about the Hollywood there. I guess some people picked up on the side as well. 
I, I'm not. I, don't, I agree with you there, Raz. <laughs> what the guy's bombing. I mean, he's from Enfield. Come on. So it couldn't be in a rush. <laughs> I am feel good. This. Oh, oh, almost a sweat. See, don't laugh. I'm not laughing at all. <laughs> I can trust me, I'm not. <laughs> Spades. He's doing the stand up now. That's, that's, uh, With some extra equity. Uh, yeah. Spades, no factor here, as we can see Shanley with the ace of spades. <laughs> yeah. And the ace of clubs covering the king. Pretty dead free. <laughs> yeah, so I still 17% now. Uh, oh, he's, uh, he's squeezing in uh, all the equity. He can. Absolutely. <laughs> now he's, uh, he's halfway out the door now. <laughs> Getting into his car. You leave the room, you're guaranteed ace is going to hold. Red deuce. He's asking for a red deuce. That's near as enough. close as it gets. Red two, red two. Don't worry, but he can see. <laughs> okay, pair of board. Two pair cards board. and two cards alone. Pair of board. First time again. I love the I love the Irish accent. Like, no, I can't even look. Look at this. Two more big. <laughs> they know I have. There you go. Good. <laughs> oh, Jumps uh, are good. At. This does remind me of a hand. I think you remember this character from last year, James. He is the brother of a famous football coach. Is Laurie Sanchez's brother? Yes, yes. of course. Right. And he had a hand against Michel Molnar. His, his exit hand from the tournament, Michel Molnar has two pair. And he has the nuts straight. And he takes, tank, Michel Muller goes all in, he tanks for a while. I think I have the nuts, he calls. And while he calls with the nuts and covers Michel Muller, he's not at risk, he stands up and says, I can't look, and walks away. <laughs> I thought that was brilliant. We all have our superstitions. If, it, if, it, if, if this team have no kind of stack, you must be very patient, so he deserve it. Uh, uh. Yeah, and Ian aware of the price he was getting. King yeah. High more than good enough. So while I'm here, I, d I ran into somebody who was apparently one of your featured players yesterday, Derry Hanley, and you guys were talking so, so and debating okay. whether his cap was NASA or USA. Uh, he told me to confirm that it's NASA. It's 100% NASA. And he, NASA. And he, got, he got it from his daughter. Yes. No, I, 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 was emphatic that it was NASA. There was so only one. Right. There was only one defiant <laughs> voice in the booth, and I was basically <laughs> looking at them and going, "You're wrong." <laughs> Who was the defiant voice? James? Probably Griffin. <laughs> if someone's being a bozo, it's probably Griffin. But yeah, I mean, it was very clearly the NASA logo. It's a logo I know very well. We then got distracted by the fact he looked like Uncle Albert by only, in Only Fools and Horses. So we moved on from the whole, is it USA <laughs> or NASA? Parkinson. Seven deuce. <laughs> Looking seven like one. he's considering his options with seven deuce, but just hasn't peeled his cards. <laughs> and the not so much better ten deuce in the small blind. Yeah. I think we actually have seen a raise from early position yeah, there here must with be King Queen. There's been an open, yeah. Right. Havoc's just struggling for a moment to catch up. Yep. Yeah, so it, it appears plus one has raised King Queen. And we're getting a defend from the big blind with seven three. Plus. Yes, Adrian Thorne has opened King Queen. Well, actually, we're going to go over to the other table because it's an all-in, and it's Kim Okurko who's run nines into, guess what, and pocket <laughs> jacks. And that is a hold for jacks. And David, too, has eliminated Kim Okurko, who is out in 16th place. Okurko cashes for 17,140 euros. And for two, he now has around 14 million chips. And that means he is the current chip leader with 15 remaining. I believe he's one of the few remaining pros in the field as well. So um, it's more, looking more and more likely we're going to get a recreational winner this year. You mentioned this earlier, James. Jack's the hand of the hour, the hand of the last two hours. I don't want to hear anyone complain about Jack's. It was my bust out. 
Well, and here, there we got our first one already. <laughs> Good job, Dara. Okay, sky score. Get the bad beats in. Sky score's gone. Oh, that's Europe, looks very relaxed the there. Well. Very composed. He's obviously been here before many times. I'd also probably border along the side of saying, maybe tired. <laughs> quite long day three. Yeah, yeah. Ollie admitted to me last night that he was tired and that he just wasn't used to playing long days anymore. Yeah. But I think at this stage, the adrenaline will be kicking in. Sarah's picking up a grey hand here, plus one. Pocket Queens. Jeezy. Playing about 35, 37 big ones. Uh, question from the stream chat. Dara, any conditions for increasing the buy-in? I, I kind of feel that they probably got it just about right because, uh, you know, with the re-entry, some people are treating it as a 4K, 5K, willing to fire four, five bullets. But a lot of people, you know, 1K is kind of affordable as well. I, I don't 100% agree, right? Like, if, if the price changes to 2K, 2.5K, a 3K buy-in, it's suddenly not that affordable. It's yeah. forcing probably a lot of players to try and satellite in. Yeah, and, and it has a knock-on effect on the satellites as well. I mean, the, yeah. the satellites have been typically 100 euro online satellites uh, which is again a very affordable for a lot of people if you go up to a two or a 3k then the satellites probably have to move to two or three hundred as well yeah, i agree, I agree. shanley with a painful fold there with the ace eight suited but i believe it's a correct one such an early position open yeah yeah you don't want to be doing too much flatting at this stage icm is really ratcheting up as we get towards the final table yep but Saris, who has been quite active, opening hand, praying for some action with this hand. Yeah. Obviously just going to take it down. Disappointed to see that. Well, he's folding the 10-5 suited. That might be just about defensible as a defend. Uh, generally, the suited stuff it does OK, even under ICM conditions. <coughs> Buzz and the atmosphere in the room really livening up here. Yeah. Any idea how many like uh, chips in? <laughs> you the think that's so like nice to credit to the, to the open bar and Six million. I think well, the, that's that, that's yeah, definitely yeah. helping. Yeah, people are wandering in from the open bar. And plus, plus or minus one. It's probably probably some credit to Lappin <laughs> who announced on the stream that there is an open bar. Yeah. So we're probably getting floods and floods of people coming in now. Yeah. Six. Some players forming on the rail. Yeah. Yeah. I remember back in 2015 when they had an EPT at this venue and, and a UK IPT as well for the players party uh, it was in the bar across the road and Dave Curtis of Stars gave the bar a certain amount of money uh, which he thought would cover the entire night and uh, after 20 <laughs> minutes they were coming back looking for more <laughs> I did mention that to someone earlier I believe it was David Doherty and I said uh could have been someone else. And I said, do you know how long the open bar is for? He said, well, you know, stars are usually quite generous with this thing, but I think they've, uh, they haven't uh, actually, they've underestimated the, the drinking of the Irish here. Yeah. And it could be over quite quickly. <laughs> four, 25? Yeah. So Groom, obviously, with his stack, gets to open very wide, opening the nice suited queen. Um, Pretty yep. enough spot for Nin. This is not really the kind of hand you want to flat against an early position open. It's a good three bet hand because it blocks uh, it blocks a lot of the really strong hands in the range. But if you get if you get four bet, you can just release very quickly. Yeah, I'd agree. Uh, Groom navigating not a short stack, but about a four or five million stack, and has found some opportunities to add chips to that stack. Yeah. On the last level. So we do now get a three. Around. We do get a three bet. Ali has a spot here with the fives, but I think he's not going to like it yet. Yeah, such an, such an early position open and the true bet. Yeah, yeah. The five's probably not doing too well. And the S5 has no real decision either. And the Queen 9 quickly releases. No Hollywooding there. Love to see it. So obviously, Darrett, now I've quizzed David with some of these questions. It's, it's actually because I know all the answers. I'm more so checking a few. <laughs> 
because I'm not 100% sure, right? In ICM, obviously earlier in the tournaments, we can open Queen 9 suited if we're facing a tree bat from maybe such similar positions. We can call the Queen 9 suited here, King 9 suited. How different does that change in ICM? Are we happy to call Queen 9 suited no. here? What hands do we want to call? No, we're not. Uh, su suited aces generally are fine and pairs are fine. Um, but stuff like Queen 9 suited really goes down in value because it's, it's just dominated. The three bet, because the players behind us are three betting more, um, so they're going to three bet stuff like King Queen, Ace Queen, all of that stuff. A hand like Queen 9 just really shrivels up in value. In general, the players should be three betting us a lot tighter as well. And he's all in again. And this is a perfectly <laughs> fine all in for a short stack. Suited a good suited King in early position. Yeah, yeah about well. nine big blinds. It's not as not as good as the aces, but King Ten suited. Uh, I tell you what, if, it, if he if he doubles up again, count. I'm calling it. I'm calling the champion right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be that amazing spin up story, that amazing right comeback. Yeah, yeah, voice with a, a very callable rush, hand here, rush, rush, trying to find rush. out exactly how many chips Shanley has. Oh, this is definitely a call, ah. yeah. Yeah. Really? Although the all-ins for 1.85. Okay, so that's... Yeah, so the big blind is 200 now. Okay, so that's only nine big blinds. Yeah, yeah, yeah you, big blinds. You, you have to call this jack here. Huh? Yeah, Ollie's going to put the chips in. I love protection. Cool. Bit, bit yeah. of speech play from Shanley here. Ollie Can't hasn't put the chips in yet. Wow. Kind of mentioning he, he wants some protection, right? I love protection, he says. Hoping that boys reshoves here and maybe he can have two live cards. Yeah. I mean, that said, King Ten suited does pretty well oh. multi way as well. Okay, so he has verbally announced yeah. call. Nothing for Thorn in the small blind. No. And do you think call is the best option here, Daryl, rather than reshove? Yeah, I think so. I, I think, think so. so. Uh, no, no he at least gives himself the option <laughs> to, uh, to fold <laughs> if somebody behind wakes up with a hand. Damn, you're definitely ahead, I can guarantee it. I'm getting flashbacks too. This this was the hand that damaged me. Is Jack against King Ten as well? The, I feel like the universe is trolling me now. He's with the two big hands, Jackson. Now James, I don't know about you. Ten height. This is the second bad beat. Dark. It's not a bad beat. I mean, it's 59-41. So yeah, this doesn't really qualify as a bad beat. Live cards are live cards. Live cards are live cards. You can say this to my brother. What? Record this and just play yeah. it back to him. Oh, there's the turn. Oh, oh there's two of them. <laughs> a roar from Shanley. A 99% favorite oh, to take down his hand. Sick one for Ollie. I feel for Ollie, having been on the receiving end of this earlier. Ollie is just sitting there trying to look composed, but this is cruel. Uh, Shanley is suddenly going to have a stack. I'm telling you. He's going to take it to victory. Oh, uh, just a full house. Just, just a house, yeah. No, no, there's some straight outs. Oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> yeah. King, King yeah. Ten, ten. yeah, that's a place. No, that's trust me, he's going to make the straight <laughs> just for the needle. No. That would be the ultimate needle, yeah, Queen like of the River. <laughs> yeah, Boyce obviously not happy to lose this part, but a, a, a bit of an almost empathetic grin on his face. Happy to see someone show this much emotion, double up this deep in the tournament, but would obviously really love to win that part. <laughs> I think that's how I he think, feels. I think that's how he actually feels. Yeah. <laughs> what am I, I talking I'm pretty about? sure that was my fist, yeah. too. Now, we have this observation from Amoeba UK. We were talking about this yesterday as well, that uh, Konstantinos Matsaris looks like Andy Garcia, specifically Andy Garcia in Ocean's Eleven. The sunglasses help. When he doesn't have the sunglasses on, he doesn't look like Andy Garcia. James. Fuck, as soon as it comes, it goes away again. Sorry? Who was Andy Garcia? He's an actor, Tom. I mean, Th Thomas is about 14, so you have to be very careful with your You see, I, I, I don't buy the whole kind of, oh, that happened before I was born stuff. It's like, yeah. you know. And, uh, yeah, see George McKeever there on the rail uh, beside Bobby Willis, two other uh, elder statesmen of Irish poker. They're definitely here on the Pori Rail. Yeah, loving the addition of the rail. I've said this multiple times. Yeah, yeah it is great. It's a great idea. It, it's, 
Makes it similar to the WSOP. Of course, here we can see the huge benefit benefit of it this deep in the tournament, right? Yeah. Again, this is before you were born, Tom, but back in 1999, <laughs> I believe, there were three Irish men on the WSOP final table, and one of them actually won, uh, Noel Furlong. But uh, the other two were George McKeever and Paulie Parkinson. Oh, okay. So this is, this is a baby final table for uh, Republic. Yeah, this isn't even the biggest occasion. He also won the first ever UK IPT, uh, which was in Galway. And was there also a moneymaker-esque boom back then? Uh, not really, to be honest. Like poker's always been big in Ireland. Uh, even pre-moneymaker, you know, the Irish Open was a, was a major tournament. Um, I think the European boom started more with sort of the late-night TV poker programs. Uh, which preceded Moneymaker. So Oli is sitting there just trying to compose himself. Now, it's not a bad time to get no difficult hands. You can just fold. Yeah, cool down a just bit. Just let your head clear, yeah. You walk Tuesday as well, yeah? I want you there as well. Doesn't matter why I don't want to walk you there. Jesus, has everybody heard yeah, so we, yeah, we don't know what the hijack has raised here, but he has no. raised. Shanley has the ace four. Just let it go. Yeah, it's going to be raised and take it for Salofta. So at one point was up to like 11, 12 million. Yeah, very nice. yeah you could certainly consider reshoving the ace four there if Salofta has been very active. Um, what position? Even during the day, because I, I go what through position the tunnel. Hijack. Hijack. 45 kilometers? So, yeah, I'd say 40 minutes, 45 minutes. Not that bad. Listen, I think, I think he's used up all his luck for, for the night, so he's happy to just make day four. Yeah, you often get that with players when they get that sort of spin, and then they just kind of chill for a while. Smashes the raise in the middle. Yeah, Jack Town suited is a nice hand to open here. He's a little bit shallow uh, under 20 bigs, but he's been so inactive, uh, he's definitely going to get more folds than a lot of players would. Of course. So, no matter what, this is going to be a little bit into the age old stereotype. Yeah. What's up? Yeah. Again, Shanley, yeah, against on the early uh, position, online? against an early position party open, nope. he's not going to like his five, so yeah. that's going to be folded fairly quickly. Oh, yeah, standard, easy call here. Now, Jack uh, could be trouble for Porik. Yeah, th this could be quite difficult. Yeah, yeah, Groom clearly knows his range is, uh, he's making very quick decisions pre flop so you're grinding a lot online. So also. Queen High still ahead. Yeah. Normally, you just want to try the small bet here, in, and you yeah. will get hands like Queen High to fold. Yeah. How many play a little bit online using... Uh, I was going to say, but this, this is kind of playing into, I guess, Patrick's image, right? right. Yeah. Uh, Gru maybe perceives him as a bit tighter. He's lamping chips into the middle. Doesn't want to really stick around and find out. No. A nine deuce deuce flop, beautiful for Padre to see bet on. Yeah, it's, it's extremely unlike. There, there are really not many deuces that are going to defend. Of course. Um, and then not, not too, much, too much nine X either. So Groom probably yeah, felt I once he missed the flop, he could just release. I think you, you have a name for that in stars, I right? A baseball well, card flop like or something? Baseball cards, yeah. Two, yeah, three, same. Three, Might as well be baseball well. cards. It's extremely unlikely to have hit either player. So whoever was ahead pre flop. Is likely still ahead. Drazzled wants to know, Dar, if you're going to be playing the seniors event tomorrow. I believe I will be, yeah, um, because there's nothing else to play before four o'clock, and the senior starts at twelve. So uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to the seniors. I have to say, I do enjoy seniors. When I started playing them, I really didn't enjoy them. In fact, I would go further just and say I absolutely detested them. Uh, <laughs> but I've grown into them now. There's um, a Quite lot. Literally. Sorry? Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm almost a super senior now, too. So. I was about to say, you mentioned something about super seniors here, James. Yeah, that's that's the next level. Uh, yeah. Three and a half. 
It's kind of like BA status, you level up. I was about to say, you're leveling up there, you're not getting up. Yeah, I remember the first year they brought in the super seniors in the WSFP and all the seniors were complaining, saying that it was taking all the value out of the seniors. <laughs> even old guys pick on, on even older guys. Does that ever happen? You're in the seniors events and he goes, oh, the old man always has it. These are all old. Yeah. The first time you play the seniors, you get referred to as kid. But uh, Actually, that reminds me of Porig's story. Uh, the second year I was in Vegas, I think Porig was playing the seniors and I ran into him <laughs> and in the Gold Coast, yeah, and I said to him, how's the seniors? He said, oh, I'm still in, and I said, how many left? And he said, 728, and I said, has the bubble burst? And he said, no, no, 700 paid, but the bubble might go overnight. I'll find a game for little people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, the flex, the literal flex. Sorry. <laughs> I think you hit a nerve. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> boys pointed it out there. I think, think he's hit a nerve, a bit of a chip in the shoulder there. What do you yeah. mean, I'm little? <laughs> Some very familiar face on the on the rail there. Annette Carroll standing be beside Bobby Willis now. I think this has been maybe the most enjoyable Irish Open I've been at in terms of atmosphere. Um, maybe I'm a little bit clouded by the fact that it's the first one I've had a really deep run in, but I genuinely feel in terms of the atmosphere and just the layout of the room and the way it's been handled, um, it's been excellent. Yeah, it's obviously tough for me to compare this to many Irish Opens, right? Yeah. I have to agree. This well, you've bricked everything, so you've, you've <laughs> pr you're probably more objective. Excuse judge. me, <laughs> I have a stack in the mini way. Yeah. So. That resumes tomorrow, right? That resumes tomorrow. Not all of us can win 14K We're in the Mystery Bounty, Dara. In five hours, yeah. In five hours. That, <laughs> it's that it's a great hour, really. That's a ridiculous tournament. It's basically like a live Sunday million. Somebody said there's going to be 1.2 million in the prize pool or something. Which? The, the uh, mini main. Mini main, yeah. I, I, I'm actually very interested to see what prize pool is announced tomorrow. There must easily be something like six, seven K thousand winners. Yeah. That's what I've heard. I I've heard every flight's got at least a thousand runners. So, so each opening flight played into the money, right? Yeah, Correct. they played down to fifteen percent. Right, which was a min cash of five hundred, and then Passed. They played down to eight percent bagged, which go into day two. Which I, I believe a lot of your EPT stops, Eureka events do something similar, right? Well, WSP certainly does. WSP plays well past the money typically in, in the smaller buy-in stuff. Um, for example, the Mystery Bounty, the WSOP, uh, the, the Mystery Bounties don't kick in until well, day two. Um, the money, 15% of the field are paid, but generally only about 4% of the field make day two, uh, which makes for, for big Mystery well, Bounties then. Yeah, um, which is why they're able to play the, the one million. Um, and a lot of the other smaller events, you know, you, you play well past the money, down to about 5% or so. And and then in the multi-flight ones, that allows you to you know catch the same tournament several times. I, I have noticed that right. I've yeah. thought, oh, I can play again and try cash again, which I do believe some people have done here at this festival. Yeah, Connell, uh, our friend Connell Prendergast, uh, he cashed one, and, and at the moment he's in another flight, trying to do the same. Boys, Alex, the throw away. I believe what you call the hockey sticks. Under the gun. Yeah. Pocket eights here. I know. Oh well, great fold. He, he gets away from snowman. But uh, I know we're cutting away some pairs from such an early position. Yeah. But how, they, how far do you think we're going down? Sevens surely want to get involved, right? Sevens want to get involved. Maybe even sixes. Yeah. It's the lower stuff that you want to stay away from. I mean, to be honest, all the pairs play kind of similar because you're going to you're going to peel the three bet and try and flop a set. But it, but the problem is if you open all of the pairs, then it's just too much of your range. Porik, queen four suited, can't imagine he's going to get involved here. Yeah. yeah Porik is sticking very much to the script here of not getting too out of line. Every so often, that allows him to get away with you know opening jack ten under the gun. Yeah, I'd agree. So far, nothing too out of line. Ian taking a couple seconds to contemplate what he's going to do here. And 
imagine, nine trees suited. Just want to throw it away, and an even worse hand in the big blind. Take it down, sir. <coughs> I said this. I said this earlier today, James. I don't, I don't know. You do you do a lot of commentary. You get to see yeah. what the average poker player looks like. I feel like years ago, there it was very much in caps, glasses, hoodies, the Vogel sang look, right? And there was I a feel face. Like, yeah. Then I feel like it went, and now I feel like it's returned again. What do you think? Do you think I you've seen more people wear glasses, hoodies? Um, <laughs> lots of spots. All the paint on it. <laughs> I think it's been a consistent number, to be honest with you. Really? Yeah. Maybe I'm just noticing it more. I think it just depends. Sometimes you get a table, with a feature table or a final table, where there's a higher number of people of with course, that yeah. look. But there's and then always it looks like it, right? <coughs> yeah. yeah. Couldn't imagine Podrick wants to throw away this one. King Queen, no, you definitely want to open this. It's kind of hand you're pretty happy if you just get the blinds, to be honest, or if the big blind defends, but uh, it certainly has to be opened. Shows out the open. <coughs> Playing just over 20 bigs. He's gone for 2.375. No, no, after. Um, we'll, ha we'll have to have a Guinness before we go home. I don't think home's possible, no? How do you do, yeah, how yeah. Do, you do maths away? <laughs> We, we noticed uh, Simon Wilson, who's no longer with us in the oh. tournament. Oh, no. I yeah, didn't realize he'd bust. He bust for in 17th place oh. for the final two-table redraw. We noticed when we went to the outer table, he had a calculator up on his phone for the 160k blind <laughs> And I, I'm the exact <laughs> that's, same. That's so Simon. And James that's agrees. So no I one agree. can do their yeah. 160k timetables, right? And they have agreed that if I'm ever on the feature table again, they will let me bring... A Casio calculator. Yeah. You just can't have your phone. You but can't have your phone. That's the issue, isn't it? No, but that's but the, guess what? Calculators used to be separate devices. Yes. The so old Texas Instruments. Exactly. Or, or, or I said, or Casio, or yeah. Philips, I believe, used to make calculators as well. So. Yeah, Corey gets that one true again. Again, like he's. That's the advantage of his image. He's just going to get more steals. And we did notice a story like this last year too, right? We noticed. Doherty makes some adjustments. I can hear them. When I'm not, he I might maybe perceived Rice mad. to be a bit tighter, not getting <laughs> too out of line. Yeah. yeah. Rice raising from middle position, Doherty not defending some of those ace four <laughs> offsuits, etc. Making those adjustments for who he perceived to be tighter, right? And that seems to be the same case for Giorgio in the big blind who folds the ace three off. Yeah. That's a good idea. The Lonely House. You need to wear the Marty McFly watch, the Casio calculator watch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking when you said yeah. that. Yeah, the Casio yeah. calculator watch. I'll have to invest. I think it's a whole 16 pounds. Do you guys know if Connor Bursford is still in? Connor, Connor Bursford is, is gone. Oh, wow. Interesting. I, I had a. Well, Lappin particularly had a very strong pr prediction that Connor would take it. Yeah, Lappin predicted as early as yesterday. Today, when I saw Connor in with a roughly average stack with 25 people left, I said I figured he wins the tournament about 20% of the time from here, which is obviously way more than he than, than he would if he was average. But I, you know, Connor is an absolute feast. I, I was about to say way more than any average human, but Connor yeah. is no average human. Yeah, I, ha I had a quick meeting with one of my students who's still in. Uh, I'm not going to out and say wh who he is, and I told him that in my to my mind the only two absolute beasts left in the field were Connor and um, <laughs> Connor and uh, Simon. Um, so it's wide open now. Yeah, definitely. It's anyone's game here. Um, yeah. yeah, people at home might not know Simon. He's come very recently on the scene. I, I met him first at the Unibet Open just after the pandemic. At that stage, he was already one of the biggest winning regs in Unibet uh, under the name Linus Lomu. Since then, he's gone on to great things online. He final tabled that big WSP online that Garaf Ganger won. Um, and he's an absolute beast. So we've got cut off here against Big Blind. 
Interesting board because the Ace-9 has lots of different small amounts of equity. The Ace-high is going to be good a lot of the time. He's got a gut shot. He's got a backdoor flush draw. Whether he actually wants to bet his hand or not, because he has all those little amounts of equity, he definitely doesn't want to get check raised. So the, uh, I actually ran into, and this wasn't a, a, as high an ICM situation as this, in the mystery bounty earlier, where this exact board came out. Yeah. Uh, a little bit different, I think it was like five, three, six, and I had ace four. Because I did decide to check check. Yeah, yeah. Recognizing that. It, it possibly favors the big blind more. We still have a really strong hand. A yeah. side is going to be good a bunch. Yeah, the thing is, when you have, have a a, when you when you when you have kind of weak draws and weak, huh? uh, weak but not in, inconsequential I showdown. That's why I bet. Like <laughs> neither of those two hand classes really want to bet. So when you have both of them, that just that <laughs> also <laughs> means you don't really want to bet. Huh? But in this case, he did bet, and obviously the king ate full. No. I think no, sir. Oh, sorry. You have out. <laughs> Six high. I have back door as spade as well, so got the bad. Not a super chatty table so far. No, it's. I mean, it's serious now. They're playing for serious amounts of money, of course, and, right. and they're so near to the final table. This is a stage of the tournament where everybody is really thinking, I could make this final table now. Um, I just want a few quick bust outs. Kind of thought we'd been hearing a lot more from uh, Heap Nim, but oh, well, he's speaking now. Yeah. Yeah, he's the one chatty one. Yeah. I, I, I was on a, an adjoining table when he had a massive triple up. Um, I believe the hands, he had tens against ace, ten and ace king. And he was jumping around and shouting and then he sat down. <laughs> and I think he told the table that he only plays twice a year. So this is, this is obviously a great occasion for him. Yeah. Once in a lifetime experience. Well, I did see him at the IPO in the Bonington Hotel earlier in the year. Maybe that's the second time of the year okay, he right. plays. And then this is the, the other time. Yeah. So now he's not allowed to play any poker. You're going to follow, you're going to, you're going to go around like the police yes. checking every... Um, Listen, he said it, not yeah. me. He put these rules on himself. The I saw him for the first time recently, uh, probably at the IPO. Um. Yeah, but I think he's the white. Again, as you mentioned, you know, the glasses, the hoodies, the hats. Do you see Nien with the glasses hanging from his shirt? But hasn't used them yet. Yeah. My first ever appearance on TV for playing poker was on a Irish only TV series, which was also called Late Night Stars of Poker, uh, which was sponsored by Poker Stars back in the day. And Porik was in charge of it. He was pretty much the producer. And he had a rule that we weren't allowed to wear sunglasses or hoodies or any kind of earphones. I'm still trying to get my head around that how there can be two major events in Dublin that basically have the same initials and everyone gets IPO. confused with each other. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The Irish Open used to always just be known as, known as the Irish Open, and then they changed it to Irish Poker Open. The International Poker Open pre-existed that, so uh, yeah, it's very confusing because lots of people, for Irish people, the IPO is the International Poker Open. Yes, that was there before. The they tend to call the Open so the Open, but then for uh, you know foreigners, not not unreasonably call the Irish Poker Open the IPO as well um, and yeah. it, it causes a lot of confusion. Boys with a, a very reasonable hand here in the cutoff. But yeah, facing an, an opener already. Yeah. Boys is now down to that sort of 16 big blind zone now where he, he's looking for reshove spots. Of course, he's, uh, he's never going to find a, a non all entry bet, right? Yeah, like. yeah, exactly. Uh, Torn has an interesting hand though. He could certainly uh, get involved here, put a bit of pressure on. He covers yeah. Salaftis very comfortably here. This is the kind of hand you could see he just put in a small three bet with. Yeah, I, I was going to say, are we are That's we sticking quite firmly That's to the rule of in me. high ICM situations, we want to enter pots with a 3-bet, 
I think in theory we are, but in practice there's a, you could you could make a strong case for for just calling, depending on how you think your opponent's going to play post flop. <laughs> but he has gone for the three bet, which is the more theoretically favoured option. Yeah, really liking this from Thorne. Yeah, this just puts <laughs> a lot of pressure on. Size is good as well. Shanley, I think, being aware of these pay jumps. Yeah, Sh yeah Shanley's not, he's not doing anything here other than tank holding, I think. He's not even, like, he was by far the shortest not long ago. Now he's just one of a number of shorties. So yes. he's seeing a very realistic possibility of laddering. Yes, sir. Do you have any spare waters, perhaps? And spare water. played with Georges briefly at the start of day two, and I say briefly because I didn't last very long there. Yeah. Okay. But he moved all but in uh, here. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. He's found the all in. He just he he, he smells something here. And this this is this is what I was about to say. George is very capable. Certainly airs on the side of aggression. Yeah. And he sniffed this one out. Yeah, I, I, I played with him as well on day two. And uh, this, this was how he played. He was opening super wide. And the first time he three bet, he just four bet ripped. Uh, wow. Yeah. If he can get the last bet in, he, he, he tends to just go for it. And, and I think there's some history too, right? Clearly Thor has been playing with this player too. And we're aware Georges is maybe opening wider, being more active. Ciao. Well, that is Mitchell Heinem, who we see walking away from the other table. Uh, go, he has been eliminated in 15th place for 20,560 euros. Huh. And we are now down to two tables of seven. We're down to 14. So we'll Hence, we see Stephen Groom being balanced off the stage. We're getting closer to that magical number of 12.9. <laughs> <laughs> As it gets shorthanded now with the big blind ante as well, that that sort of speeds things up as well. Yeah, unfortunate for Mitch there. Finding some uh, consolidation and I believe his partner who is the women's champion two years ago, I think. I think the last year it was I remember the, the year she, she won it, yeah. yeah. She won it. Yeah, so I do remember hats that. off to her. Oh, oh, you know, no, no. Yeah, Mitch, Mitch seems to come over to Ireland a lot and uh, has he does. Oh, no, run, Mr. runs Mr. deep a lot in Irish tournaments. Yeah. You're Mr. Typical Mr. the English picking on the Irish. Well, you, you the English, English invasion, yeah. I don't know what your relationship... He called you Mr. Troublemaker, didn't he? Just by asking completely right, reasonable... <laughs> and Simon Wilson bust earlier, you know, David couldn't <laughs> sing his praises any higher takes all sorts, Simon. It? Yeah. And he said, one phrase comes to mind, and I'm waiting yeah, for this to happen to Simon. Days. He's had some great scores. I'm waiting for the breakthrough day. He said, the phrase that comes to mind is Chucky Airlaw. His okay. day will come. Yeah. No, co no comment. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not sure we can't say that Simon hasn't really broken through. I mean, he did final table at the WSB online main event, and... Uh, this is what I said. He had some decent <laughs> live scores. He said as well. he hasn't had the huge breakthrough score. Now I wouldn't call two hundred and fifty thousand dollars any small amount of money. I wouldn't either. I yeah. I wouldn't mind two hundred and fifty thousand no. dollars. Good to see Ollie picking up a pot there. And we know that event was subsequent subsequently won by none other than Bert Stevens Giraffe me, Ganger. Bert. I watched he the entire final. I watched the, the, the entire show. final table. Yeah, uh, yeah. Bert's a good friend of mine. He's absolutely hilarious in person. Like a lot of the Twitchers, when you meet them, you understand that they're sort of playing up to a personality or a persona when they're Twitch he's when they're nuts. streaming. But he's exactly <laughs> the same in person. He's just nuts. He, he is a very nice guy. I yeah. had the pleasure of briefly meeting him. Have uh, you met him, James? I have met him. Uh, he's been on the podcast a couple of times. He was one of our super fans answering questions about the Godfather movies. <laughs> but not being funny, anyone who lives with that many animals cannot be a normal human being. <laughs> yeah. he, he owns a farm or something, right? Uh, like, uh, it's not, it's, yeah, it's more of an animal rescue sanctuary thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah right. th th there's, there's, there's no real kind of farmland. It's more like his house and the animals are in the house <laughs> yeah and they're allowed to wander the room free and we all live as one he's vegetarian yeah. so they have no they don't have to worry about him getting hungry and eating them <laughs> uh, yeah my wife met him in paris and my wife has a very low opinion of 
99.9% of oh. poker players. <laughs> and uh, she absolutely loved him. She was like, this guy's amazing. Well, I, to the point that when I went back to the room, she was watching some of his clips on YouTube. This is a weird one. Clock's been paused and they've drawn for hands, which doesn't normally happen when there's no overnight redraw. But as you will, five hands left to play. Maybe they picked up on the fact that Shanley is stalling a bit. Oh. Uh, I don't think it's, uh, so in the hijack here. They're fraying for some action. Yeah, so it looks like Porig is going to make the final day, which obviously is what everybody wants. Uh, it would be a buzz kill if Porig uh, were to bust at this stage. I had the privilege of uh, doing commentary uh, on the final table the year Finton Hand and Griffin Benger both final tabled uh, with Porig. So we, we ran into a similar situation oh, look at this. a few hands earlier where, when, when Lappin was covering. And Mitch defended the big blind with pocket fives to, I believe it was a hijacker cut off open of about 25 bigs. Yeah. Now here we are, this is a bit more than 25 bigs from a hijack open from Thorn. Pocket fives, you're just happy to see a flop here? Yeah. Defend your hand? Yeah. Yeah, you're gonna give up most of the time, but that's fine because you're getting such a good price. Uh, if you hit a set, being out of position is not as disadvantageous uh, as the type of hands that tend to flop draws. Um, so he's facing the 350. He's not going to give up just yet. He does have backdoor hearts, but it's like very bad backdoor hearts. But just giving up to a single bet would be a bit weak on this board. I think we <laughs> probably should see check bet fold now, though. Yeah, Thorn, I think, more than happy to stick some more money in this pot. Fires. Yeah. Shriveling up, only being his fourth pair in the turn. I guess he didn't bust. Yeah. I yeah. guess he didn't bust. <laughs> Yeah, Thorn is covered he, he here. Didn't have much uh, he didn't have many chips. I didn't see. I just to see a sizing here now. It appears that there seems Still to be the some first. reaction or in the, the background, action. either to the main event. He's trying to have a small bet. I, I kind of like this. This no, is this no, is what? a milking bet essentially. <laughs> There's really not too much to worry about on this board. Oh yeah. Not, <laughs> it's very disconnected, so uh, that means it's a lot less likely there are two pair out there, and. There are not really too many uh, straight draws either. And this can look like an advanced blocker as well. Yeah, it be one's protection. Yeah, Had he bet a bigger size, I think, we'd already have seen the fives fold. But to this small size, he might think he has to continue. Is he going to go for a check raise? Thorne also probably known as customer here. Neen has been <laughs> very aggressive. Yeah. Um, and has found a lot of spots to check raise. But again, I've said this a few times, giving off the body language of someone that doesn't seem yeah. very comfortable. Right? Yeah. But yeah. then Just again, I'm still waiting to see it. And it, now, Joe Stapleton said he'd do it one day. I'm waiting for someone to go, oh, uh, I'm not sh I'm all in. I'm all in. <laughs> <laughs> well, once they move all in, yeah, that's uh, that, that that trumps the previous acting performance, yes. I think. Yeah, but he but he's visibly uncomfortable here. Like you can't really affect that level of discomfort, yeah, I don't think. True. Um, good fold in good fold in the end to that size. <laughs> he's actually playing pretty well. Uh, I, I have to say, quite solid. We yeah, have yeah. seen some very aggressive lines. Yeah. yeah. Nothing nothing way too ironic. Yeah. Yeah, I think he played his hand perfectly there. He's supposed to call the flop, he's supposed to fold the turn. He might feel he would fold the best hand. Um, I, I uh, and, and you I can see hit. we can hear briefly no, on the I'm table chat. That doesn't mean for sure. <laughs> Neen asking, yeah, what did you have? Queens? The deal the now is 105 aces. Aces, by the way. Okay, guys, Which again, yeah. how do you feel how about giving away free information this deep in an event? Uh, it depends oh on what the information oh is. Oh like if you open I aces on the button and everybody right? folds huh? and you show aces, you're not Are really you? giving away any okay. information of because every, everybody opens aces. Um, you're not afraid of a um, plus draw, no? It's, yeah, it's, it's the more marginal stuff. And sometimes people forget, like, post flop you know they open like 5-4 like in a spot where they should never open 5-4 and I'm then they flop green. two pair green. and then green. they green. show that they had it and then huh? but you know people can think well wait a minute you shouldn't have opened that hand so now you yeah. know that their opening range is too wide so you have to be careful probably the safest thing is just never show I, I think it's similar as well when maybe you three bet or you three bet jam on someone and someone tanks raiders and they make a painful fold and they go 
oh, I folded such and such. You're going, oh, well, that gives me a lot of information on what are Yeah, but they might not be telling the truth. Yeah, the they might thing. be misdirecting. Like, yeah, I, I, don't know. I, I mean, I remember the first time I met Lappin, uh, he asked me about a hand, and well, I gave him my opinion. And then three other people I knew discussed the same hand, but Lappin had told every single person that he had a different hand. <laughs> so none of us knew what his actual hand was. So Shanley with around 16 big blinds. He's got aces again. Opens with aces. Races to 725,000. Big yes. raise. Shanley, uh, Shanley going for a, a bit of a larger size here, right? Yeah. Like a little over three big blinds. With a hand that you typically want to encourage action with. Yeah, if you're happy to get it in against any hand with aces. Yeah, here. if you get, if your aces get cracked, they get cracked. Aces are a gift from the god of this, the, yeah. the poker gods at this point. And Georges with a hand that I presume would have called the big blind to a min open, right? Yeah, exactly. But kind of sussing out that. Yeah, maybe, get maybe a bit of that image, the older man oh, image, three big blind open. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Getting aces cracked is a very painful experience, and we can, we can all remember it. And sometimes people adjust the future by <laughs> betting bigger and not, uh, not want you know to make it less likely they're going to get yeah, cracked. But really, you have to just kind of take what's the long term the most profitable way to play this hand. And uh, opening for three big blinds, yeah, he, he you know, like it's going to discourage action. Particularly when you've been like playing so tight, th they've really only seen the two shoves. So for sure, you get double. Up. A six of diamonds. Adrian Thorne. Yeah, can definitely open this. I mean, this is worse than AS7 and AS5, but you still kind of have to open all the suited aces. Yeah, I think it's really good. If, like a lot a lot of the time, in these ICM extreme situations, people are not going to flat as much in position. So the two most likely things that are going to happen apart from everybody folds are somebody's going to three bet you, in which case you have a very easy fold. Or the big blind is going to call you, in which case the fact that your hand is suited gives you much more playability post flop. So a hand like ace six suited is better than a, than a stronger ace off suit. And again, nothing really oh. behind. Round to the big blind, and Oliver Boyce okay. folds the king deuce. Fold. Yeah, Oli is drifting back again. He just ha hasn't really picked up anything to uh, to fight back with in a Getting while. Getting hand now, is it? <laughs> About hand. <laughs> About hand. He's very, very talkative. King now, yeah? <laughs> huh? Now, serious. I've already lost track. How many more hands is it? Three or four? I, thi I think there's <laughs> three more. Uh, we can see Nina's is obviously the most talkative player at the table. But again, uh, I think this kind of plays into probing for free information, right? Oh, you're getting yeah. hands now, right? You know, kind of trying to find out. Yeah. Is he going to say to me again, oh, are you? I had aces that time. Or yeah. To continue your, uh, your, your conversation about or your so point about showing hands, I actually, if, I, if I'm at a table of recreational players, I'll oh, yeah, often yeah. show a lot of hands early on. Uh, because it encourages other people to do the same. Um, yeah. And if everybody's showing their cards, that's great. Shanley folding, Porrig's out. This is a very wide open here. Yeah, but Sarah's opening with King Nine off, and King Nine suited would be just about defensible. King Nine off is very wide. He's getting out of line here. I feel like <laughs> I was, I was going to say this before when I was on yesterday. I assume it's been announced that there's three, four hands left. Yeah, right? and, and there's almost this emotional attachment of you want to be able to say I made day four of the yep. show. Correct. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Correct. Re yeah, you can definitely open wider once <laughs> once they've announced how many yeah, hands are left. Exactly. And people are looking down at their stack and imagining putting it into a bag. Exactly. And people want to tell their friends, tell their family, yeah. post it on their socials, say, I've made day four, play for that yeah. big money. And maybe it's going to cause some people to tighten up a bit. And that gives maybe some bigger stacks or earlier position. Yeah, I can't believe I've waited this long to get the first book plug in. But we refer we refer to this <laughs> in the ICM. Hey, hurry up, we're going to be done soon. <laughs> we, we refer to this in the ICM book as an emotional bubble. Like, it's not a real bubble in any sense of the world, but it is an emotional bubble. It's a bubble I think most people understand as yeah. well. Yeah. It's an achievement, right? It's a sense of achievement to yeah. have made the you final get to, day. You get to go home. You ha you're happy for the next 12 hours at least. 
Whereas if you bust now at this stage, you, you, uh, it's, it's devastating. Which is why I'd be very happy if everyone just like, let's just give a walk to the big blind for the next five hands, then we can all go home. <laughs> as, a, as a groan emits from the FT. Yeah, I mean, look, <laughs> it's, uh, it's been a long one. Not quite as long as the penultimate day last year, which that I'm sure you remember very well, Tom, but it's, it's still been a long one. Oh, I remember that well, because with about five hands to go, I gifted Benny Glasser a double up with Ace Jack. That's a really, six. really stupid thing to do. That was stupid. Thanks for bringing it up, James. Bad beef. Trying to forget about it. But then the reigning champion doubled me up. Okay, that well, we nice of him. have top pair versus a flush draw. Yeah, this... <laughs> Yeah, we were talking about how players don't want to get involved. Now they both have hands. Yeah, this um, this is a very legitimate situation, right? Yeah, Torn Torn shouldn't have really have any leads here. So yeah, he eventually checks. Serious. I mean, top pair weak kicker. You can sometimes make a case for just checking back in you know, ICM extreme <coughs> situations to keep the pot small. But there's a lot of draws out there. Obviously, the flush draw and the open ender and any amount of gutters. So he's going to bet and now how does Thorn proceed? You can obviously check raise your draws or you can check call. Generally you want to check raise against the player who is less likely to have something and therefore is more likely to fold. Um, that's Ares because he's raised under the gun is going to have the king a lot. Yeah, I, I always kind of find these situations tricky because I wonder what he's doing here. Like he's carving out the call, or it seems like he's carving out the call. Yeah, that's a call. That That's exact call, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty tough because this king is obviously going to smash yeah. under the gun so much. And yeah. we don't want to get into a large bloating pot out of position with the draw. Happy to see a turn card. Yeah, people but often overplay draws in these spots, but really, like, you just want to realize your equity with them. It can be tough so as well because if you want to have raises for value, if you want to raise pocket fours, maybe pocket tens, king ten, etc., yeah. you're gonna need to have bluffs as well, right? Yeah, but you're but you your yeah, you but you're better off using weak draws, you yeah. know, something like jack nine that's just a gut shot, uh, like maybe jack nine of spades um, would make a good check raise here because then uh, you can obviously hit your gut shot or you can improve on other cards on the turn. Now, Atzeris probably doesn't feel too good about this. Yeah, he was just in front of the camera and didn't want to see more acting. <laughs> yeah, this is tough. He's not getting three streets from a worse hand. Yeah, this is why he's checked back here. Not getting three streets from a worse hand. Um, now, Thorn can only win the hand by bluffing. He has a jack, which is obviously blocking the two straights. Um, so he might turn this into a bluff. Yeah, the jack being a key card here, but it is also difficult opening two clubs in your hand. Yeah, you it's not. You want your opponent to have a hand yeah. that contains yeah, clubs. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, generally you don't want to bluff, bluff miss flush draws because you want your opponent to have a miss flush draw himself. But, but the jack is an interesting card because of the fact that it's similar to a lot of hands like ace jack, even queen jack, uh, which you know might be good here and might go for value. Now so we can see. That if Torn does decide to lead here, which yeah. I, I do think he may be carving out a bit, it's very likely that Saris is going to call. Oh, yeah. It depends on the size. And I think the most logical size to use here is a small size. Um, and that, that won't flush out a top pair. Yeah, of course. Do you think there's a size? Like, for example, this would never happen. But if Torn went, I'm all in. Obviously, this puts... But Saris in a very difficult situation, but this this just never happens, right? We're never this never happens. Like, why would you do that with your yeah. value? So, yeah. nice pot for Saris. The king nine off does work out. So, a reminder that the final day of the Irish Open main event will start at 12:30 local time. That's 1:30 p.m. at Central European time. And for everyone watching in Finland. 2.30 in the afternoon. <laughs> Finn's very excited that one of their guys is going to be a big stack tomorrow. And I wonder 
No, this is Shannon. I, I pull don't, very good hand free flop as well. I have a um, queen jack of Yeah, you don't really want to open an ace off this stack. Oh, the I gun. talk about the last hand. An unsuited ace, rather. No problem, no if it was suited, it would be fine, but... Yeah. Yeah, even in a regular chip EV spot, I'm not happy to open this hand. Porik is also going to fold. Let's not get too hasty there. Porik <laughs> might get some ideas in his head. Yeah. Oh. All these players getting one step closer. Oh, well, he's on the bottom with a very open and global hand. 16 big blinds. I don't think he really have shoves at this stack depth, so probably just bring it in for a min raise. I like that option. Okay, guys, You Oh, yeah, he has decided to move all in, and I guess he. Oh, oh my God! Oh yeah, this. Yeah, this, this is bad for Ollie. This is exactly <coughs> what we're talking about, yeah. right? Like, there's there's potential shorter stacks in play. Yeah. Pay jumps are so severe. If we just shove our 16 bigs and another player wakes up with it. Yeah, this is this is a little bit old school. I think people used to just shove, saying, "Well, I don't want to raise call or I don't want to raise fold," but. Uh, the problem is we're we shouldn't be getting ace queen to fold now. So um. and Thorn yeah. seems to have his his thinking cap on here, right? He seems to be considering his options. Do you think Thorn is maybe Hollywooding a bit, or do you think he genuinely seems uncomfortable? With no, I think he's genuinely approach. uncomfortable, but he does flick in a call. Um, I don't think he was Hollywood in there because you really don't want to take ace queen three way. Yeah. Uh, so we could see. Ollie's at risk here. Oliver Boyce eliminated on one of the last hands of day three, and that would take us down to 13 players, which is very close to 12.9. <laughs> I'm rooting for it, James. Come on. I like it when the widgets prove right, but sometimes the poker gods. Well, I'm rooting for Ollie because he drove me home last night. <laughs> okay, that's that's a perfectly reasonable. <laughs> okay, that's a bit of bias from Dara. We'll exclude him well. from this hand. So could could be tricky. Oh, oh, there's the 10. 10 high flop. Oh, and now suddenly Ollie is a big favorite. Domination rotation in Boyce's favor. Look how frustrated yeah. Adrian Thorne is. Yeah, it's a, it's a cruel game. That well, is. Oh. Okay, it's not over yet. No. Some added outs for Thorne. Such a six pot this deep in a tournament. Seven. Seven out. Really need to hold these all-ins. He saw a jack required. Um. There's a seven on the river, so Boyce comes from behind to no, double up through Adrian out. Thorne. He's had a couple of bad hands that failed bluff yeah. against Konstantinos Vitseris. Yeah. And then getting ace-queen done by queen-10 yeah. against Oliver Boyce. And that means Thorne is going to be one of the shorter stacks <laughs> coming into play tomorrow. Yeah, that's yeah. brutal. A brutal end to the night for him. I think he was genuinely erupted. He knew he had to call, but he was like, oh, God, yeah. this, could, this could, could go wrong here. Yeah, a very rough last level for Jordan. There was also the Jack-10 suited. George just finds yeah, yeah. yeah, of course. Just kind of thrown in the bin for this level, but gets it in good there. I think it's really key in these situations, though. This hurts. You're obviously pain, super tilted. Pain pain hand pain left. Pain 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 left. Him and you, you need to find focus. You, you need to right? focus on you what your stack is now, yep. what's the correct decision, and yep. move on. Forget about the last hand. So what, we've got one more hand to play? One more hand to play, yeah. Okay. okay. James, don't you dare say Every you want the widget to be right. About. No, no, no. I'm, I've, I'm, do you know what? I think a prediction of effectively 13 and coming up with 14 is close. within the margin of error. No it's one's going to... If you're going to get out of line on the, because it's the last hand of the night and you think everybody's going to bag, King 4 suited is just about the type of hand you could do nice it with. to do it with, right? Yeah, it is, yeah. It's got playability, it's got a king, which is blocking a lot of strong hands. Well. Yeah, but Porig decides, no, I'll just bag. Better set up I, know I like the sound of making day more. four of the Irish Open, and you are true, sir. Mm. 
What are you going to do? Do it already, please. It's been a very long day. <laughs> He's full, just, that's his last bit of TV time for today. Yeah, you know, I, I think he's genuinely considering the option of that emotional... Yeah, I think he was, yeah. Again, it's like kind of a good hand, Queen 8. It's close to a few hands that are good. Yeah, exactly. And exact same here for Georgios. I really don't think these players are stalling, right? Like they yeah, they're all, they're all thinking, maybe I can open this and they'll all just fold. Yeah. It's like it's like the devil on either shoulder, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think Ollie will, fall quick. Ollie will fall quickly because he just got lucky. As I said, when players get lucky, they they don't get out of line again for a while. That's what's finishing, isn't it? Uh, Torn, ooh, Torn with twelve big blinds. You could definitely defend. Uh, you could definitely defend him just going all in here. Yeah, I, I think you go either way, right? It's, you definitely want to play the hand. I think. Min raising or Almost shoving. Probably. Min raising or shoving are, are both reasonable options. Yeah, you can you can min raise fold or yeah, he's moved all in. <laughs> the exasperated splash of chips. And 3 2 isn't going to call. And Shanley has 9 7. He's not going to call either. So at least Torn picks up the blinds on the last hand. Well, we need to see if players concluded at the other table or if there's any prospect of us still getting to a widget friendly 13 players. The first one here, you're looking. Oh, I thought he looked already. Get on with it. So these guys all get to bag and tag. We are, by the looks of things, coming back with 14 players for the final day. I can't, I can't be part of the hand. We started there. Four, one, two, three, four, five. Great to see Pori coming back for the I final day. But yeah, by the looks of things, it will be the Finnish player, Tero Lorela, who will be the chip leader with around 13 million. No, 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 David oh. Rosick, the second biggest stack with 12 million. Okay, thank you very much. 13 yeah. million. Coming back the big line, 250 I assume, or? Yes, I believe so. So these are the big blinds at today's blind level. Of course, the blinds going up. Start of level 33 when we come back tomorrow. Tom, Dara, thank you so much. For Thank being here for the last level. My brain was starting to turn to mush during the last 40 <laughs> minutes. It has been a 13 hour day. Hopefully, it won't take so long tomorrow to get down to a winner. But you can see this play out. You can see the final day of the Irish Open main event on the Pokestars Twitch and YouTube channels at 12.30 local time. That's 12.30 summer time, 1.30 Central Europe. 7.30 a.m. Eastern, wherever you are in the world. Hopefully you can join us on Easter Monday for the concluding chapter of this incredible tournament. But for now, from all the team here at the RDS at the Irish Open, it's good night from Dublin.